Hi, welcome back guys. This is your friend. Let us head fanfics. Back with amazing fanfiction. This is the second part of. What if Deku became an anarchist? Now before starting. Please give this video a like and subscribe to the channel if you want more videos like this. Now let's get into the fanfic. The anarchist was sitting on his chair watching Deku train with his new quirk that popped up which the anarchist explained what it was. The anarchist told him, Mirio used it on me one time, but he had no control of it, so it never appeared again. But one for all mutated on him like you, so you have a more powerful version of one for all. Which I can still help you with this. Deku was now trying different thing with this quirk called Black Whip, which the anarchist fell asleep. The anarchist's mind. Izuku looked at the past users which Izuku asked, What is it now? Mirio smiled and gave him a thumbs up. I knew you can be a hero. Nana smiled. I see the heroic spirit Mirio was talking. Sensei Chang said, Gurren Monkey, you are doing great, keep it up. They were praising Izuku which he said, I'm only doing this to prevent him from doing what you did, Mirio. I also want to fight him just for my entertainment, so I'm no hero. The first user smiled, we think differently, but this is just the first step. Izuku rolled his eyes then said, I'm not fighting my dad still, that's Shinzo's job not mine. The users knew he wasn't going to fight all for one, but he can at least do more heroic stuff than villainous stuff, which Mirio said, okay, we are going to let you go. Izuku sighed, okay, at least warn me before you take me into this mind F. Outside the anarchist's mind, the anarchist woke up to hear D.E.K.U. Deku looked at Bakugo to say, yes Kaken. Bakugo said, not you, the other one. The anarchist looked at him in rage to say, what the F did I say about calling me that, little dick? The teachers looked at the two as they didn't know who they should protect from the other. The anarchist opened his headache relief bottle to find it was empty. He looked at Bakugo to say, you see this bottle here. It was full of mercy I could provide. I'm fresh out of mercy to give. You better take that shit back. Bakugo said, No way. D.A.K.U. The anarchist stood up laughing. You want to fight? I'll give you a massacre. Bakugo grinned. You are a weak, quirkless, Deku. What can you possibly do? Everyone saw Bakugo was pissing him on purpose which Deku said, Stop it, Kaken. Bakugo said, Why are you defending a villain? He has probably been lying to you about many things and he is probably taking advantage of you for something. The anarchist laughed, you are pushing little dick. You want to fight, then let's fight right here, right now. Only one rule, fight until your opponent can't fight anymore. Bakugo smiled, deal. Everyone got off the field to where only Bakugo and the anarchist stood facing each other. Bakugo flew in the air then flew down at high speeds, which the anarchist smirked. Bakugo got really close but the anarchist pulled out a flashlight to blind Bakugo and jumped out of the way. Bakugo landed and the anarchist got behind him to punch his back at incredible speed. Bakugo was coughing blood from each hit, which then the anarchist said, You are already dead. The anarchist roundhouse kicked his head sending Bakugo flying out of the field. The anarchist said, I dare you get up. I broke your ribs, your shoulder blades, and caused some internal bleeding. I have no quirk. If I can kick your ass then Deku should kick your ass. I went easy on you because I have a code of not to end on purpose. I promised Deku I wouldn't end, and you are not my Bakugo. So, stay the F down. Bakugo was in pain which Deku said, that's enough. The anarchist smirked, you're right, let me put a stim pack in him. Hopefully he has learned his lesson. The anarchist injected a stim pack in Bakugo then went back to his chair to relax, which Deku went up to the anarchist, I much as Kakin is an ass. He didn't deserve that much of an ass beaten. The anarchist smiled, I like this improvement since we first met. I feel our fight coming soon. I can't wait for it but keep little dick over there in check. Then a warp gate opened which relaxed a woman the anarchist knew too well, Miss Anarchy, also known as Izumi Midoriya. The guys looked at Izumi in awe, the girls, teachers, and Mirio were in shock by this version of Izuku. Izumi looked at them to say, the anarchist, who is that Izuku you are with? The anarchist said, this is the hero Deku, All Might's successor. Izumi chuckled, I never thought I would feel myself in a bunny outfit like that, but anyways I give this new tech I made for every Izuku and Izumi. I call it Izubook. It allows every version of us to connect with each other and see what we are doing. It's like Facebook, but for us in every dimension. The anarchist's jaw dropped. That is genius. I see and connect with every version of ourselves. Amazing. Which Izumi gave the anarchist and Deku each a device for it which they put in their information. They saw every single version of Izuku and Izumi, which the anarchist said, I going to send friend requests like crazy. Deku was impressed by the technology that a villain female version just gave him, and he was amazed by the different versions of him that he was seeing. The anarchist looked through say, friend, 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 not friend, friend. Hell no. Deku asked, who is the hell no? The anarchist said, look up Joker, but the one who looks like a clown. Deku looked at the Izuku he was talking about and was in shock by this Izuku having videos of him ending innocence like crazy and laughing while he is doing it. Deku said, we should stop him. 
The anarchist said, Deku, think about this. We are a monster in that dimension. We enter it. They will arrest us, and this joker will end us without a second thought. The teachers were hearing what they were talking about which Aizawa said. Mr. Midoriya, I know you want to help them but it's too dangerous to go into that dimension like the anarchist is saying. Deku said, but. All Might said, no buts, we can't do anything about it. Vizumi felt something and she turned to roundhouse kick Minda in the face, which the anarchist cheered, nice hit on that one. Can I get a replay on that? The girls were impressed by Izumi which she looked at Bakugo which she laughed. Why does Bichu go as a male look like he lost his boobs? The anarchist laughed his as off, Bichu Gio. Deku looked at the two as they laughed their asses off which Izumi said, I should give female hero Deku this and it will be interesting. The anarchist said, that would be interesting. Nezu said, just you two being here with our Izuku causes enough damage to the rules of the multiverse. Izumi and the anarchist yelled, F the rules. Izumi looked at her watch to say, well I got to back, I got to watch my godson Arin. Have fun with your training, Deku. Anarchists stay bad and powerful. The anarchist said, I will. Izumi left which Minta said, no don't lie. Izumi stepped on his back which broke it which she then warped away. The anarchist injected a stim pack in that purple F. The anarchist said, I'm going to love to see all these different Izukas. Midnight smiled, I liked her. She has sent, which I would gladly improve. The other teacher gave an unsettled tom face from that statement which they continued training for a while until the anarchist said, Okay, we are done for the day. See you tomorrow. Deku said, wait. The anarchist asked, yes. Deku said, we need to put an end to Joker. The anarchist looked at him, what did I say about this? Deku said, it's what right and you know that. The anarchist said, look I don't like end as much as you, but we shouldn't go to another dimension to stop a crazy villain from ending any more people. He is beyond dangerous and you've seen the videos he has an army and he will end his own men to meet his goals. Deku asked, what about your army? The anarchist said, I don't have men to spare for this operation and this device can only warp up to 20 people at most with me. Deku asked, what if we brought some weapons and other versions of us to come with us, will you agree to it? The anarchist thought about it then sighed, fine. But I want my stuff and who should we bring? Deku said, well we can bring hero versions and villains versions of us with us. The anarchist asked, so like Infinity Wars? Deku smirked, yes, but we can only bring. How many? The anarchist said, assuming everybody brings their own toys then 10, let's get 8 more with us. Deku said, let's search for our teammates. The anarchist and Deku sat down looking at their Izu books which they made a list of they think they should bring. Then they looked at the lists, and they agreed on which 8 they should bring. The anarchist looked at the final list. Okay, we are bringing Dr. Izuku Strange, Izuku Auditor Da Firens, Izuku Stark, Deadshot, Izuku Hex, The Punisher, and we both agreed on John Wick, right? Deku said, yes, Joker has a bunch of gnomus and you saw that video of John ended five gnomus with a pencil. The anarchist said, good, let's assemble. They first got Deku's stuff, then warped to the anarchist's dimension for him to grab his power armor, guns, and quirk erasing bullets for the job. Then they warped to the first Izuku. They want to talk to Dr. Izuku Strange. Dr. Strange's dimension. Dr. Strange stood in his base in Japan which then he saw the portal open which Deku asked, so you agree to help us with Joker? Dr. Strange said, as much as I'm not supposed to mess with the multiverse, this Joker needs to be taken down. Dr. Strange got on his necklace and robes which the anarchist said, stylish. They then warped to their next trip the assassin. Izuku Auditor Da Firen's dimension. Firens got back in his base in Rome after hiding the Apple of Eden, which he turned to see the three other Izukas. The anarchist said, are you the assassin? Firens said, perhaps. Doctor Strange asked, does he know about Joker? Firens held up the device that allows to see other dimensions that Izumi dropped off. Deku asked, you want to come with us to stop him? Firens said, give me moment to grab on some stuff, first. Firens grabbed his crossbow, smoke bombs, poison, parachutes, the dagger of Brutus, and the sword of Altair. Then he stepped next to them which they warped to get Izuku Stark, also known as Iron Man. Then to the other dimensions to assemble the greatest Izukas for the job to defeat the Joker and his army. John Wick's dimension. John Wick was relaxing and preparing to fight an army who were about to end him starting at midnight. Then he looked to see nine versions of himself which the anarchist said, Trick question, do you want to come with us to fight an insane and monstrous version of ourselves or fight that army about to end you soon? John Wick asked, are you talking about Joker? Deku nodded which John Wick said, you know what? Why not? Sure I'll fight that monster. John Wick then changed his plan to get his weapons with them, which the anarchist said, we are going to Joker's dimension to stop him from ending any more innocents, so we got to find a base to set up at and plan before we just go guns blazing. Stark asked, who put you in charge, anarchist? Deadshot said, no one, he is pointing out a basic idea. Hex said, we need time to plan. We have the firepower and we have the men. Let's go. 
The Punisher said, let's serve some justice to a dimension that needs it the most. Deku said, I think we should hide there so we can plan or prepare for attack. The anarchist smiled, okay time to warp to our base of operations. Joker's Dimension they walked out of the portal to enter an abandoned warehouse which they looked around which the anarchist took a deep breath, just like old times. Stark shrugged, I can relate to that. Punisher said, well I'm going to get set up. Firens went to walk around the place to check if it was secured. Hex found a spot to sit down on and he sat there resting. John Wick checked his weapons to get ready for anything. The anarchist turned on a TV he brought over to see the news of this dimension, and Doctor Strange was going over 4 million possibilities on how they can beat Joker. Deku smiled which the anarchist said. They came for your idea and for your heroic cause. You should be proud of that. You are a true hero here. Deku said, I always had the feeling to do what is right and you helped me act on that feeling boldly. The anarchist chuckled. So, what should this group be called? Stark said, We are not being called the Avengers. Deadshot said, Or the Suicide Squad. Firens asked, How about Fratrum Esti? Everyone nodded but Deku asked, what does that mean? The anarchist said, It's Latin for Brotherhood of the Righteous. Deku smiled, I like it, we may not all be heroes, but we will fight for what's right. Deku watched as the other eight made the empty warehouse into a workshop to upgrade the weapons, armor, and more quirk erasing bullets. Deku then noticed something. Anarchist, is it me or there are only nine of us? The anarchist counted everyone then said, We forgot to bring a tenth person with us, who should we bring to help us? Everyone thought to themselves which Stark said, we should just see who is available at the moment. They pulled out their Izu books to see who was available to come with them without Joker knowing they are in his dimension. The anarchist said, Deadpool is busy with something at the moment. Stark said, Izuku Banner is unavailable too. Doctor Strange said, I got Venom to agree to come with us, which is perfect for this. The anarchist warped to Venom and brought him back. Venom said, I heard you needed help, so we are offering help. Venom got set up which all of the Izukas surrounded a table with maps and papers on it. The anarchist said, Okay, so Joker captured All Might, Vakago, a few other heroes, All for One, the League of Villains, Overhaul, and a few politicians which he is going to parade them around like his trophies, which we will take advantage of this. Deadshot said, I will set up a sniping position where he can't run away without getting shot. John Wick looked at everyone. There are a lot of Nomis are you sure you can handle them with your suits? The anarchist, Stark, Venom, and Deku nodded which the Punisher said, I have the weapons and training to end them. Deku shocked, wait, are Nomis still human? The anarchist said, nope, they are not human when they are created so we can end them. Firen said, I will free the heroes, Bakugo, the villains, and the politicians. Doctor Strange said, I will deal with unexpected reinforcements he has. Venom got in his Venom form to say, we will handle the high end. Deku nodded, are you ready for this? Everyone nodded which the anarchist said. After this mission, we are going to get tattoos that read Fratrum Esti as a sign that we are a group that fights for what's right. Everyone laughed then Punisher said, Actually, I would do that. Everyone thought about it then they agreed to do it, which they split up to get in their positions. The anarchist put on a special good luck mask which it was a green and black plague mask and gold lens goggles. Deku didn't like seeing him wearing Yakuza stuff but he wasn't going to argue with him about it now. They got in their positions in the city which they saw Joker's parade marching through the city. Joker wore a purple suit with a purple hat. He had white makeup with scars on his face to make him look like he is always smiling. Deadshot looked through his scope then in the radio. I count 300 grunts, 100 gnomus, and one high end. Venom, Deku, the anarchist, Stark, the Punisher, Hex and John Wick heard him and decided to walk out of the alley and walk towards the parade. Joker was having a blast as he punched All Might and said, Look around All Might as the world watches you, in this weak and pathetic form. Then he went up to All for One. You will never have this city. You know why. Joker started laughing. Because you are weak and never meant to have it, because it belongs to me. Then he went up to Bakugo to say, What did you believe a hero should be? Oh right, a winner. Look at you all tied up, weak, broken, and a loser. Bakugo tried to move but he couldn't which Joker laughed and shot over Hall in the leg. Oops I forgot to put this on safety. No I didn't. Then one of his grunts said, Sir there are some men walking towards us. Joker looked at what his grunts were talking about which he said, Fools. End them. The Nomis and grunts charged at small group of Izukas and Joker was smiling. All might lost all hope until they heard boom. Everyone looked at the source of the explosion and they saw the seven men ending Nomis and beating up the grunts. They fought with send and power which Venom ate grunts and sliced up Nomis. John Wick, Hex, Punisher gunned down Nomis and grunts with quirk erasing bullets. The anarchist and Deku were using martial art to throw Nomis and grunts around like toys. The Joker walked closer to see what was going on. Behind All Might they heard, Relax my friends, you are being rescued. They looked to see Firens with his hood on to where they can't see his face, which he went over to everyone to free them. The Doctor Strange opened a portal to say, 
Get in for your own safety. Back Hugo weakly asked, Who are you? Doctor Strange smiled. My name is Doctor Izuku Strange, and we are here to defeat Joker. Firens removed his hood to say, My name is Izuku Auditor Da Firens, now go. They all went in the portal like they were told to which Joker saw Venom was charging at him, which Joker laughed, High End, take out the trash. High End roared which Venom yelled, Yes, fight me beach. High End and Venom started fighting each other which the anarchist said, He isn't going to survive this, I'm going to help him. Stark asked, How do you know he would survive the fight? The anarchist said, I make no miss in high ends, that one specific is powerful to end all might. The anarchist in his armor and a minigun in his hand gunned out anyone in his way. Venom was winning the fight until High End released the nine Nomas stored in his body. Venom jumped back to rethink of a strategy to fight them, until he saw the nine Nomas got shot up which he turned to see the anarchist coming up. The anarchist chuckled, I'm out of bullet, I guess I have to beat the shit of High End with you. Venom laughed, we guess we have to, you know its weakness? The anarchist chuckled, just remove his head and burn it to hell or just burn his head off. Deku then jumped to land in front of Joker which he laughed, who are you? Deku revealed his face to say, I'm you, we are you. The Joker looked at him, no, no, you can't be real. Deku said, I'm a hero version of you, my hero name is Deku. Joker in rage, why is that my hero name? Deku smiled, because Deku is the name of a hero. Who will protect the innocent with a smile on his face? The Joker pulled out his gun but then shot his hand, which the Joker laughed in pain. The Joker smiled, I guess I have to fight you or. The Joker threw a smoke bomb and said, Kirajiri warp me out of here. Anamu appeared from a warp portal and they jumped in which Deku was about to get in, but he heard, don't do it. Doctor Strange grabbed him to say, this is a part of our plan to defeat Joker. We got the heroes, politicians, the League of Villains, and Overhaul Freed. We will reinforce them so we can defeat him and bring him to justice for his crimes. Firens looked at Venom and the anarchist who just defeated High End which the anarchist said, Joker probably ran to his Namu factory, but this is the first time I ran out of quirk erasing bullets in my minigun. It feels satisfying. Deadshot in the radio, what now? John Wick said, now we help some people build up strength to fight Joker. They went back to their base where everyone they rescued was at which they were given stim packs and they answered questions. All Might said, So you all are Izuku from different dimensions. You came because Deku wanted to stop Joker. Deku said, It's what's right. He did a lot of wrong and he needs to be stopped. All for one asked, What makes you think you can stop him? The anarchist said, Look at the bullet assembly line. Look at its producing. Overhaul picked up the bullet to say, It can't be. I have spent my life trying to make this. Back Hugo grunted. What is it, bird face? The anarchist chuckled. Quirk erasing bullets, me and you created them Kai. It first was created from a little girl's blood and flesh, but then we found a way to replicate her blood, so we stopped using her blood. Overhaul asked. Was that girlery? The anarchist nodded which Overhaul said, I would have this. If Joker didn't end her. The Izikus were in shock by what they heard which John Wick, Hex, Punisher, Venom, and Deadshot loaded their guns and prepared to end Joker. The anarchist said, I want to turn Joker into a Namu just to watch him suffer for the rest of his life. Deku said, guys, we are not ending him, even if he ended Uri. We must defeat him to make him face justice. Doctor Strange said, correct, so don't end him unless you have to. The guys grunted which then Hex said, I'm going to found where his Namu factory is at. Firen said, it took some time but after looking at buildings that fit the requirements, we found one that can fit. They looked at the building which Bakugo said, the chemical plant. Deku asked, you know the place? Bakugo said, that is where he turned into that monster he is now, he tripped into the chemicals when I chased him. The anarchist said, when you bullet him, and he was escaping from you. Bakugo looked down in shame which all for one and all might felt better which all might said, the drugs are wearing off. Stark asked, what drugs? All for one said, Joker is a master chemist. He made drugs that make people die from laughter to drugs that weaken people to a point to where using their quirks end them. The anarchist said, don't burn the plant down. I want to see how he creates his gases. Everyone looked at him which he said, researching for cures for them, I'm not a monster. What do you think I am? I'm not Joker. Deku sighed, I disagree with not burning the plant. We should destroy it. Everyone nodded then they prepared for their trip to Ace Chemical Plant to defeat the Joker and end this chaos. Ace Chemical Plant Joker with the last of his grunts got the plant ready to blow if they fail. Joker looked at his latest creation. Joker smiled as he saw the machine make the ultimate drug that he will use to end all might. All for one and overhaul at once. Joker then looked at a blonde girl his age. Harley, you ready for some fun? Harley smiled. Yes Mr. J. Joker laughed. Good. We will go out with a bang. Joker looked around to say. Where is Eerie? A white-haired girl came to view. She had had white makeup like Joker. She giggled her way to Joker, and her horn on her head was half a foot long. Joker said, Eerie, stand next to me. 
We have guests coming soon. Barry giggled. Yes. Papa. Joker then laughed. Did you enjoy your chemical bath? I bet it was a new experience. Barry smiled. Yes. Papa. Harley hugged the two to say, look we are a happy family. Joker said, yes. One big, happy family. The Brotherhood, All Might, Overhaul, All for One, the rest of the League of Villains, and a few heroes looked at the plant's entrance. Deku said, Okay, let's end this. As soon as Deku opened the door, Nomus came out to attack everyone from every direction. They were being overpowered and overwhelmed, until the anarchist yelled, Put on the headphones I gave you all. Everyone shrugged to put them on but when everyone did, the anarchist suit produced a sound wave that made every Namu's brain explode. Stark asked, Why didn't use that this entire time? The anarchist said, well first of all, it has a five-day wait time. So, it has to be worth it like this situation. Venom said, you could have ended my symbiote with that. The anarchist said, but I didn't so trust me, I'm a man of my word. They then walked in the building to see it was empty, but they heard Joker's laugh but some other people with them. They ran in to see Joker and his girls, overhaul in shock, eerie. But you ended her. Joker looked at them to say, I did. I'm taking a stab at parenting. Joker lifted her hair to reveal the stitches on her forehead and dab eye in rage. What did you do to Toga? Joker said, same as me. Just a nice chemical bath. Joker, Harley. And Ari laughed like madmen, which terrified everyone. Deku charged at Joker but Harley with a baseball bat got in front of him and giggled. Sorry, I'm letting you hurt Puddin. All Might charge at Joker. But Joker smiled as All Might fell into his trap. A bucket of hydrochloric acid fell on All Might's head. All Might died from the acid which Joker frowned. Always a meathead. Harley had multiple quirks that made her fast, strong, and bloodthirsty which everyone was trying to defeat her. Joker said, Eri. End overhaul. His existence disgusts me. Eri giggled. Yes papa. Eri then appeared in front of overhaul in a flash which she grabbed his face to rewind him back to nothingness. John Wick said, Jesus, he turned them into Nomus. All for one said, I would be impressed by this, but they are trying to end us. Joker then pulled out a gun which he said, I made a quirk erasing bullet, but I don't know who to use it on. Harley was then ended by everyone, which Joker shot all for one in the head. They watched as all for one died in front of them, which the Joker laughed, I did it. I killed the symbol of evil and peace. Tamura went up to all for one's body crying for him, Joker smiled. What is this a funeral? The rest of the league cried for Harley because they had no choice but to end her. Deku said, stop. You have one chance to surrender. Joker pulled out a remote which the anarchist said, F. He has this place ready to blow. Joker smiled, Eri. End them. Eri giggled as she started using multiple quirks. But Deku said, Eri. The anarchist said, you don't have to do this Eri, you can live a happy life. The Izuku were trying to convince Eri, which then Eri giggled louder until she grabbed Joker which he yelled, What are you doing? Eri then had one of her arms into a blade to stab Joker repeatedly and laughing. After she finished with Joker, she dropped him which Joker chuckled. I see you are also taking a stab at comedy Eri. A dying performance. Bravo. I get to die with the last laugh. Joker laughed and fell into one of his containers full of chemicals which everyone was shocked by what just happened. Then Eri laughed. She laughed long and hard but then she started crying which the Izukas came to her to comfort her as she cried. Everyone looked at her in sadness because of what Joker did to her. Akiva looked at Joker's dyed body to whisper, I'm sorry. The Izuku headed back to their base of operations to get it ready to explode. Because they were not sharing their technology with the universes where they are a monster. Bakugo said, thank you, for saving everyone. Even if this isn't your dimension, I would like to say, thank you. They nodded then the anarchist asked, I wish we can help Iri more here but Eraserhead is a better choice as her new father. Bakugo asked, I wish I could have done things differently. Maybe he wouldn't have turned out like this and Ant and Co wouldn't have died. Maybe me and Izuku could have been friends. The Izuku flinched then Bakugo called Joker by his name instead of Deku which Deku put his hand on Bakugo to say, Be a hero. That's what he would have wanted you to be. But be the hero that saves people with a smile on his face. Bakugo smiled, I will. He walked off and the anarchist asked, How does everyone like their tattoos? The Punisher said, You are a good tattoo artist. You should retire from villainy and be a tattoo artist. Fyron said, Strongly agree with Punisher. Deku looked at his tattoo on his arm with the words, Fratrum Esti which he smiled and the anarchist said, We should do this more often and get other versions of us on this. They all agreed, and they turn away from the warehouse which had exploded, Deku said, Cool guys don't look at explosion. They all chuckled from the statement which the anarchist said, Okay, time to get everyone home. The anarchist smiled, You have done so much, I'm excited for the match. Deku smirked, I would like to thank you for your assistance. The anarchist asked, You want another tattoo before our fight? Deku said, I would like this tattoo to read plus ultra, but I don't know in which font though. The anarchist said, I know, it will be an old English font. Imagine it for a second. Deku liked the idea which they went to the art clause room, which the anarchist drew a sketch of the project. 
Deku said, do it. The anarchists started working on it for a while. Then Kirishima came in to say, Izuku, where? Kirishima saw Deku's complete tattoo on his chest reading plus ultra. An old English font which Kirishima teared up, so. Manly, Deku said, Punisher is right. You need to become a tattoo artist instead of being a villain. The anarchist said, This is a fun hobby, so is being a villain. I can do both but maybe change to be an antihero. And maybe open up a tattoo parlor as well. Kirishima asked, Can I get a tattoo? The anarchist smirked, What do you want? Midnight came into her art room to see Deku shirtless with his tattoos. The anarchist shirtless revealing his tattoos, and Kirishima almost done with his tattoo. Midnight's nose bled like crazy from this which she said, I must be in a beautiful dream. The anarchist smirked, Lucky for you, this is reality. Kirishima got his tattoo which was a red dragon on his back which the anarchist said, Now that is manly. Kirishima teared up, I feel ten times manlier than before. Midnight was enjoying watch them with their tattoos which the anarchist looked at them to say, This has to be my finest work here. Hiroraka, Asui, Mina, Jairo, and Momo came in to see what was going on, which they had nosebleeds from the three men being shirtless and their exposed tattoos. Deku asked, Hiroraka, you okay? Hiroraka stuttered, Why ye yes, I am fi finny. The anarchist chuckled, You are going to have a blast. The anarchist got up to say, I'm going to bring a commentator for our match, give me a moment to get him. The anarchist left the room with his shirt on which he thought, You're welcome Deku. Fifteen minutes later, Deku and his friends were sitting at Jim Gamma to see who the anarchist is bring which they saw the portal open. The anarchist came out with a teen in a red spandex suit with guns and katanas which the anarchist said. Then he ended Joker, that is what you missed Deadpool. Deadpool said, well F nuggets, I can't believe I missed it. The anarchist said, okay Deadpool, you can stand over there where the mic is at and you can start the match. Deadpool got to the mic to say, let's get ready to rumbly. Everyone looked at Deadpool which he said, On this corner we have quirkless villain, that has beaten all might, time traveled, dimensional traveled, and is one of the best fighters in his dimension. The anarchist. The Deadpool looked at Deku. On this side, we have the hero, a good friend, all might's successor, and a future symbol of peace. Deku. Everyone cheered for Deku. But there were some people cheering for the anarchist because he needs so as well. The anarchist took over his armor to say, I like you, Deku. You will get an even fight. Deku smirked, how is taking off your armor giving you an even fight? The anarchist appeared in front of Deku which Deku got on the defense. The anarchist said, I gave up my defense in exchange for power and speed which we will now have a fight. Deku punched the anarchist with 25% of OFA which the anarchist still had his gloves on, so he caught the punch. Deku chuckled, you kept the gloves but not the armor, so you can catch my punches and kicks. The anarchist smiled, good, you are getting the picture, now show me more power. Izuku put 30% into his right leg which the anarchist took it which he smiled, you got to try harder. The anarchist threw him but Deku used black whip to grab him to throw him around. The anarchist laughed, now this is a fight. The anarchist pulled out a taser to tase the whip to tase Deku to let him go. The anarchist got up to say, that was a funny ride. Deadpool said, we are going to need to look at the rules again. Oh, just the one rule? Okay. The anarchist started to rush punch Deku in the chest to get an easy win but Deku put 35% of OFA to his leg to kick his D which the anarchist crawled away which Deadpool said, ouch, right in the no-no spot. The anarchist grabbed a stim pack to fix his problem which he got up to say, sneaky and dirty, I like it. Deku charged at him which he threw some sand in his eyes, sand attack. Deadpool said, very dry moves from the anarchist. The anarchist said, sorry. Deku switched to use his ears to fight blind which he got some hits on the anarchist. The anarchist jumped in the air to drop kick Deku. Deku got the sand out of his eyes and caught the anarchist foot. Deku then threw him to the ground to punch his face. He punched him incredibly hard. Deku walked back thinking he accidentally ended him, but the anarchist pulled out another stim pack to heal himself again. The anarchist said, I lost, good job. We both got to experience new meaning of kicking your own as and getting your as kicked by yourself. Deadpool said, I got to see myself kick my as on the sidelines. But anarchist why don't you use? The anarchist covered his mouth to say, don't you dare. Everyone looked at the anarchist and Deadpool which Deadpool nodded, so the anarchist removed his hand. Deadpool said, okay, sent me home and we will talk about this brotherhood stuff later. The anarchist got Deadpool back then he looked at Deku to say, I'm coming back on vacation days and whatnot. Remember if you want a tattoo, call me, I can get you a real good one. Deku chuckled, you aren't a bad guy. The anarchist chuckled, no I'm not. The anarchist gave him a stim pack and said, research that, you might find it very useful. The anarchist then warped back to his dimension leaving Deku to have fun with his friends. The anarchist dimension. Izuku went to his office to say, well that was one hell of a month, let's see what I should do with my dimension. Izuku pulled out a picture of him and Deku smiling while he was teaching him about how to get a woman. 
Izuku put the picture in his drawer then looked at his computer to say, Well, I guess I'll wait for vacation or the Brotherhood to reasonable. Izuku sat down which Dabai came in to ask. I have a question. Izuku said, Yes, Dabai. Dabai asked, Do you know why the League, Overhaul, and the Weed Shop haven't been getting electric bills? Izuku pointed at his head to say, You can't get electric bills if you own the electric company. Tell everyone that as long as I own the electric company, they won't get a single electric bill. Dabai smirked, You are our hero because of this. Izuku chuckled, I'm no hero. I just like this simple life. Dabai left which a grunt came into the office which Izuku got the mail from the grunt. Izuku paid each bill then looked at the one from the Bank of Japan which Izuku said, I have to pay this one, I'm not going down for not paying this one. Izuku looked at his schedule which was extremely free which he called up Dabai, hey, want to go to Vegas or the Bahamas? Dabai said, we vote for Vegas. Izuku said, prepare the party. We are going to Vegas tomorrow and it's going to be a three-day stay. Izuku then went home, hey Melissa, Kayoka, May, and Toga. Izuku saw Toga with the other girls which Melissa said, hey Izuku, you look surprised. Izuku said, Well I don't remember telling Toga where I live but I shouldn't be surprised by it now. Well I got great news. Kayoka asked, What's the good news? Izuku said, I'm extremely free for the next three days, so we are going on vacation. The girls were smiling from this, which Melissa asked, Where are we going? Izuku smiled, To one of my vacation homes. This one is in Las Vegas, USA. The girls' jaws dropped, which May asked, Las Vegas? Izuku said, Yep. Toga asked, One of your vacation homes, how many do you have? Izuku chuckled, one in Vegas, one in the Bahamas, one in England, and one in Italy. But the one in England is under an exorcism at the moment so we are not going there anytime soon. Kayoka asked, what? Izuku chuckled, it's a long story, trust me on this one. Toga said, I would actually love to hear it. Melissa and May nodded which Izuku sighed, okay, but I warned you all. A few months ago, in England, Izuku, Hatsuhiro, and Dabai entered a house which the real estate agent said, this is a house built back before the war. Izuku asked, sorry to interrupt, but which war? The real estate agent said, before World War I. The guys looked at it which they admit it was in great shape. The agent continued, it is a house for up to eight people to live in, it comes with everything, and it's on 30 acres. The price is at 7,600,000. Izuku looked at him, isn't that a little below average price? The agent said, well you see the house is supposedly haunted and there has been a history of previous owners committing suicide. Dabai, Izuku, and Atsuhiro laughed their asses off which Izuku said, We will buy this house and we will stay here for three days to prove that this house isn't haunted. After a few papers signed and everything, the three looked at the house for a little bit. The Atsuhiro saw something, guys, look at that window. They looked at where he was pointing at which they saw a black-haired girl looking at them then walking away. Dabai said, We are going to need some holy water, crosses, salt, and a Bible for each of us. Izuku said, Okay, I'm not backing down from my word, but we are going to live in that house for three days like I told the agent. So, we need the supplies to survive this. They came back to the home with sleeping bag, food, water, flashlights, batteries, clothes, crosses made of iron, gloves, holy water, salt, and Bibles. Dabai asked, Don't we have to be priests to do exorcisms? Izuku said, Dabai. I'm not trusting child rapists to save me from ghosts and demons, you produce blue flames which is considered holy flames. Atsuhiro said, Out of everything I can see us doing together, I never thought I would be in a haunted house with you too. Izuku said, Let's go in and sleep next to the fireplace. They got set up in the living room with a huge fireplace which they put some wood in it and Dabai started the fire. Izuku poured the salt to surround their sleeping spot and Atsuhiro checked the supplies to say, Everything is safe. Izuku smiled, I'm going to the restroom. Izuku grabbed a cross and some salt to then head to the restroom. After he went, he saw a shadow move. Izuku turned on the flashlight to see a nun standing there which he threw salt at her and hailed as from the nun. The nun screamed in pain which Izuku came back to the guys which Dabai asked, What was that? Izuku said, There is a nun roaming around the place and I threw salt at her. Atsuhiro clapped to say, Good job, you pissed her off. Then they heard a bike ring and they saw a doll on a little tricycle roll across the hall which Dabai set it on fire. Izuku pulled out a fire extinguisher to put out the fire. Then he picked the doll to throw it in the fireplace. Izuku said, Dabai, next time get the doll to the fireplace. I don't want to burn this house to the ground. Later the second night, it was Atsuhiro's shift to be on watch why he got up to stretch and he turned to see a doll with a damaged eye on a chair. Atsuhiro sighed, another doll. He went over to it to pick it up and he heard a child's laughter. He quickly got back to the salt line then threw the doll into the fire. He sat down to then read a book Dabai picked up in the house. Atsuhiro chuckled, British nursery rhymes. This should be fun. The first one page was about the crooked man. After a while he heard the door ring. 
Izuku and Dabai woke up which Izuku said, Okay, we are all going to the bell. Separating is the worst decision we can possibly do. They got up to the door to see who was there, but they heard the back door ringing. Dabai asked, Who could possibly be entering from the back door? They walked over to the back door to see something sitting down looking away from them. Atsuhiro walked over to see its face, but the thing got up to his legs which revealed the thing was taller than the three of them. The thing said, There was a crooked man. He walked the crooked miles. Izuku, Dabai, and Atsuhiro ran like hell to get back to the safe spot which the crooked man followed them. Atsuhiro said, I knew shouldn't be reading books in this house. They got back which the crooked man kept monologuing which they picked up their crosses and Dabai asked, You think these will work? Izuku chuckled, hopefully. The crooked man looked at them then turned into the nun Izuku saw on the first day. Izuku said, Oh shit, it's that beach. The nun screamed putting out the fire in the fireplace behind them, which the three laughed at her. The nun looked confused which Dabai restarted the fire with his quirk which she freaked out which led the guys to realize the theory of Dabai's blue flames are holy flames. Izuku said, That's right beach. We have someone who can produce one of your weaknesses. The guys started chasing her after her with Dabai's blue flames, crosses, and salt, which they surrounded her in the kitchen. Izuku said, I hate this kitchen. Burn her up and we will salt this beach. Dabai nodded and set the nun on fire while Izuku and Atsuhiro threw salt at her, which she they turned into black smoke and vanished. Dabai asked, you think we cured this house? Izuku said, no. Atsuhiro asked, what makes you think we didn't? Izuku said, this is one of the three spirits here. Dabai and Atashiro in shock. What do you mean there are two other spirits? Izuku pointed and the other two turned to see the little girl from the window on the first day and a red-faced demon-looking monster. The three ran back to the safe zone to escape the two other spirits that were in the house. When they got back to the safe zone, they put down some extra salt which Dabai said, You have some interesting taste in houses Izuku. But next time if the house is haunted don't buy it without getting a couple of priests to exercise it. Izuku said, One more night. Just one more night. Then we will get the hell out of here. Then I'm calling an archbishop to do this. Atusiro asked, You have that much connection? Izuku said, No, the Catholic Church loves money more than what people know. I will show them the place then they will see how bad it is and they will fix it. They sat down and laughed for a little bit. Dabai asked, So, what do you think that red-faced demon thing was? Izuku and Atsuhiro said, An actual demon. Dabai said, Guys, I can produce holy flames, meaning they will take me out first. Izuku said, Well we are going to protect you, so you can protect us. Atsuhiro revealed his new iron playing cards to say, I hope these things work for these beings. Izuku noticed they had crosses on the back which Izuku said. Put them in the jar of holy water just for a little bit to just be sure. They pulled out their only supply of holy water which they put the iron cards in it. They sat back to back wondering what will happen next. A TV in the room turned on which they saw the girl exit from the TV which Atsurio threw one of his cards at her. The card went through her head and she turned into black smoke and they relaxed for a little bit. Izuku said, just one more. Dabai asked, how do we know that there isn't more besides the three we know? Izuku and Atsuhiro had wide eyes which Izuku said. This house is too beautiful to burn down so we are going to end the beings one at a time. It was the final day which the three were prepared for the red-faced demon. They had a plan to fight it and hopefully end it. Izuku memorized the lines to say to end it. Atsuhiro had his cards, and Dabai was ready to burn its back to hell. They left the safe spot, but they walked really close together. Izuku put on his iron bras knuckles which he never though he would be using them for this. They continued walking until Atsuhiro asked, Guys who is watching to see if he could attack us from above. They stopped and they looked up where the demon jumped down to attack them. The demon kicked Dabai to a grandfather clock. Atsuhiro got hit by its tail to be sent to the wall, and Izuku got in his boxer position to punch its face. Izuku said, You want to dance motherfur? Then let's dance. The demon clawed and tried to stab Izuku with its tail. Izuku dodged and weaved the attacks. Izuku then would jab and punch its face. Izuku looked to see an axe nearby. He grabbed the axe to chop off the tail. The demon screamed in pain. Izuku punched its face and got on top of it to give it a beat down. Izuku said, not so tough now without your tail. After the beat down, Dabai and Atsuhiro got up which the three picked up the demon and brought it to the fireplace to burn its back to hell. They relaxed then the next morning the agent came by. Izuku smiled, see, not haunted. The agent smiled, well the hauntings are just local myths then. The guys got out of the house and ready to leave, which they looked back at it to admire the place. Then Izuku saw a clown holding a red balloon in the house. Dabai and Atsuhiro saw him too. Izuku sighed, time to call the Vatican. Present. Izuku said, that's the story. The girls looked at him which Melissa said, as ridiculous as the story was. I will believe it. Izuku in shock, what? Kayoka said, you're not the guy who would lie to us, so we believe in you. Izuku relaxed then said, I'm glad you believe me. 
but let's focus on our vacation to Vegas. A party of nine arrived at Izuku's vacation house in Vegas which Izuku said, I always ask myself why do I have to leave this place? The house was big and the inside was beautiful, which the girls went to master bedroom. Izuku looked at the guys and said, Okay, I'm going to give you for some gambling money you can use, but don't spend too much for tonight. Dabai asked, You aren't coming. Izuku said, I'm going to relax for tonight and maybe tomorrow, but I will get involved soon. But for now, have fun. Izuku gave them each a card which the cards were bank accounts with money. Jin said, I'm going to blow this money like nothing. Atsuhiro said, I'm going to the Vegas magic show to learn some new tricks and show off some of mine. Higuchi said, I'm going to play blackjack. Dabai smirked, same. Izuku went to a drawer and said, please be there. He opened the drawer to find a bottle of drugs which Dabai asked, what that for? Izuku smirked, I'm going to need energy to last longer if you catch my drift. Dabai nodded in the four left, which Izuku chuckled before taking one and headed to the bedroom. The four horsemen were now at the middle of Vegas which they headed to different areas of Vegas. Dabai and Iguchi went to play blackjack which they looked at the guy they are playing with. Dabai asked, Hey, you look familiar. Have I seen you somewhere before? The man said, You might have, but right now you are going feel the thunder in this game. Iguchi grabbed Dabai to whisper, It's Jack Black. We are playing blackjack with Jack Black. Dabai looked at the man and realized they were playing blackjack with Jack Black, which Dabai said, Please forgive me, Mr. Black. I didn't realize who you were until now. I hope we have a good game. Jack chuckled. I hope for a good game as well. After a while Jack beat them in the game which Aguchi said, It was an honor playing with you. Dabai chuckled. You know how to play a great game. Jack said, Well gentlemen, you want to have a drink with me? They nodded and followed Jack Black to get some drinks. They started off the first day with meeting Jack Black. Jin. Jin was walking around until he saw a pawn shop with the sign read, Gold and Silver Pawn. Jin went inside to see what they had which he saw beautiful art to old guns. A bald guy with some facial hair to make beard. Jin looked at the car outside the shop which was a black 1962 Lincoln Continental for sale which Jin asked, How much for the car? The man said, Well how about $32,000? Jin smiled, $25,000. The man said, $31,000. Jin chuckled, $27,000. The man sighed, $30,000. Jin looked at him, $29,000. The man said, I can't go lower. Jin chuckled, You sure? They looked at each other for a little bit which the man said, $29,000. They shook hands, which Jin thought, Sucker, I could have bought it for $32,000 but I wanted some fun. Jin got the car and decided to drive around town in it for a while to see what everyone was doing. Jin drove around until he saw Atsuhiro watching a few magicians doing some stuff that could end them. Atsuhiro asked, How is this magic? It's a guy in a gloss box suffering the hot weather, I don't see the magic. He turned to see Jin in his new car and jumped in to then drive off. Atsuhiro said, Jin, you have an excellent taste in cars. Just hide it from Izuku so he doesn't attempt to buy from you. Jin said, what? I was going to show it off just to see what Izuku would offer for this. Izuku. Izuku went to get some water which he was thirsty as hell from his five hours of relaxing. He got a phone call, hello. The person on the other side said, Mr. Midoriya, this is Archbishop Patrick. We are here to tell you that we are no longer going to exercise your vacation home in England. Izuku asked, why? Patrick said, because after sending 30 men, only one came back. He stated that the house is sitting on the gate of hell which requires the blood of Christ to close it. Izuku asked, are you kidding me? Patrick said, nope. Izuku sighed, okay, I guess I'll go on a personal treasure hunt for the blood of Christ. Izuku hung up the phone thought, I will find a solution for this. Wait Izubuk. He looked at the multiple versions of himself until he came across Izuku Constantine, which he put him in favorites so he can communicate with him later after his vacation. Izuku looked that he drank an entire gallon of water which he chuckled, round two here I come. Dabai, Jin. Atsuhiro, Aguchi, and Jack Black. The guys were in Jin's car driving the strip which Jack said, Oh boy, we are truly driving around like legends. Dabai said, Where are we going to? Caesar's Palace. They parked in a parking spot and got inside to gamble and drink for a while. Dabai, Jack, and Aguchi were owning the tables which Dabai at his table said, Sorry fellas, you aren't going to win this one. Dabai revealed a royal flush which the people at his table were surprised. Dabai smirked and gave $50 K chip to the dealer. One of the men spoke, you play a good game, you here on vacation? Dabai said, yeah, invited by a friend who owns a vacation house here. The dealer asked, can I ask who this friend is? Dabai chuckled, Izuku Midoriya. The anarchist, the men, the dealer, and the people in tables surround them stopped what they were doing to look at Dabai. Dabai sighed, what did he do here? The dealer said, the owner, the police commissioner, and the mayor are not happy with him because of last time. Dabai asked, what happened last time? 
one of the men said, he threw the biggest and wildest party in existence. People in the streets celebrated as well. They had to use the entire police force to break it apart and a lot of people got hurt. A woman said, this hotel was where it started but it expanded to the streets and it is rumored that he banged not only the owner's daughter but also the police commissioner's twin daughters and the mayor's daughter. Dabai, Agachi, Jin, and Natsuhiro facepalmed from this which Jin said, he didn't poke the bear. He did something worse to the bear. Agachi said, he didn't piss off the bear, he pissed on the bear. That bear is going to be pissed when they realize Izuku is in town. The dealer said, that was a party this city will never forget. I'm sure Al Capone would be proud of. I remember the orgy I got into from it. Dabai said, I didn't need to hear that. The bartender said, the town ran out of alcohol for a week. Jail cells were flooded, and a lot of people got STDs from it. A man yelled, that party made me want to become a better man. A woman said, that party prevented me from ending it all. A waiter said, that party helped me found my fiancé, I don't regret it. A man came out of the elevator to shout, who mentioned that bastard who banged my daughter. The five guys ran like hell to the car, Jin said. What the hell was Izuku thinking at the time? I mean he threw the great Las Vegas party in riot. Jack said, I always wanted to meet the man himself, I assume you are going to his place. Iguchi said, of course we are, we have some words for him. Atsuhiro said, just when I was going to enjoy some fun, we get some out of control madness Izuku created. Dabai sighed, we have to tell Izuku what happened, and he probably has something prepared for this. Izuku's vacation house. Izuku came back downstairs for a drink of water. He has spent the past four hours relaxing then he looked at his food storage. Then he heard the guys coming in which he said, hey guys. Dabai shouted, you threw the biggest party in this city's history. Izuku looked at him, yeah. So, Iguchi asked, how can you F the bear like that? Izuku said, that was a time when I was with Chow and we got extremely fed up on some drugs. They looked at him and Dabai asked, who's Chow? Izuku smiled, he is my Chinese business partner who helped me with that same wicked party. Which he also called me he was in town about three days ago. He is still in town so I might make another party like the previous. Jin said, oh no, we are going to have a normal vacation. We don't need any more craziness than this. Iguchi nodded and Izuku said, Okay, Pen and Teller are also coming here. Atsuhiro's jaw dropped. You mean the Pen and Teller? When are they coming? Izuku said, In three hours. I'm about to take a shower in a little bit because I smell. They then smelled and realized he smells like sex which they backed up from him. Izuku laughed and went to back upstairs to take a shower. Jack said, I like him. He has personality and a nice guy. Dabai said, he can be a handful at times. The guy went to the couch to find Izuku's PS7 which they decided to play for a while. They heard a doorbell which Dabai got up to answer it, which they opened it to reveal two guys. Dabai asked, can I help you? The first man asked, is Izuku here? Atsuhiro came and said, yes he is, come on in. The second man said, thank you. Oh, where's my manners, I'm Pen. The other guy said, I'm Teller. Pen and Teller came into living room which Izuku was still getting ready. Izuku's girlfriends and the guys were in the living room talking and having a great time. Then Izuku came out in a green tuxedo which he went to the door to find a short Chinese man which Izuku smiled. Chow. Chow said, I see you KU. The girls went upstairs to get some rest which Chow said, I got the stuff. Izuku rubbed his hands. Oh boy Chow, you got the good stuff. Dabai asked, what stuff? Chow smiled, the best shit. Chow pulled out acid for everyone which everyone took it. Which Izuku said, ooh, I can feel it. Everyone laid back which Izuku looked at Dabai to ask, what color are your flames again? Dabai made a small flame on his hand which everyone saw a different color. But in Izuku's eyes it was the entire rainbow. Jin asked, guys, do you hear that? Jack said, I hear Santa. No, I hear Po the Kung Fu Panda. Teller gazed around the room, I hear the panda as well. But where is it coming from? Pen said, I can hear my wife and kids. Quick everybody hide somewhere. Everyone hid in different part of the room, which Izuku said, I can hear CIA and heroes. They found me, let's get out of here. Everyone somehow fit in the car. Chow and Jin got in the trunk of the car while Dabai, Aguchi, Pen, Jack, and Teller got in the back of the car. Izuku and Atsuhiro were in the front seats, which they drove away from the house to go into town. Atsuhiro asked, wait, are we supposed to be driving? Izuku said, we're fine. We just have to obey the green stop signs, blue stop lights, white go lights, and other stuff. Dabai said, I'm real sure it's blue stop signs, green stop lights, and yellow go lights. Izuku said, well hash dollar sign percent hash dollar sign dollar sign percent. Pen asked, holy shit, how did you do that? Teller said, easy, percent hash hash percent percent hash. Jack said, dollar sign hash percent hash dollar sign. Izuku said, damn Jack, you should have said that in Kung Fu Panda 4. Jack said, I know I should have, it would have been funny as hell. They drove around until they found the Ultra Lux which Izuku chuckled. They can't find us here. Izuku and the guys were tripping themselves as they got in which they got checked in. 
They got their room which Jin asked. What should we eat? Izuku looked at the menu. I like this steak they are offering. Izuku picked up the phone to get everyone's order which they got them in a couple of minutes. The waiter wore a real fine suit and a white mask which after eating some of the food, Atsuhiro asked, Hey, why is there a ring in my food? Everyone looked at his food which had a wedding ring in the meat. Chow said, I think I gave everyone the good trip, but bad hallucinations. Izuku chuckled, I hope it's the hallucinations. The door opened which the waiter said, Did you gentlemen found a ring in your food? If you did, we will take it back and give you another round of food to make up for it. They gave it back which Aguchi asked. Why was the ring in the food? The waiter smiled. One of our chefs dropped it in the food. We humbly apologize for this. The waiter left which Izuku said. That guy is lying. You want to see what is really going on here. Before anyone answered Izuku's phone rang which he picked it up. Hello. A voice said, meet us in the desert in two hours. Izuku confused. What? The voice said, don't F with me, ciao. Izuku gave the phone to Chao which Chao realized he had Izuku's phone, which Chao talked to the voice, which Chao hung up to say, we need to find Doug. Izuku said, who's Doug? Chao said, exactly, even I don't know who Doug is. We got to find a Doug, so I get my $80k. Dabai said, we will help you find a Doug, we just need to go around town to find one. Pen said, we all can't find in the car especially with a Doug in it. Atsuhiro said, Okay, we split up Izuku and Dabai go with Chao while we investigate this place. Higuchi smiled, I love it. They split up into he two groups which Izuku, Dabai, and Chao went to find Doug or a Doug. They drove around going looking at people which Chao pointed at a man and said, That's Doug. Dabai surround Doug with flames and Izuku jumped out of the car to knock him out. They then zip-tied him and put a bag over his head. Then they drove to the desert for a trade. Which Dabai asked, I wonder how the guys are doing. The second group. The guys stood in their place when they saw that the food was made from people and that the staff of the hotel are cannibal. Which Jin said, let's get the F out of here. They agreed but they saw their waiter and he said, I'm sorry gentlemen, but we can't let you go. Atsuhiro said, apologies for what comes next. Atsuhiro threw his razor playing card to instantly end the waiter which then they were under attack by the staff. The Gucci took their gun and knives to end the enemies. Jin took two guns and shot up the place like a madman. Atsuhiro was throwing cards with grace which Pen and Teller were praising each accurate throw. Jack was surrounded by some staff which he pulled some kung fu to take them out which Aguchi asked. You actually know kung fu? Jack said, I didn't know I knew kung fu. They fought even more staff until some people who stayed at the hotel came to help the staff which Pen said, We are heavily outnumbered, we need to do something. Atsuhiro remembered a special gift from Izuku which he pulled out 10 marbles to throw them at the enemy. The marbles turned into gnomus which they started wreaking havoc on the enemies. They ran out of the building to get away from the cannibals which they ran a good distance from the hotel. They were going to call Izuku when they believed they were safe. Izuku, Dabai, and Chao. The three in their car looked at the car in front of them in the desert which the car finally flashed its lights. They got out the car leaving Doug in the car which the other car had three men coming out and the fat guy fell out of the car. Chao and Izuku laughed which Chao said. That's funny, fat guy falling. One of the men said, okay, we got the money. $80k in cash. Chao said, throw it over and I hand you Doug. The man with the glazes said, well first of all, good morning and we would like to see Doug. To see if he is okay and we didn't catch her name. Chao said, Mr. Chao. Leslie Chao. Chao nodded and Dabai pulled Doug out of the car which the three guys believe he was alright. Chao said, see he fine, now hand me the money or I end all you mother for and I still take the money. Izuku showed his gun and Dabai revealed his flames, which the three threw the bag of money at Izuku so Izuku can count it. Izuku nodded to Chao that they got the money which Dabai threw Doug at the men. They took off the mask to reveal Doug but the taller guy asked, Is this a joke? The man with the glazes said, That is not Doug. Chao said, What are you talking about that is Doug? The fat guy said, The Doug we are looking for is a white. Izuku pulled the tape off Doug's mouth which Doug said, I told you, you have the wrong Doug. Doug looked at the fat guy, Damn Allen. What did you get me into? The tall guy asked. You know him? Alan said. Yeah, he is the one who sold me the banned drugs. Doug said. I didn't sell you no banned drugs. Izuku leaned over to Chow to say. This is funny as hell. The gloss guy asked. Wait he is the one who gave you the Rohypnol. Doug asked. I sold what? The tall guy pissed. Who gives a shit? Where's Doug? Doug said. I am Doug. Alan asked. Wait, your name is Doug. Doug said. Yes. Alan said. Classic name mix up. Dabai, Izuku, and Chao walked back to the car which the tall guys yelled, Hey, where are you going? Chao said, We gave you Doug, now we are done. He said, You gave us the wrong Doug. Izuku said, Not our problem. They got in the car and drove off, which the three laughed their asses off. Izuku got a call from the guys to come pick them up. 
They drove around until they found them which they Jin said. The hotel was full of cannibals. Dabai said, we ate humans. Izuku smirked. Technically me and Aguchi are not humans in this society so it's okay for us. Aguchi chuckled a bit from that while everyone one gave him a look which Izuku said, in all seriousness, I didn't expect that of all things. Hatsuhiro said, I released ten gnomas to destroy the place and the acid is about to wear off. They drove to the hotel to pick the gnomas up and haul is out of Vegas and relocate the vacation to somewhere else. They got back to the vacation house to let the acid's effects wear off but left a note for them to relocate vacation to the Bahamas. After three hours, they woke up sober which Melissa asked, How are you guys doing? Izuku smiled, We are fine. Just a little tired. The guys got up which Jack, Penn, Teller, and Chow were warped home, while the guys and Izuku's girls were warped to the Bahamas to escape the law for a little bit. They spend the last day at the beach and getting some sun. The next day they returned to Japan which they had a blast on their vacation, which Izuku went to his office to get Izuku Constantine. After some warping, he found Constantine which he asked, So, what is your business? Izuku said, I need your help to close the gate of hell in my vacation house in England. I will pay you a shit ton of money. Constantine smirked, Sounds tempting, but I need a little more. Izuku took him to a storage build full of artifacts and said, You can also have five things in here. Constantine looked around and saw a crown made of thorns which Constantine asked, Why do you have the crown of thorns in here? Izuku shrugged, What? Constantine picked it up, Do you know what this is? Izuku shrugged, Hell if I know, I thought it looked cool, so I took it. Constantine said, This is the crown of thorns as in Jesus Christ wore it during his crucifixion. Izuku said, That's neat. Well that's one item. Constantine picked up Joan of Arc's sword, the sandals of Christ, the ring of dispel, then he saw a little bag with a stone in it. Izuku said, that is the philosopher's stone you are looking at. You can have it if you want. Constantine smirked. Well I'm adding it to the chart. Izuku picked up a hammer to throw it around it up in the air and catch it which Constantine looked at the hammer closely and asked, Is that the M. Jolnir? Izuku asked, A what now? Constantine said, Thor's hammer. Izuku asked, Is that why the people in a Norwegian town where I found this it started worshipping me as soon as I picked up this hammer? Izuku shrugged and put the hammer somewhere else, which Constantine said, You need to know what you have here. Izuku said, I'm just a collector of things that I find cool and interesting. Izuku then show Constantine his vacation house in England which they saw a clown with a red balloon, a creature that was almost human but had wings and head of an owl, and many other things in the house. Izuku asked, are you sure you can handle this? Constantine chuckled, this will be easy. Izuku left him to do his job and went back to his office to say, according to his Yelp reviews, he gets the job done, but I need to research the items in my artifact warehouse to see what I have. Izuku went to the warehouse to see what he had. After a few hours he learned that he had a wide variety of things from Christianity to ancient religions. He declared his most valuable item was the Holy Grail which he thought it was just a regular cup he picked up from his armed dealings in Syria and Iraq. He was surprised Constantine didn't take it. Maybe because it was in the very far back of the warehouse and they didn't even get quarter of the way there. Izuku wasn't a hoarder, but a collector of objects that catches his eyes. He then upgraded the security on the warehouse to keep the stuff more protected because he didn't realize until now he was protecting many legendary objects. Izuku went back to his office with the Holy Grail and put it next to the book and vampire mask then said, Well that vacation has definitely made me recharged and more focused than I usually am. I can't wait for my next vacation, but let's see what's next. Izuku sitting on the couch with his girlfriends watching some movies which had he was getting interested in them. Izuku enjoys being surrounded by his girlfriends in his blanket naked, which then the channel changed into emergency broadcast. The TV reporter said, Breaking news. The s clause villain known as the Anarchist has been caught recently this morning and today is Wednesday. The girls and Izuku looked at the TV in confusion which Izuku in shock, I'm right here. The TV showed this other Izuku in a green outfit and tattoos which Izuku asked, Deku, how the free f did you get to my dimension? There are only two people in the multiverse with the tech, how? They asked, multiverse. Izuku said, yeah, I have a prototype multiverse traveling device that needs some more work. That is Deku, he is the hero version of me. Melissa asked, how do you know him? Izuku said, I went to visit his dimension which I gave him those tattoos and helped him control his quirk he got from All Might. The girls look at him in shock. Kayoka asked, what are you going to do? Izuku got up to say, I got to go rescue him and return him home. Also to figure out how he got here. Izuku got dressed and Sensei looked at him to ask, I thought you were captured. Izuku said, No, that is another me from the multiverse which I got to return him home. Inko smiled, You're going to save him like a hero. Izuku said, You can think of it however you want. I'm mostly going to get him out to figure out where he got the multiverse traveling device. Izuku left which Sensei called up everyone to say, My bad. Don't send the 200 Namu army to attack the police station. 
Izuku has a plan and weird things are going on. Izuku quickly grabbed a few weapons, sleep gas containers, gas mask, and Drax the high end to take him there. Izuku landed in front of the police station which everyone from the police, heroes, and news reporters were confused as there were two Izuku Midorias. Deku was chained up extremely tight to a dolly and displayed like a trophy. Izuku said, Damn it Deku, you can't come to my dimension without my permission. Deku looked at him in happiness. Anarchist, thank god you're here to explain my situation. Izuku said, Yeah, this is my dimension. You don't belong here, and I've come to put you back in your dimension where you can go around being a hero. All might in confusion, okay, what is going on? Deku, dimensional travel, hero, I want answers. No, everyone here needs answers. Izuku asked, well let Deku out, promise not to arrest me as I tell everyone here everything. Also, I get to leave to take Deku back to his dimension. Neamas aside, why can't you be a normal teen? Why does the craziest things you say are true? Why haven't I become bald yet from you? Izuku shrugged, I don't have the answers to those questions, but give us chairs and I will answer the questions I can answer. They went inside the police station to talk about what was going on. Izuku looked at Deku, you okay, Deku? They didn't harm you did they? I will throw police brutality charges on them. Deku looked at him, what the hell kind of stuff do you pull here that requires them to chain you up like an animal? Izuku said, a lot, but now I must honor the deal and get your ass back to your dimension. Deku said, thanks for helping me get back, I want to get lunch after this first. Izuku said, sure. Neamasa, All Might, Eraserhead, the police chief, and a government agent sat down across from them. Neamasa sighed, we are going to ask some questions and you are going to answer them honestly. Izuku smirked, I'll answer them honestly, but some questions will not have full answers because I don't even know everything. The government asked, how did you get here Deku? Deku said, I was out and turning and then suddenly I was fighting a villain with a quirk that sends people into other dimensions. Then I found myself in an alley and when I asked for help from police officers, they arrested me. Izuku deadpanned, you got arrested by petty police officers, really? Deku asked, why are you looking at me like that? Izuku sighed, I don't get captured by police officers, I get captured by heroes, you are making me look bad. Deku and everyone looked at him like he was crazy. The agent asked, How long have you had the technology to time travel and dimensional travel? Izuku said, Time travel. Six months, dimensional travel. One and a half months. Naamasa sighed because Izuku told nothing but the truth which Naamasa wants to believe he was just a good liar. All Might asked, In your dimension Deku, you're a hero. Deku smiled, Yeah, you saw the hero in me. You gave me your quirk and I'm your successor, but you are retired in my dimension and all for one is captured. All Might and Eraser had looked at him in shock which the police chief said, Wait, so if All Might would have said that you could be a hero, then we wouldn't have. He gestured Izuku, that. Izuku offended, what is wrong with this? Without me suicide rates for the quirkless wouldn't be so low and quirkless rights wouldn't have been made. I created good in my acts of villainy. I'm a hero to some people around the world you know. Eraser had asked, So, how do you two know each other so well? Deku said, he came to my dimension for a fight, he trained me, so I don't break my bones from using my quirk. Everyone looked at him like he was joking. All Might asked, why? Izuku sighed, I want a fight that my enemy doesn't hurt themselves more than I can. So, I trained him to have better control over his quirk. The racer had smirked, that's incredibly considerate of you. Izuku looked at him, don't push it old man. The agent said, by the order of the government of Japan, you have to reveal and hand over all your technology. Izuku flipped his middle finger, you can take that order and shove up your ass. Kirijiri's warp gate opened which Izuku threw Deku and himself through it, Izuku said, another happy war. Deku said, you could have warned me about this you know. Izuku said, villainy expects everything at any time. Now time to get yourself some food. They stopped at a katsudan shop which Deku said, thanks for paying. Izuku chuckled as he grabbed a magazine nearby to read it. Deku looked at the cover to have a picture of Izuku shirtless. The title reads The Anarchist, Sexiest Villain Alive which Deku laughed, can I see it? Izuku grabbed another magazine to give to Deku so he can read the article about this while they waited for their food. They then heard, D.E.K.U. They both turned to see Bakugo which Bakugo went from pissed to confused as hell, he asked, what the hell is going on? Izuku said, Bakugo, this is Deku. He is me from another dimension where he is a hero. Deku asked, why is he angrier in this dimension? Izuku said, it's probably because I. Bakugo shouted, he erased my quirk and now I'm Q-U-I-R-K-L-E-S-S. Izuku said, Jesus Bakugo, I should have turned you into a Namu when I had the chance. Deku looked at him, you made him quirkless. Izuku said, he had it coming. Hiroshima appeared to grab Bakugo to say, we are going to eat somewhere else. Bakugo said, fine. They left which Izuku smirked, he found himself a boyfriend, looks like I won my bet with Tamira. Deku asked, so, who is as one for all? Izuku said, Shinso Hitoshi. Deku nodded, that sounds good. 
but I wonder how he got it. Izuku said, that is a mystery, but I'm not wasting my time with that. Deku looked at him, you know exactly how he got it. Izuku got up after they ate to say, time to get you to my base of operations to get your is back home. Deku followed him which Izuku got word that Kirijiri is busy at the moment. Izuku said, okay, we are going to the base by foot. Izuku pulled out a grappling hook to scale building while Deku used his quirk to scale up the building. Izuku and Deku had a race for a little bit which Hawks saw them. Izuku said, get down. Deku got down and Izuku threw a stun grenade at Hawks to take him down which Izuku laughed as he fell. Deku came down to save Hawks and make him land safely to the ground, which Izuku said, damn it Deku, you're making look bad by doing that. Deku said, it's what's right. Izuku said, this is my dimension, so I will do what I got am well please. Deku said, I thought you were decent guy, but this is just evil. Izuku said, I'm a villain who is trying to take you back. Hawks is a pain in the ass. All Might crushed my dream and gave Mirio a quirk that ended him. Mirio, never mind. Deku said, I want to know more about Mirio in this dimension. You got to know my dimension really well. I want to know. Izuku said, no, we are not going to discuss this. You wouldn't understand because you mostly likely abandoned your quirkless roots when All Might gave you his quirk. Deku said, I have not abandoned my roots. I think about the quirkless every day. I want to help them and encourage them when I become a hero just like my All Might. Izuku looked at him to say, I will tell you when I feel more comfortable about the subject. They heard screams which Izuku said, that's my job. Deku looked at him running which he followed. They saw some thugs robbing a group of teenage girls. Izuku said, it's time for my little hobby here. Deku then watched as Izuku just beat the shit out of the thugs then told the teens, okay, run along now. The girls asked for a picture which he gladly gotten them taken with them and then they ran off. Izuku said, okay, if we take a right, then left, then two rights, and three lefts, we will arrive at the back door of my base. Deku said, I take it back, you are still a nice guy. Izuku said, yeah, yeah, let's go. They made it the base which Deku saw the whole operation, from quirk erasing factories to nomas to guns to weed to everything. Deku asked, how are nomas made? Izuku said, it's better if you don't. Izuku grabbed the device to warp them to Deku's dimension, which Deku was glad to get back to his dimension. The heroes in his dimension were interrogating the villain who sent him to Izuku's dimension. Everyone was happy to have Deku back and Izuku jumped back while Deku was tell everyone about Izuku's dimension and showed the magazine. Izuku got back to read the time reading 5 which he felt exhausted from getting Deku back to his dimension. He went back to his room in his house with a gallon of ice cream for him and his girlfriends to enjoy while they keep watching movies. Izuku went out to the streets near Ue to watch Bakugo suffer being quirkless. But he has been noticing a few changes in him. Bakugo started smiling and making friends. He is becoming a friendlier person to people, not loud and prideful. Izuku was not happy by this. He wanted Bakugo to suffer like he did. He wanted Bakugo to struggle like he did but a lot worse. He wants Bakugo to beg for death and jump off a building into another life where he will get another quirk. Izuku asked himself, why are you being like this? Why are you being like this after your quirk is erased? Why? Why? The people in the cafe looked at him which Izuku sighed, apologies. He saw Bakugo leaving Yue with his boyfriend Kirishima which he decided to follow him. He saw that Bakugo laughing with joy instead of pride. It was like he was mocking Izuku. Mocking him as in thanks for erasing my quirk because I now understand your struggle and pain. But he didn't. Izuku then saw Bakugo was alone which he grabbed his neck to say. One word and you will be paralyzed from the neck down. Bakugo in anger, what do you want? Deku. Izuku said, I just want a friendly chat. Kaken, Bakugo in shock that Izuku is calling him by his childhood nickname, agreed to the chat. They sat at the mall bench which Izuku smiled. What a beautiful day we have here. Don't you agree? Bakugo glared, just tell me why you are here. Izuku chuckled, Kaken, always to the point. I noticed that you are happier and friendly to people. Unlike before, Bakugo chuckled, I would like to apologize for what I did to you. Izuku in anger, what? Bakugo in sadness, I looked down on everyone my whole life because I had a powerful quirk, I was looking down on you the worse. You had no quirk, so I thought of you as nothing more than a waste of life. But I learned after you erased my quirk that you had to work incredibly hard to be as strong as you are now. Izuku's vein popped on his head. He didn't want a goddamn apology from scum like him. Bakugo smiled. That quirk corrupted me and made me a monster. I'm sorry for everything I have done to you. Izuku asked, if I gave you back your quirk, what would be your reaction? Bakugo chuckled. I don't want my quirk back. I would never accept it, and I enjoy my new life. Izuku chuckled. I guess you have no choice. Bakugo caught off guard by statement asked, what? Izuku stabbed Bakugo with a syringe and threw Bakugo to the ground. Bakugo got up to ask, what did you do? Izuku smiled, I gave you back your quirk. You are no longer quirkless, Kaken. Bakugo made sparks in his hands and he was terrified which he said, no, 
I don't want this. Izuku laughed. Too bad. I never thought I would have to give it back to you. But seeing you like this puts a smile on my face. Izuku then got up to walk away from Bakugo which he was as horror by his return quirk that he now rejects. Izuku smirked. I can't believe I had to use that on him. I thought he never accept being quirkless or rejecting his quirk. But now I get to see him suffer again. Izuku called his scientists to tell them the new drug that cancels out the quirk erasing drug was successful. He walked around which he saw a woman falling from a building which Izuku ran to catch her. Izuku caught the woman to ask, You okay, miss? He then noticed he caught Mirko the rabbit hero, which she looked up to ask, Anarchist. Izuku said, Apologies for disturbing you. Izuku put her down then the villain who pushed her came due to say, Oh, you survived Mirko. Well, he looked at Izuku to ask, Anarchist? Izuku looked at him, Salamander? The villain in fear? No. Izuku smirked, You stole one of my crates Salamander and someone has to pay. And it isn't me. Salamander ran like hell which Izuku asked, Mirko, take a step back. Mirko did what he asked which threw a ball to hit Salamander to the back of the head. The ball then turned into an electrified net covering him which Izuku said, that is a fun device. Mirko giggled, you and your tricks, you know if you didn't hold me prisoner that one time and attacked me, I would be going on a date with you. Izuku smirked, if I give you Salamander and maybe three of these net balls, will you? Mirko looked at him, are you bribing me for a date? Izuku said, I see this as a trade with a win-win outcome. Mirko thought for a little bit then smiled. I think this will be something I can agree to. Izuku smiled and gave her a card. Three days at the location on the card. Remember don't set up any traps because I will know if there will be traps. Izuku gave her the three balls and left her to take salamander. Izuku smiled his way around town thinking, Akego is suffering again, I got a date with Mirko, and now it's times to meet my construction company that is building my buildings. Izuku went inside small building near his base which is the building of the man who is head of the construction company building his building. He gotten to see the tall man with brown with a short brown hair girl which Izuku said, Hello Mr. Yuraraka, how are you doing today? The girl got on her feet to ask, What are you doing here, anarchist? The man scratched his head to say, Don't worry Achako, this is the guy I have the construction contract with. Achako looked at him, What? Izuku chuckled, Is that your daughter I assume? Mr. Yuraraka smiled, Yes she is, my pride and joy. Izuku smiled, I bet, especially since she is becoming a great hero. Achako asked, Is this the man who gave you the contract that is helping you and the company get out of debt? Mr. Yuraraka smiled, Yep, at first me and your mom hesitated about taking the deal. The deal was too good to be true but after some time we accepted it. Izuku smiled, I needed a small construction company to build my buildings, which his company fits the bill. The company does good work which I was coming to check on the progress on the latest building. Mr. Yuraraka said, It is almost done, but can I ask what this building is for? Izuku smiled, marketing managers. Izuku wasn't going to tell someone that this new building that they were making is for the Brotherhood to show up and do meeting. They would look at him like he was crazy. But the press has seen his hero version from the multiverse and reported it which Izuku has proven the press is right. But the government keeps saying he doesn't have technology for it which in turn Izuku on live TV on the news showing off the technology bringing Miss Anarchy from her dimension just piss off the government that he has the tech. Izuku smiled, have a nice day. He walked out which then Achako followed him to say, I'm sorry for the misunderstanding. Izuku smirked, you don't need to, you didn't know. You are a hero in training and it's your job to prepare to fight villains like me. Achako smiled, I would like to thank you for helping my parents, you're not a bad guy like some people think. Izuku chuckled, if you want, you can go on a date with me. Achako blushed, w what? Izuku smiled, sorry, that was a strange thing to ask. Achako blushed, I don't disagree with the idea. Izuku gave her a card to say, meet me here in six days, sounds good. Achako took the card and ran off which he sighed, she looks like fun. Izuku went back to his office to put the dates on his phone and he looked at computer to see the sales and production of the quirk erasing drugs, weed, guns, and other stuff. He relaxed until he saw a flash of light in his office. A teen girl in a Yakuza outfit with white hair and a horn on her forehead appeared. Izuku asked, Iri. Iri looked him, Uncle Izuku, I played with you time travel device and I broke it, I'm very sorry. Izuku looked at the device and smiled. Don't worry, I will get some guys to fix it. Iri asked, You're not mad. Izuku chuckled, Why would I be mad at you? Iri sighed, I guess you're right, but how long will it take to fix it? Izuku said, Probably a few hours, but as for the meantime, let's start some trouble. Iri smiled and they gave the device to the grunts to get to work, which Izuku and Iri got in the Tesla to drive off. Iri smiled, Uncle Izuku, I need to ask you something that I can't ask you in the future. Izuku asked, Am I dead in the future? Iri looked at him, No, you are not dead, but it's kind of embarrassing to ask you in the future. Izuku relaxed, Thank God, I'm not dead. So, what do you want to ask me? Iri asked, I've been going out with this boy for a while. 
but I don't know if we should be in serious relationship. I want to have one but what if he doesn't want one? Izuku looked at her. If he doesn't want one then dump him and move on. But any guy would be retarded for doing something like that. Just ask him and I'm real sure he will accept it. Iri smiled. Thanks Uncle Izuku. Izuku smiled. I'm heading to meet the Yayorazas to make a business deal. Iri said. The famous hero family that are one of the richest families in Japan. Izuku smirked. You got that right. They may be heroes. But they are business people first because they have a few things I need. And I can give them a few things in exchange. Iri smiled. This will be fun. And I know you are going to get that deal. Izuku asked. How many wives do I have in the future? Iri said. 25. Izuku said. I need to go even further beyond. I need to go plus ultra. No. Even further. They continued driving around which traffic stopped which Izuku sighed. What is going on? Iri said. This is where you asked Aunt Ruko out on a date. Izuku looked at her. Ruko? Who is? The dragon hero. I must have balls of steel at this point. Well I must give it a try. Izuku made the car fly over to see Ruko fighting multiple gigantification users which she was in trouble which he landed in the fight. He came out the car with Iri which he shouted. Hey F faces, I'm going to be late because of your gang rape. One of the villains laughed. What are you going to do about it? Another one said. That's the anarchist guys, we shouldn't F with him. Another came over to step on Izuku's car which Izuku shot a quirk erasing bullet in his foot. The villain shrunk to normal size which Izuku glared at them. Don't you dare step on my car. The villains attacked the duo which Izuku tased the family jewels of the attackers and Iri went up to rewind them to normal size then kicked their family jewels. When they defeated them Izuku said, you fight just like me. I'm so proud. Iri smiled. I learned from the best. Izuku said, I'm the best godfather in existence. Izuku then checked on Ruko which she was in pain which he said, hold still. He injected the stim pack in her to instantly heal her. She looked at him which she asked, why? Izuku smiled. I can't leave a beautiful woman like you in pain. Ruko blushed. Thank you. Izuku pulled out a card to say, meet me at the location on the card in 10 days. Ruko looked at the card to ask, is this a date? Izuku smirked, you bet. Izuku and Iri jumped back in the car which Iri asked, why do you give out cards? Izuku said, original I was nervous to ask a girl out by words, so I use cards to do it for me. My writing is better than my words and the card also helps them remember the location and time. Iri was in awe for now understanding his reason for him giving cards, which she found in funny yet cute in a way. They then drove off to finish the day which Izuku plans on expanding his harem and hopefully get back to time travel or dimensional adventures. Izuku came in the weed shop to shout, Attention all customers, in celebration of this wonderful holiday. Everything is 69% off. Everyone cheered which then Izuku grabbed Steven, Leo, and Atsuhiro to bring them to meet a special guest with the other guys. Izuku brought everyone to say, So in celebration of this glorious day. I brought friends to enjoy the day with. Two people came out the first one appeared which Daba in shock. It can't be. Snoop Dogg said. But it can be. The second person appeared which Jin said. Oh. My. God. Martha Stewart smiled. Hello everyone. Everyone lost their shit that Izuku brought Snoop Dogg and Martha Stewart to celebrate 420th with them. Which Izuku said. Let's get cooking. They went to the kitchen in the base which everyone was learning how to make the best weak brownies in the world. Which Izuku revealed God's lettuce they got to work to make blondies for them. Because the weed is golden color then it was only fitting to make them into blondies, which the guys were in excitement by how good they were going to be. When they were done, Martha began with a fest to feed them when they get the munchies which everyone helped out. Tamura came in to see the guys with Snoop and Martha cooking which he asked, What are you doing? Izuku said, We are making food for ourselves when we get the munchies from the blondies. Tamura sat on the couch while they made a fried chicken, mac and cheese, a cake made with Nutella, mozzarella sticks, grilled cheese sandwiches with bacon, and pizza rolls. Everyone looked at it which they grabbed the blondies to eat them, which they instantly got high. The blondies were so good it was a good thing they put it on a low dose, because it would freak them out if they put too much in it. They had movies to watch while they got back to relax and get lost. The first movie was Reefer Madness which was an anti-weed propaganda movie. They watched 15 minutes into which Dabai Giggle rolled into harmless cigarettes. Jin smiled. Harmless and cigarettes next to each other. I can't believe Americans at the time were that stupid. Snoop smirked. White men in America were pretty stupid at the time. Izuku closed his eyes. If you closed your eyes, you can see an entire galaxy. Shoto came in which he saw the blondies and took one to join everyone, which everyone would watch movies like the B-movie, Ted, and a few others. Shoto muttered on about secret love children which Dabai would calm him down. Snoop asked, what's first thing you think about in the morning? Martha said, what am I going to make today? Izuku said, can I get up? Dabai chuckled, where am I? Atsuhiro said, am I still in a dream? Shoto smiled, same. Tamura smiled, which game am I going to play? Leo said, I need some weed. Snoop asked, hot or cold? 
Everyone said, hot. Snoop chuckled, tacos or burgers? Izuku said, burgers. Shoto, Achurio, Jin, and Tamura smiled, same. The rest said, tacos. Snoop laughed, as her tits. Izuku said, both. Jin said, ass. Martha said, ass. Dabai said, ass. Everyone else said, tits. Snoop asked, worst job you ever had? Izuku said, easy, slave valuer. Dabai said, endeavor's son. Shoto said, same as Taoya. Jin said, bus boy. Higuchi said, trash man. Atsuhiro said, none I can think of. Steven said, none yet. Leo said, truck driver in the war. Everyone nodded at their answers which Snoop said. This is some real deep questions, we should continue. Izuku chuckled, I'm going to get me some of that cake. Izuku went over to the food then asked, what am I doing here? Dabai said, you went to get some pizza. Izuku said, thanks Jin. Snoop asked, if you can remake any movie, what movie would you remake? Izuku said, The Suicide Squad, but keep Will Smith as Deadshot. Dabai said, Star Wars 7 through 9 should be remade. Everyone stopped to think that they were right which Jin said, I would remake I Am Legend. Everyone leaned back by the bold statement which Snoop continued, I always wake up blank. Izuku said, Hungry. Dabai said, Thristy. Martha said, Full of energy. Jin said, Tired. Shoto said, Cold. The Gachi said, Stretching. Hatsuhiro said, not wanting to wake up. Leo said, where's my joint? Steven said, is the government after me? Snoop asked, my favorite position is blank. Izuku said, depends on the girl. Dabai and Steven said, doggy. Shoto and Leo said, missionary. Jin, Atsuhiro, Iguchi, and Tamura said, cowgirl. Izuku looked at Tamura like holy shit. Tamura knows what we are talking about kind of look. Martha said, you ain't getting anything out of me. They all laughed for a while. Until Snoop brought the attention to the game. If life is unfair to everyone then is it fair? Dabai smiled. No, because that is like saying a person is loyal to everyone then who are they really loyal to? Izuku said, my mind is blown. Everyone's mind was blown from Dabai's statement, which Snoop asked, if God sneezes, then who will bless him? Everyone stared at different directions trying to think of an answer which no one could figure it out. Izuku chuckled, if you think about it the Olympics, it's the only time where you hear great execution by North Korea and it's okay. The Gucci said, holy shit, that's a really deep thought. Dabai said, if you think about it, snakes are just tails with faces. Everyone laughed their asses off by the comment which Jin said. Neil Armstrong was the first person on the moon and Neil is spelled backward as alien. Everyone giggled by it then Shoto asked, guys, if a turtle loses its shell is it naked or homeless? Tamura said, it would actually be both. Tamura then said, okay guys hear me out, it's fed up that we go to a cow to get some milk when we can make our own. Like you don't see a dog to a goat to get some milk, which is kind of fed up. Izuku said, I think you should take smaller doses for your own safety. Everyone relaxed which Izuku got a call which he picked up. Hello. And Ko on the other end, hey Izuku, what are you doing? Izuku chuckled, just working and relaxing, why? And Ko asked, well are you supposed to be somewhere in two hours? Izuku looked at his calendar to say, oh yeah, just give me a moment. Izuku hung up then looked at his legs which Dabai asked, are you going to get up? Izuku said, I don't know how to get up. Atsuhiro looked at him, what? Izuku said, you heard me, I don't know how to get up. Shoto and Dabai helped him to get up which Izuku said, I'm going to forget how to do that again. Izuku saw he warp portal he scheduled for which he walked in to see Melissa which they came for an ultrasound with her. It's been about almost 5 months which Izuku has really good insurance and has wedding plans for each girl, so he was beyond prepared. He is high as the sky, but he still reads documents and can be serious in situations, no one could drug him to do what he didn't want. He had special training on how to operate like a normal person while high or drunk as for date rape drugs. One could say you need a higher dose to get him. Which he sat with her which the doctor was explaining everything. And they got to see the babies. Izuku cried a bit from seeing twins which Melissa smiled. Are you okay? Izuku said, I'm going to have twins soon and they are going to have the best parents in existence. Izuku all his life had promised to become the father that he never had when his father left. He was excited to become that father to his children. Izuku may be stoned as hell but he was going to be the best dad ever and he was going to have a picture of the ultrasound on his desk. He was going to have display it on his desk with pride and he knew the names of the twins because they time traveled to save his as that one time. Emily and George Midoriya were their names if Izuku remembers correctly. He was excited to see them. He came back to the party with a picture which he said, I'm going to have twins. Everyone at the party cheered which Izuku took a piece off the Nutella cake and they continued with their stoner thoughts. Steven asked, the system is rigged, we need to tear it down and bring anarchy. Izuku chuckled, I'm currently working on that, which it will soon happen. It will just take a little longer. Everyone continued enjoying the party which they got autographs from Snoop and Martha which when they left. Izuku said, I recorded the recipe on how she made those bomb as blondies. Dabai asked, what are you going to do tomorrow on Easter Sunday? 
Izuku smiled. Take Eri to the park for an Easter egg hunt and have a date with the rabbit hero herself. The guys looked at him. What? Izuku smirked. You heard me. I'm going to bang my Easter bunny on Easter. Igachi said. You have balls of steel at this point. What's next? The dragon hero. Everyone laughed which Izuku chuckled. Actually? Jin said. No. Izuku smiled. I got a date with her as well six days after Mirko. Jin bowed. You are a god. Igachi bowed next to Jin. A man who knows no boundaries and does it all without a quirk. You deserve to be called a god. Izuku said. Your god commands you to stop bowing to me because it's just weird as hell. They laughed a little bit which Tamura was super stoned and trying to find the door. The guys watched and giggled as he was trying to find the door. Tamura looked under the couch, behind the TV, feeling the walls, and running around. Izuku asked, Tamura, do you need some help? Tamura turned around. How long were you guys here? Dabai lied, about 30 seconds ago. Tamura believed in the lie and they helped him back to his room at the bar which Izuku and the guys went home to end their celebration of the best day of the year. Izuku got on his usual green dress shirt with black leather jacket and dress pants. He then put on the black oxfords to show off a little claws. He then pulled up to Gettery to take her to the park for the Easter egg hunt. Izuku already had an Easter egg hunt for her as well that involves puzzles to lead them to different parts of the city. Izuku sat at the park bench to watch Eri, gone, and Kota run around to find some eggs which Izuku smiled at the sight. Izuku leaned back but kept an eye out for heroes who think they can catch him and make sure Eri and Gone are alright. Izuku gave every one of his grunts have the day off which he does at every holiday. New Year's, Easter, Valentine's, Thanksgiving, Halloween, and Christmas. While everyone in Japan was working holidays and overtime, Izuku's grunts get insurance, great pay, holidays, and other stuff which is just a way for Izuku to flex every business he competed with. Izuku then sensed someone sitting next to him. He looked to see an older teen with brown hair and eyes. Izuku asked, the crawler. The crawler nodded, please don't call me that in public. Izuku shrugged, okay Koichi, why are you here? Koichi asked, how do you know my name? Izuku chuckled, like I said long ago, I have an entire building full of information on heroes, villains, and vigilantes. The information isn't just about quirks but about names, addresses, and everything. Except the names and addresses cost a lot more. Koichi was still in shock but asked, I want to know your end goal, what is your end goal? Izuku said, besides true equality. Fun, I want to have fun until the day I die. Koichi looked at him. Why don't you join us on a few fights? Izuku smirked. I usually am fine on my own and mostly fight solo. But I will think about. Koichi revealed a picture. Do you know who could do this? Izuku looked at the picture, the scarred man. Koichi asked, who is the scarred man? Izuku smiled. That will cost some money, you know. Koichi asked, how much? Izuku said, 11,000 yen for Quirk and 112,000 yen for my full knowledge on him. Koichi asked, what? Izuku said, you heard me. Koichi said, where are you getting these prices from? Izuku chuckled. I can price whatever I want because I have the best analysis and I have bought everyone who does analysis as well. I have a monopoly on this business, so I charge what I feel like. Koichi asked. Can I find you tomorrow with the cash for this? Izuku gave him a card with the location. I will be there at the time written on the card. Don't be late. Koikai nodded and left which Iri and Gon came up to Izuku which Izuku asked. Did you two have fun? They nodded which he then took them on an Easter egg hunt around the city, which took them a few hours to find all the eggs. Which after he was done with his fun with them, he changed to a grey tuxedo for his date. He arrived at the location two hour early to check for traps and whatnot. He knew Rumi didn't like working in teams but it doesn't hurt to check. He checked in places to see no traps were placed and he went back to pretend he got arrived. He saw her coming which he thought to himself, I want those legs to sandwich me, more specifically I mean my face. He smiled, hello Rumi. She looked at him, how do you know my name? Izuku smirked, I'm the best quirk analysis in the underworld and I have non-stalker ways of getting information. She smirked, that's just creepy. Izuku smiled, straightforward, I like that in a woman. They went inside and after ordering some food, she asked, why are you interested in me? Izuku chuckled, strong independent woman, speaks from her mind, beautiful, incredible strength, and like me always kick ass. Rumi blushed from the comment which Izuku said, you are currently number 5 dot 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 well before All Might retires which will make you number 4. You have put a lot of hard work which truly impresses me. Rumi asked, do you actually like me? Izuku looked at her, yes. Rumi smirked, you speak from your mind as well. Izuku chuckled, I like to give my honest opinion on things and do the least amount of damage as possible. Rumi asked, minimum amount of damage. Izuku said, I mean I want to pay the least amount of money for property damage. It's pain, I maybe be a villain, but I feel bad for causing damage sometimes. I have standards and I also like to flex on heroes that I pay for my damage and most don't. Rumi giggled. That's funny if you think about it. You have morals and you definitely act on it to make us look bad. That explains a lot. 
Rumi respected very few people but Izuku was the only villain she respected because he was strong. He beat up All Might single-handedly. And he is a nice guy. Even when she was captured by him, he gave her an incredibly nice room to live in. She was given amazing food, perfect temperature, a comfy bed, and even a TV. A lot of people would call him a coward because he would mostly run away from the fight at the beginning. But Rumi knew that it is his true fighting style. He looks for advantages and backing him to a wall will make the odds turn to his favor. Rumi smirked. With your training and mind imagine the hero that you could have been. Izuku chuckled. I could have been a hero that probably could defeat Endeavor and take number two from him. Rumi asked, whatever happened to Endeavor? Izuku shrugged. I heard he was kidnapped by a guy dressed as a reporter. Izuku was that reporter to give to Dabai for his birthday present to give in to dad to turn into a Namu for Dabai. Was he going to reveal that? Of course not. But some people assumed that he was involved in the action because he did kidnap his father to torture and turn him into a Namu. But he wasn't going to flat out lie. So he just said the truth which is that he was kidnapped by a guy dressed as a reporter. Which is true because he was dressed as a reporter to kidnap him, he said. But he's gone and that's all people could say. Rumi nodded. I bet his family has it rough. Izuku said, who knows? Maybe the rumors about his family abuse were true and they are having a blast. Izuku knows how the family and dealing with the situation Dabai and Shoto know about Endeavor being a Nama which Dabai was working on telling Natsuo then Fayumi then their mother. Izuku asked, so, where should we go after this? They walked around to find a thug coming up to say, Hand me your money. Rumi and Izuku laughed their asses off. Izuku laughed. Is he robbing us? Like a pro hero in me. The anarchist. Rumi laughed. How stupid can one person be? This is going in the books as the dumbest criminal in existences. The thug was about to pull the trigger because he was pissed. But Izuku threw a baseball in the air. The thug watched the ball while Rumi gave him a kick to the gut. Which Izuku looked at her legs. Rumi smirked. You like my legs? Izuku said. I want those sexy legs to sandwich my face. Rumi smirked. You do know how powerful these legs are, right? Izuku smiled. Worth it. Rumi couldn't tell if he was joking or he was being serious about this. Which they continued to see the Easter parade. They watched it and Izuku said. They are missing something. Rumi asked. What are they missing? Izuku smirked. Isn't it obvious? They are missing you. Like the rabbit hero on the Easter parade. I mean I will give this parade a 4 out of 10 because you aren't on a float. Rumi laughed a bit from the comment which Izuku thought to himself, I'm getting closer. I can't wait. They went to her place which Izuku checked his pockets. Perfect. I got the condom. The next day, Rumi woke up to get ready for the day. She had a great day off which she was amazed by Izuku in bed. But she headed to the kitchen to get a quick bite to eat before she headed out. She came and think that Izuku left but he was in the kitchen cooking some food for her. Izuku turned around still shirtless, good morning, I got you breakfast before you head off. Rumi looked at it, thanks, you definitely are unlike most men. Izuku chuckled, I am the definition of unlike most men. Well that's what I've been told. Rumi giggled a bit which after they ate. Izuku then got on his phone to text someone to warp him out, but he asked, you want to go out again sometime? Rumi smiled, that would be nice. Izuku put another card before heading in the warp gate. He went through to see Dabai, Jin. Atsuhiro, and Aguchi to say, I banged the rabbit hero and I got my face sandwiched by those sexy legs. The guys high-fived him which Dabai asked, are you not afraid by STDs? Izuku said, stim packs can fix that, Iri could rewind me if necessary, and I have really good doctors on speed dial. Jin asked, how are those legs? Izuku said, I almost died, but I would have died a happy death. Those are legs worth dying for. Aguchi and Dabai saw Sensei behind Izuku which he continued, I had her riding on my D and man was it a fun ride. Sensei was disturbed yet intrigued by what Izuku was talking about. Atsuhiro and Jin seeing that Izuku doesn't notice Sensei decided to keep it going until Sensei say something or Izuku to notice his presence. Jin smirked. What did the tail of the rabbit hero feel it? Izuku said. It was like a little fluff pillow or handle that you can use to turn her on more. Sensei was now very disturbed which Atsuhiro asked. How about the ears? Izuku said. They were soft and sensitive to her, which I got to stroke them. Dabai smirked because he wanted in on the fun. You used protection, right? Sensei quickly said, I hope the F you did. Izuku stiffened, yes, I did. Sensei said, we can talk about this later. Sensei walked away and Izuku said, you a shoals. The guys fell to the ground laughing their asses off which Izuku chuckled. Hands down though, best Easter in history. Izuku was just sitting in his office just doing his taxes, you bet your asses. He is going to do his taxes. That's how they got Capone. So he was going to avoid that by doing his taxes. Izuku sighed. Being a villain in the early days was so much fun. Dabai said, you're only 16 years old. Izuku said, look at this shit. I got taxes to pay while you got nothing to pay. They are going to get you for tax fraud. Dabai chuckled and left which Izuku looked at Izubuk to see Deku wants to fight another villain Izuku. 
Izuku then warped Deku and the other Izukas to the new building he made for meetings. Izuku said, so, we are going to fight. Darkseid, Deadshot said, heard of him. He is something he calls a new god. He has immortally, super strong, and produces omega beams. Stark said, how are we supposed to beat that? He is immortal. Izuku snapped his fingers and six Izukas appeared in the room. Izuku said, meet Deadpool, Izuku Constantine, grown-up son of All Might, Super Saiyan Deku, Magneto, and Scarecrow. They waved which son of All Might said, call me Deku. Deku said, I'm Deku. Izuku said, you will be Green Might. Green Might said, I will accept it then. Super Saiyan asked, if Deku is taken then call me Goku. Stark rolled his eyes, okay Goku. Doctor Strange and Constantine talked about magic and whatnot which Scarecrow looked at Darkseid's file to say, I can't wait to see your fears. Hex asked, what does he do? Izuku said, in his universe, he is villain with a quirk to produce a fear gas to put people in a state of fear or put them in nightmare-induced comas. Deadpool said, why don't we just get him to put DC Thanos in one of these comas and then mission done and over with. Magneto said, I'm sure Darkseid wouldn't allow us to get close to him to knock him out. Deku looked at the file, he is from another planet. Why is he coming to Earth? Izuku said, From the information from the universe he is looking to unravel the anti-life equation, which he has to fight the K.R. Pytonane warrior protecting Earth. Punisher asked, Who is this warrior? Izuku looked at information to say, Read page 48. Everyone turns to the page which some of the Izuku side which Deku said, Kaken. Izuku said, I never thought I had to actually fight alongside Bakego. Izuku got a call and he said, Hello. The voice said, The new suit is ready. Izuku said, perfect, thanks Mark. Izuku hung up the phone which Stark asked, what new suit? Izuku chuckled, I was screwing around Izubuk the other day and saw Batman had this armor he called Hellbat Armor. I saw it in multiple ways it could be improved, and I now have a more improved and less bat-looking version of the Hellbat Armor. I call it, Demon Armor. Deadpool said, really? Izuku asked, do you have a better name that isn't copyrighted? Stark said, just call it Hell Armor. Izuku said, fine, I'll call it Hell Armor. Izuku put on the armor which he said, I guess this will help me make up for my lack of super strength, speed, and ability to fly. Wick said, I don't need special armor for this. They got packed up and ready to go fight Darkseid, which the new dimensional warper now can warp a lot of people, which the guys got to together to warp to this new dimension to chase off Darkseid from Earth and hopefully convince him to stop his question of controlling everything. Darkseid Izuku's dimension. The guys got warped into an abandoned warehouse which Deadpool said, out of all the abandoned spots, you chose this one. Strange said, I see no problem with this. Green Might said, I'm glad I came along with this, we are fighting for what's right. Anarchist nodded, hum, Punisher you wanted a new tattoo. Like this. The Anarchist showed a picture of the tattoo Punisher was describing which he said, we got time, so I would like it. Anarchist being his work which Deadpool and Goku Izuku were watching to admire the artwork in progress. Green Might asked Deku, why do I have a feeling he hates me? Deku said, he hates All Might in his universe for reason, you do act a lot like him. He doesn't hate you, he's more annoyed by you. Green Might said, okay, if I don't act like my dad, then he can stand me. Deku said, that sounds about right. Anarchist asked, Magneto, you sure you don't want a tattoo? Magneto revealed his arm with his numbers which Anarchist said, I'm taking that as a no. They continued a bit which they did their research more on the world they are in. Hex said, Darkseid's underlings are annoying which is the reason why we came in large numbers. Strange said, exactly, there are a lot of them. They then see portals all around the city which they decided to get involved in the situation. They had to help the Justice League to send Darkseid back to his land and destroy his transportation to Earth. They went to the battlefield where the Justice League was at which they were struggling. Bakugo, going by Superman, was fighting Darkseid in a one-on-one -on -one fight which Darkseid was winning. Ada, going by Flash, was fighting off underlings with Momo, going by Wonder Woman. Takoyami, who went by Batman, was with Mei, Kirishima, and Denki trying to figure out how to use the mother box while fight the many underlings. Darkseid grabbed Bakugo's punch to throw him on round then stepped on him to say, It's over Superman, I win. Then shoots were heard as many underlings came down. Then multiple pieces of metal came out of the sky killing many underlings and impaling Darkseid. Darkseid demanded, Who did that? Deku came to punch Darkseid's face to say, that would be us. Deadpool said, we are here to save you from edgy Thanos. Darkseid in anger, don't you dare compare me to that purple beach. Stark flew around defeating many airborne underlings then land next to Mei to ask, you need help with that. Green Might and Goku landed next to Bakugo to ask, can we join this fight? Bakugo smirked, alright, you look strong. Anarchist landed next to Takoyami to help him fight off multiple underlings which Takoyami looked at his armor to say, that armor looks familiar. Anarchist said, no, it doesn't. They processed to kick a switch the team of Bakugo, 
Deku, Goku, and Green Might were destroying Darkseid which Stark and Mei figured out the mother box which they were getting power for it. Denki came over to get them the power for it. Deadpool was having a blast slaughtering the underlings. Scarecrow then threw some of his gas at Darkseid which he breathed it in, and he ran away in fear to the portal. They closed the portal which Bakugo asked, Who are you guys? Firens chuckled, Fratrum Usti. The guys left which Deadpool said. That went too easy. Then the Izubuk started going off which they looked at it which it revealed Joker Izuku. The anarchist shouted, How? He died. The original members remembered how he died, but now he was alive and they needed answers on how he is alive. They quickly got warped to that dimension to find an older Bakugo and other heroes. The heroes were about to attack but Bakugo said, Hold your fire. These are not Joker, they are Izukas from different dimensions. Deku said, Hello Kakin. Bakugo smiled, Hello Deku, it's been a while, and I see you brought more friends. The anarchist said, Well we just came back from a thing. We came to defeat Joker once again and figure out how he is alive. Bakugo said, We are trying to figure out the same thing. Dr. Iriyazumi would be glad to see you all again. The anarchist said, I'm going to look at places that he has been to try to find a pattern and attack. Venom, John Wick, Hex, Magneto, Deadshot, and Scarecow went with the anarchist in agreement, which they left to go to his locations. The rest went to Siri which she has grown a lot, which she was happy to see Deku and the others. Deku saw that she still has the stitching on her forehead which she asked, where is the rest of the members that fought Joker? Stark said, they are checking location where the Joker attacked. Iri smiled, maybe they might find something. They guys looked around to see how Iri grew up got married and has children. Deku, Stark, Punisher, and Firens were proud of this universe as Iri grew up with a happy life. Bakugo said, We will find Joker and bring him to justice. Iri smiled, Good, but before you go, can I show everyone something? Everyone nodded which they went to a room which the door closed, which Iri put a mask on and released knockout gas to put everyone to sleep. She started laughing, Good. Now for the others. The Anarchist, John Wick, Hex, Deadshot, Venom, Scarecrow, and Magneto. They looked at the latest location of the Joker's attack which Anarchist said, massacred about a few hundred people. Monster, Magneto said, this reminds me too much of my kidnapping. Hex asked, kidnapping. Magneto said, in my world, me and my mom were kidnapped which they forced me to activate my quirk or my mom dies. I couldn't activate it until they killed her. When I activated it, metal started surrounded him. I started killing them until they knocked me out. They then put these numbers on me. I planned months to escape. Which when I killed them all it turned out I wasn't in Japan. I was at Auschwitz. Which I began my life as a villain that the world fears. John Wick said, I know what it means to lose something important as well. Venom said, we also know that feeling as well. The anarchists saw some men in clown masks approaching which they jumped in to beat the crap out of them. They did amazing until one of the men released a gas to knock them out except Scarecrow. Scarecrow said, you fools, I'm immune to every gas in existence. One of the men said, jokes on you. We have gas masks to protect us from your gases. Then a Namu with a heavy-duty gas mask came to fight Scarecrow, which Scarecrow slashed the Namu but it kept healing. Then the Namu grabbed him to knock him out. Unknown location. Everyone woke up to see they had been restrained in different ways to prevent them from breaking free. The anarchist saw Deku to ask, How did you get captured? Deku said, We were following Uri until we smelled some gas and the next thing you know we ended up here. The anarchist said, We were looking for clues until Joker's men and Nomis found us and knocked us out. Doctor Strange said, We are going to meet the Joker again for some of us. Stark said, Here we go again. Iri appeared to ask, Where am I? Why are you all restrained? The anarchist was relieved. Oh thank God, Iri can you help us out? Iri said, Okay. Then the TV in the room turned on to show video footage of Iri when she was younger killing Joker. Iri said, Why is this playing? I don't want to. 2. Remember. Every night I remember him killing me. Reviving me. And the pain. She started laughing and laughing. Her body started morphing which the Izuku were scared and in shock. Harry then morphed into the Joker which he said, Well hello again. Deadpool and the anarchist said, Holy shit. The rest were in shock. Deadpool asked, Are you still a girl or did you also grow a penis during your transformation? Joker frowned. I don't remember this fellow from last time. Back Hugo asked, Iri, you're the Joker. Joker said, That brat doesn't even know I'm using her as a timeshare. Joker walked to a device then pointed at a black spot on the back of his neck. In this mind is the mind of a genius years beyond in the future. In the week of having Yuri, I used her as a test subject of my greatest experiment. Using genetics technology I encoded my DNA into this chip to set it into her brain. Everyone was shocked by the technology which Stark said, you just made immortality. The anarchist said, when I get out of these restraints and after I kick Yuri out of Yuri, I'm going to figure out how that chip works. Joker said, At first I had to limit my time in Uri's body. She isn't aware of anything I do. If her family misses her, I simply call them to say, Sorry honey, I'm working late. 
They were creeped out by how Joker used Eri's voice. But Joker continued, This device right here is what a villain girl version of me gave to me called an Izubuk. Deku asked, Miss Anarchy. Joker snapped his fingers. That was the name. The anarchist said, Damn it. Joker said, With my mind and Eri's smarter mind. We hacked into it to take control of the TVs in your worlds to broadcast this thing live. Joker turned on the TV to see they are being broadcast live on TVs in Japan in their dimension. Stark said, with kind of intelligences, you could have cured cancer or made really great technology. Joker smiled, we are going to play a game. He revealed a wheel that had pictures of every Izuku that he restrained. He said, we are going to play memory or truth or dare. Whoever this wheel lands on they will choose to reveal their deepest darkest memory, their deepest darkest secret, or do a dare of my choosing. Deadpool said, this sounds like fun. Breen might said, well this isn't good. Goku said, crap. Scarecrow, Punisher, Anarchist, Deku, Stark, Firens, Wick, Hex, Deadshot, Venom, Constantine, and Magneto were not happy about this. Joker spanned the wheel for it to land on the Anarchist which Joker asked, Memory, Truth, or Dare? Joker asked, Memory, Truth, or Dare? The Anarchist smirked, Dare. Joker giggled, Reveal your darkest memory and truth. The Anarchist said, Fuck me. The Joker said, on your heads are helmets that take your memory and puts them on the TV for everyone to see, which makes it easier for people to see what you are talking about. Deadpool said, Jesus Christ, there goes my browser history. Stark said, I'm going to take some of this technology with me. Joker said, enough, now come on Anarchist reveal it. On the Anarchist screen revealed Izuku going to a basement under his building which he looked at his watch to say, it's almost time. The other Izukas were wondering what he was thinking about. On the screen of the anarchist's world, people were on their feet. The anarchist turned on the TV and put on a New England's Patriots jersey and watch an American football game with the Patriots versus the New York Jets. The anarchist cheered for the Patriots' victory and then the screen turned black. The anarchist said, It's true. I'm a New England Patriots fan. Deadpool shouted, You son of a beach. Stark shouted, No. I thought we were friends until I saw that. This really questions our friendship here. The anarchist said, Sorry, I can't hear you all over the number of Super Bowl trophies we have. Meanwhile in the anarchist's world, people were asking themselves about that memory. Melissa said, I didn't know he actually watched football. David said, I'm going to watch a game with him when he gets out of that. Jin shouted, That bastard. I thought he was a Raiders fan. All Might at his home said, Only villains support the Patriots. Joker was pissed and electrocuted the anarchist. That wasn't your darkest secret and memory. Well aren't you a fighter? The anarchist said, Sorry but you have to work for it. Joker said, let's try again. The screen turned on again, but it was the anarchist dressing up in a disguise walking up to a house. He knocked on the door which Inji answered the door and how he kidnapped him, then gave him to Dabai to torture him and then turned him to a Namo. The anarchist laughed. I was the one who kidnapped Endeavor and turned him to a Namo. It's under Dabai's control and he goddamn deserved it. Joker giggled as he shot his leg to say, that isn't your darkest secret in memory, I guess I have to show you an example. Joker went over to Magneto to play his memory of his kidnapping, the death of his mother, the other children he was forced to kill and put them in ovens, to the day he killed everyone in the camp from the other kidnapped children to the adult kidnappers and guards. Iizuka saw that he acted out in rage and the other children were forced to fight him to put him down or kill him. Magneto cried, no more, no more. Joker laughed and turned it off which Deadpool said, Joker, you are in a hole. Joker laughed, now anarchist, reveal your deepest darkest secret. The anarchist laughed. Why do you need something like that? Joker said, You are almost like me except you have morals and don't kill. I want you to become me. The anarchist said, I would like to see you try. The screen turned on to show Izuku when he was younger about 13. He was nervous around the women he would do deals with, which Jiren noticed. Jiren said, I think I know how to fix your problem, Izuku. Izuku said, Please show me. Izuku followed Jiren to a strip club which Jiren said, These lovely ladies will help you out. The other Izukus looked at the screen in shock that he went to a strip club at this age to help him gain his confidence. The anarchist said, I still visit on Thursdays. Shout out to Diamond Destiny. I'll be there at my usual time. In the anarchist's world, Jiren who was with the guy said, I have nothing to say but it worked. Inko and Sensei came through a warp gate which Inko say, After this I have some words for you after this. Jiren said, Yes madam. The screen was still playing. He left the building the next day to say, Thanks Jiren, I learned a lot. Jiren in shock, you were in there all night. The anarchist said, yeah, they taught me a lot. Jiren asked, did you pay them? The anarchist said, they said I did so well I didn't have to pay them. Jiren grabbed his shoulders, can you tell me what you did to them? The screen turned off. Joker punched the anarchist's gut which Deadpool shouted, I wanted to know what he did to them. Venom said, we too want to know the answer. Constantine and Hex wanted answers as well to that memory which Joker said, you are one tough nut to break. 
The anarchist said, I told you, you have to work for my deepest, darkest memory. In other worlds everyone was pissed because they wanted the answers to what he did to the strippers. Dabai in the anarchist's world said, I didn't know he went to a strip club, but I want to know what the hell he did to them. The Gucci said, we will ask him when he gets back. Meanwhile with Joker, Joker said, well let's try again until you get it right. The screen turned on to show static and no sound. Joker laughed, he is fighting it. He is finding something that he can reveal. Then it revealed a snowy terrain in Antarctica which Izuku from 7 months before shouted, Jesus fucking Christ. It's too goddamn cold. A man in a German accent, saw weather is always cold. Don't be such a baby. Izuku said, easy for you to say, Hans. I came for the trade deal and technology. They stopped at a hatch in the ground which they entered it to a room to take off their jackets to then take an elevator. They went deep underground to find a highly advanced civilization with technology more advanced than what they had. Everyone in multiple worlds were wondering about this memory. Which Deku asked, who are these people? Stark said, I second what he asked. They got out of the elevator to reveal men in Nazi outfit doing the salute which the anarchists said, it's true. The Nazis escaped and hid underground. Han said, we are also on Z Moon. The anarchist asked, the moon. Then a man riding on a T-Rex came riding to them to say, I see our guest has arrived. Han saluted, yes my Fura. Izuku did the salute to not be rude which Izuku looked at him closer to say, it can't be. Hitler said, it is I. Adolf Hitler, the leader of the Reich. Joker giggled, this is a real memory. And this is a dark secret. The Nazis are a live in his world. And he has a trade deal with them. But that isn't his darkest secret. Deadpool said, you monster, you are working with the Nazis. The anarchist said, they had what I needed. And they aren't going to invade the world. Yet, John Wick said, when we get out of this, we are going to kill those Nazis and kick your ass. The anarchist said, they have dinosaurs. Do you not see Hitler riding a T-Rex? Deadshot said, that makes it better. The anarchist said, they also have a base on the Fing Moon. Goku said, not a problem. Joker tased Goku to say, okay anarchist, you are going off topic. I guess I have to kill someone you care about to get you to get you to do it. The anarchist felt his hand dislocation to free one of his hands. But he needed time to relocate it. Fine I will go to my deepest darkest memory, but don't kill anyone. The screen revealed the anarchist with Mirio trying to get him to stop fighting or he will die. Mirio fell to the ground which the anarchist was trying to save him which Mirio was asking why he was trying to save him. Joker smiled, perfect, you finally going to reveal it. The anarchist relocated his hand to see Joker still looking at the screen which he started uncuff himself. The other Izuku were watching the screens too and didn't notice the anarchist was uncuffing himself. In the anarchist's world, Sensei knew a million died from the raid on Izuku's old base. But he wasn't given an accurate report on his death which Izuku was sad to lose his rival and he wanted to watch this. Mirio got on top Izuku to feed Izuku his hair which Izuku asked, What did you do to me? Mirio chuckled, you have a k The screen went static. Joker turned around to see the anarchist and rage punched his face. The Izuka see the anarchist got free to beat the shit out of the Joker. Joker pulled out his knife to stab anarchist. But anarchist put his hand to get his hand stabbed. The anarchist grabbed the knife to pull it out of his hand to stab Joker's shoulder. Joker laughed, use it, use it, show the world your greatest lie. The anarchist pulled out Joker's taser to say, burn in hell, motherfur. The anarchist tased the chip on Joker's neck. Joker shouted, and oh oh oh. The chip exploded which Joker disappeared and the body turned back to Eri. The anarchist got up to say, I'll get you out. Let me just turn off this device. Deku said, reveal your secret. We deserve to know. The anarchist growled, I will kill you if you ask me again. Scarecrow said, I knew you were afraid. But this fear is strong enough for you to rather reveal the Nazis instead. Magneto said, my deepest, darkest memory was revealed. I want yours in exchange. The anarchist was getting angry from the other Izuka's wanting answers and trying to turn off the machine that was broadcasting this which he yelled, you want the truth? Fine. Mirio gave me one for motherfucking all before he fucking died. The Izuka's were in shock which he continued, you bastards heard me. Before that day I told the truth that I was quirkless, but after that day my truth became a lie. A goddamn lie. Mirio took away my honesty and turned it into a lie. I gave the quirk to someone else but I still have the quirk in me. I refuse to use it because I don't want it. But I don't have the heart to erase it from me. Because if I did, Deku said, you can see him with the quirk. The anarchist said, yes, I can see him and talk to him with the quirk. I will never use the quirk even if my life depended on it. He looked at the screens to shout it. Fuck I did and turn this goddamn thing off. The anarchist looked at Eri to pull out a crowbar to smash the device to pieces, which turned off everything. He went up to uncuff which they got their stuff which Green might said, Anarchist. The anarchist growled, not one word, please. The other Izukas could see he was angry and sad which they are going to give him space which he said, time to go home. I'm going to hide in my world for a while. 
the anarchist's dimension. After he got them back home, he warped himself to his vacation home in Italy which he needed time for all this to die down. He said, I'll wait this out. I hope no one comes looking for me. Izuku looked at his warping device to say, I guess I will be traveling for a while and maybe find something to help me with my situation. Izuku packed up, put on red contact lens to make his eyes red, dyed his hair red. Put makeup to cover his freckles, then pulled out a fake ID to say, My name is Akama Kichai. Izuku then warped out of the house to begin his journey to find himself and for the thing to die down. Meanwhile in Japan three days later, everyone was still in shock by the events that Izuku had a quirk for a while and he didn't tell anyone except Sir Naidai, All Might, Shinso, and Nezu. But they didn't know that he still has it still which All Might thought he was going to erase the rest of what he had but he did. Sensei knew how the quirk worked but after Izuku admitted it on the screen. He didn't know how to react to it. The whole seeing past users thing made him more interested in it. But he knew Izuku was pissed off at the moment. And Ko said, I need to talk to him. Dabai looked at a device he had. He was at his vacation home in Italy until he destroyed the tracker. He is officially off the grid. Melissa said, we need to find him. He is going to be a father. Tamura said, he is my brother. I have questions for him. Overhaul came to ask, where's Izuku? Dabai said, he went off the grid. Why? Overhaul said, Interpol is after him again but this time. They want him to lead them to the Nazis. Sensei said, if we were Izuku, where we go? The Himalayas. Izuku was currently climbing Mount Everest which he sneezed to say, I guess the world is still thinking about me. He continued climbing to reach the top to look down at the world. He gazed at the beauty to then take a picture. He then noticed a saw a spot that had trees and buildings which he got a glider on to say, let's check that out. Izuku was gliding above some ancient buildings that he assumed Buddhist design. He then crash landed in a spring which he got up to look around. Then he heard, hello there. Izuku turned around to see three men in robes which Izuku noticed it was warm at the location. Izuku asked, where am I? One the men said, you are in the lost city of Shangri-La. Izuku looked around, indeed a nice place, are the legends true about immortality here? The men nodded which one of them said, allow us to introduce ourselves, I'm Banko. Another one said, I'm Ann. The last one said, I'm Isin. Izuku said, I have questions about this place. Then a few big white fur creatures came into view which Banko said, don't mind the yetis, they are friends. Izuku was in shock that he is seeing real life yetis which they headed to a table to enjoy some yak tea and Izuku began asking questions. Compressed, Sensei, Overhaul, Dabai, and Tamura. The guys were in Izuku's Italian vacation home to find clues of where he went to. Overhaul noticed the bottles of red hair dye. Dabai found the red contact lens box, and Compress looked through a folder full of fake ID to see one of them is missing. Sensei looked at the folder, which ID was at this spot. Dabai shrugged, who knows, but he has disguised himself to match the ID. Tamura looked around to find a card with the Himalayas on it, which he said, I have a theory on where he went. Tamura picked up the card to show everyone but a bullet shot through the card which they turned to see Interpol agents coming in. Sensei said, holy shit. They turned to the Interpol agent to destroy them with ease. Overhaul picked up the card to repair it, the Himalayas. I guess we know where to go next. The guys nodded which the warp to the Himalayas to find more clues and Izuku. Izuku. Izuku had fun with the yetis and the monks which then they showed the way out. Izuku looked at his burner phone to see he was in China which he said, Now let's make a name for this Akama Kichai. He saw a farmer with some yaks, he asked, Where are you headed? The farmer didn't understand him which Izuku tried again in Chinese which the farmer responded with zigis. Izuku looked on his map to then head with him on his adventure. After a few days, they reached the city he found an airport outside the city which he paid a guy to fly him to Beijing. When he landed in Beijing, he looked around to see at the air as terrible as the people say it was. He looked to find a hotel to spend the night at which he used his private bank account from a bank account he doesn't reveal because it for emergency use. Izuku woke up to watch TV to see the news to show freedom fighters that has been captured and to be executed in the city square. Izuku smirked, I guess Kichai will help out. Should I use this quirk? I can use 55% safely and with some of the other quirks. F it. Izuku got on his clothes then found a hacker anonymous mask on the streets. He then said, okay, it let's do this again. Izuku did eventually wanted to see what he could do with OFA, so he experimented on some of his free time. He learned to let the power flow through him and how to use black whip and permeation a while ago. He went to the city square to see the 100 freedom fighters about to get executed. He turned to how many soldiers there were. He then smirked, it's go time. He used the quirk and in a flash he defeated the firing squad and the snipers. He looked at the fighters and freed them. He said in Chinese, go get some weapons. We can take them over right here, right now. The men nodded which they got weapons to fight which the military brought really big robots. Izuku destroyed them with extreme power and bullets couldn't hurt him because permeation. 
He wasn't naked because ever since he learned that he still had OFA and he has permeation, he broke into the lab that made Mirio's suit to steal his suit to turn it into the clothes Izuku is wearing. Izuku and the Freedom Fighters made it to the President's bunker, which Izuku went through it with permeation to beat up the President's security. Izuku used Black Whip to keep the President from attacking which Izuku opened the bunker to give him to the fighters. The leader asked, Who are you? Izuku said, My name is Akama Kichai. The leader said, What you did was reckless, but brave and we thank you for it. Izuku said, I'm very humble. The leaders of the fighters made a new China, by bringing back the older system of turning China into multiple independent states. Izuku got his picture taken and then after three days, the new president of Beijing asked, Is there anything we can give you? Izuku smirked, I heard the old government had an important ship to my country. He nodded which they went to a secret naval base to find the long-lost ship of the imperial Japanese ship Yamato. Izuku asked, How did they find it? The president said, In the reports it crashed near Vietnam and they repaired it then brought it here. Izuku said, I want the ship to go here. Izuku showed the president the location which he nodded. Then Izuku took a plane to fly to his next place to visit. Izuku smirked, New York, here I come. Tamura, Sensei, Compress, Dabai, and Overhaul. They asked the people who overlooked the mountain. They showed pictures of people who have gone up the mountain. Overhaul saw Izuku with his dyed red hair, red eyes, and makeup to cover his freckles to say, that's him. The young people at the station said, he has been at the mountain for a while about a week. The old man said, actually five days, he left a while ago. The guys looked at the old man which sensei asked, How do you know? The old man chuckled, My great-grandpa told me. He lives deep in the mountains. I can show you. Tamura asked, How old is your great-grandpa? The old man chuckled, About two hundred maybe more. Sensei was in shock that there was someone who was as old as him which they followed him into the mountains. Dabai had his fire going which the old man said, Put the fire out, the yetis aren't going to like the blue flames you are making. Compress asked, Yetis? The old man said, They are real, you are about to see them soon. They continued until they reached Shangri-La which the old man said, Welcome to the lost city of Shangri-La. The five were in shock that it was real, and they were seeing it, then they saw the yetis. Tamura was absolutely terrified by them. Dabai went to play with one of them, and Compress didn't know what to think of them. Overhaul and Sensei went to the three monks for questions on multiple subjects. Then Sensei asked, Did you know where Izuku went? Banko said, Izuku, we met a redhead named Akam Kichai. He headed to China last we saw him. Then in turn on the radio which they were reporting the insurgency in Beijing and new countries being made out of China which the five concluded that it was Izuku. They then warped to Beijing which Sensei has connections in China to help them find Izuku. Izuku. Izuku landed in New York City which he was glad to arrive to the city. He went to a hotel to get some sleep. The next day, he went around in art museums and getting lost on the streets. Izuku had to use OFA to climb up building because he didn't have his usual weapons with him and he didn't have anything in New York. Izuku was forced to use the quirk to hide his identity and because he didn't have his tools. He has defeated many thugs and villains that attacked him. Izuku then said, this quirk is too goddamn useful. He heard Mirio say, I'm glad you are using it well and for good. Izuku said, quiet Mirio. If you didn't pull a 1 million percent bullshit, we won't be here. Sensei Chang asked, are you going to use my quirk yet? Izuku asked, what is your quirk? Sensei Chang chuckled, it's what I call fading. It allows the user fade away to another location, fade to be unaffected by damage or to be invisible, and make clones of yourself that are weaker than the yourself. Izuku asked, how did you lose your fight with all for one? Sensei Chang said, he defeated my clones with ease and the many other factors were involved as well. Izuku side then found a strip club which he found those places very comfortable, which he came down to go inside the building to find it full of people. He sat down at a table to order a few drinks, which he was enjoying himself until he saw one of the waitresses being harassed by some ugly bastards. One of them were about to grab her until Izuku grabbed them with black whip to then throw them out of the building. The waitress said, thanks. Izuku said, don't mention it. He continued to relax until the waitress came back to give him a good time. They headed back to his hotel to get it on, which she was shocked by his rod, which he had a great time. He then continued to explore the city to then go on top of the Empire State Building to take some pictures. He then went to the airport which he said, I'm going to Argentina. Sensei, Tamura, Overhaul, Dabai, and Compress. The guys went to Beijing's triad with they are known as the Crimson Dragons. The boss said, all for one. The kid you are looking for has fled the country which these new countries have helped us actually. We are more in charge than we ever were. Overhaul asked, do you know where he went? The boss said, our reports tell us New York City. Compress said, year year days, here we go again. They turned around at once to leave the building which Dabai said, I hope he doesn't cause too much trouble in New York. They then warped to go to New York to see nothing was in flames which was a good sign. 
But after looking at the reports they saw that there were reports of a vigilante who went around beating up thugs and villains that were around him. They looked at the pictures of him which Izuku never bothered putting on a mask which they followed his tracks. Izuku. Izuku was on a boat going from Argentina to Antarctica which Izuku for reasons was getting more dinosaur DNA to keep making dinosaurs so he can sell them. Izuku is a dinosaur seller which was something a person couldn't just go around saying because it would make them sound crazy. He took a snowmobile and head out to find the secret entrance to the Fifth Reich which he feels uncomfortable when he thinks about it. Nana said, I can't believe you are going to sit down and talk about trade with Hitler. Mirio said, you are literally going to talk and sit with pure evil. Sensei Chang being reasonable said, I have some question for him if you and him don't mind. The bald user which Izuku dubs as make a wish said, really? You have questions, Sensei Chang said. It's not every day someone gets to talk with Hitler, might as well get some questions off my chest. Izuku said, sure thing, Sensei Chang. The first user asked, what do you trade with him? Izuku said, right now, it's dinosaur DNA for information and plutonium. Make a wish in shock, plutonium. Well we are screwed because of you. Izuku said, shut up so I can talk with the evilest man in history, I already hate coming here. Mirio asked, why did you accept this in the beginning? Izuku said, Han showed me the technology at what I believed to be a reasonable price for such great technology which I asked him to take me to the supplier. We came to the place and I thought they must be great people, until I saw the uniforms and swastikas which then I realized it was too late to back out. Then I saw Hitler on a TMOTHERFUCKING Rex, which I realized that I'm going to hell for this which is why I'm planning to gain immortality. Izuku then saw the hatch which he got off the snowmobile to then move the fake snow pile to then enter the room under the hatch. He then got in the room to sigh, here we go again. Everyone was worried for Izuku which Izuku's girlfriends, Iri, Gon, and his mom were worried the most. Over at Izuku's base of operations, things were still running like normal which Jin and Aguchi somehow keeping the place together. Which Melissa said, when he gets back, I got some words for him for leaving without saying a word. Kayoka said, he also needs to be honest about a few things. They said, a much I love technology, I can't work with Nazi tech for legal and moral reasons. Toga asked, am I the only one who wanted to know what he did to the strippers? The phone rang which Inko picked it up. Hello, Sensei on the other end. Well we haven't found him yet, but so far we are at New York City and now he went to Argentina. We are getting close to him. Right now he is disguised as a person named Akama Kichai. He overthrew the Chinese government, found the lost city of Shangri-La, and has went to a strip club to relax a bit according to the witnesses. In side, he overthrew another government. Find him. We are not mad at him for having a quirk in secret or ashamed of it, but he needs to get his ass back here for an explanation. Sensei said, yes honey. She put up the phone to say, watch the news for a person named Akama Kichai. They looked at the news sources and saw multiple reports which they saw his picture, Melissa said. He thinks he could put on red hair dye, red contact lens, and makeup, and people won't recognize him. Kayoka sighed. He is responsible for overthrowing the Chinese government. I'm not surprised in the slightest, Melissa said. When he gets back, we will make it to where he regrets leaving us without reason. Izuku. Izuku was now in Hitler's house sitting across Hitler which he was wearing the t-shirt Izuku sent him on his birth. The shirt reads I did nothing wrong which the previous users, except Sensei Chang who was laughing his ass off, were pissed at Izuku for giving him such a shirt. Hitler loved it and plans on wearing it almost every day, which after they talked trade Izuku asked, you mind if I ask some questions? Hitler said, you can ask me some questions. Sensei Chang in his head, I never though Hitler would be so. Chill. The other users looked at him because how he was talking about Hitler. Izuku asked, how are you alive for this long? Hitler said, back during my leadership. We found the fountain of youth and we drained it to research the water. We learned that if you add water to the fountain's water it kills all bacteria in the water. And the new water gets the healing properties as well. I was the first to drink for it. But we learned the only way to die is to be cremated and once you drink it you stop aging. Izuku in awe by that Hitler was immortal and he knew how to kill him, which Izuku asked, this question is going to sound unusual but, do you have a vampire army in Brazil? Hitler said, they just left Brazil to go to London. Izuku asked, how did you get to the moon? Hitler chuckled. We had a secret space program just in case which we sent a lot of men to the dark side of the moon and built a large base, which they developed a warp gate and sent our men here how to build it. Izuku sighed. Do any of your people have quirks? Hitler said. None of us have quirks, we are all quirkless. Izuku then looked at him. Last question, did you learn your lesson with Russia? Hitler sighed. I should have waited for Britain to surrender and keep telling Japan to not piss off the USA. Izuku nodded. Well that is all the questions I have. I wish you a good day and many more that follow. Hitler nodded which Izuku left to think. That went well. Sensei, Overhaul, Dabai, Atsuhiro, and Tamura.
They made it to Argentina to follow Izuku's tracks which they saw Interpol agent and like usual sensei would use air cannon to defeat them with ease. Then they found saw he took a trip to Antarctica which they didn't want to go there which they decided to wait in the country for his return. Dabai sighed. He is probably talking with Adolf Hitler at this moment. Sensei said, I always wanted to meet him and ask some questions. Tamura said, I'm curious on how Izuku found him. Overhaul said, I bet it would be an interesting story. Atsuhiro said, I bet his girlfriends and his mother back in Japan are going to give him hell when he gets back. The guys nodded which they heard the ship that came back from Antarctica they headed to it to see Izuku warping which they were little pissed. Izuku. Izuku warped back to America but to California the state Melissa was born which he was going to get stuff for her as an apology for leaving without saying anything. He went to Disneyland in California to get some Mickey merchandise for her and the others. Then he got lost and ended up in the vault where Walt Disney is frozen. He looked at him to say, I wonder if the new formula works on this. He then unfroze Walt to then inject the new stim pack into Walt which fully healed him and got him to normal body temperature. Walt woke up to ask, what year is it? Izuku smiled, this is year 2XXX. Walt in shock, I've been gone for a long. I must see my child Mickey and how Disney is doing. Izuku said, I will explain what you missed and what your creation has become. After three hours of explaining the technology, quirks, and Disney becoming an empire, Walt said, I did not made Disney to take control of everyone and everything. I made it to spread happiness and joy to everyone. I must stop this madness. Then a door opened which revealed Mickey, Donald, and Goofy which Mickey said, I'm sorry father, but we have to freeze you again. Walt asked, how can you do this son? Why? Mickey said, the CEO sends his regards. Izuku got in a fighting stance and Walt pulled a pipe to use it as a weapon. Mickey, Goofy, and Donald pulled out red lightsabers which Izuku chuckled. It's a good thing I made lightsabers just in case. Izuku pulled out two green lightsabers for himself then gave Walt a purple one which they began the fight. Walt fought Mickey and Izuku fought Donald and Goofy, which Izuku was struggling because it turned out Goofy and Donald were really good. Walt was was holding his own with Mickey which Mickey said, Father, I don't want to kill you, please. Walt said, This is wrong. You were supposed to bring happiness and joy to people around the world not make a monopoly on entertainment. You became the very thing you were destroy. Izuku said, Star Wars reference. Walt asked, What? Izuku said, After this, we are going to watch Star Wars for you to understand what I mean. Walt said, I really have catching up to do. Mickey said, Enough. Mickey then kicked Walt to the chamber. Izuku then defeated Goofy and Donald by chopping their hands off and knocking them out. Mickey then used the force to push him in the chamber. A man appeared to say, Good Mickey. Good. Mickey said, Yes, Lord Iger. Iger said, You know what you have to do. Mickey sadly said, To refreeze them. Iger chuckled, No, you must kill them. Mickey looked at him, What? Iger said, Do it. Mickey looked at Walt which he said, If continue down this path, I want you to know that I still love you. Mickey teared up then turned to Iger to say, I will not kill my father. Iger said, so it's treason then. Iger released lighting at Mickey which Mickey blocked it then went up to kill Iger. Walt got up to say, Mickey. Mickey went up to Walt to hug him, I'm sorry I fell down this path. Walt said, it's alright, I'm here with you now. Which after a few hours of Walt's return to being in charge of Disney, he released many entertainment companies which Izuku left to go to his next destination which would be Egypt to go exploring the pyramids and he was given a pass to come to Disneyland and Disney World for free for life. Izuku chuckled as he took a picture with the gang then warped to the pyramids to go exploring. Sensei, Overhaul, Atsuhiro, Dabai, and Tamura. The guys looked for their next lead which Tamura saw what happened at Disneyland which the guys looked at it. Dabai said, he went back to America. Atsuhiro said, here we go again. They warped to Disneyland to find Walt and Mickey which they told them Izuku went to Egypt to explore the pyramid. Sensei said, this time we are going to catch him and bring him home for an explanation. The guys nodded which they warped to Egypt to continue their search. Izuku was now inside the pyramid looking for a way out. How did he get to this point one might ask? Well he put his stuff in a hole he found in a pyramid that wasn't explored yet. Then he used Mirio's quirk to walk in the pyramid. Izuku has seen a lot of stuff and took pictures of what he found which he was going to sell the pictures and videos. He had glow sticks just in case his batteries and his flashlight died. He had plenty of food but was prepared to kill some rats for food and he wasn't panicked by the situation. A younger Izuku Midoriya would be panicking by the situation which he was glad for his life as a villain. Izuku then saw a coffin made of gold which Izuku looked in a book of coffins of Egyptian pharaohs to find they weren't discovered yet. Izuku sighed, I'm not fing with that, but I'm taking pictures of this. Izuku took some pictures then continued his search for an exit which he then saw a figure a tall figure that looked dog-like. Izuku looked at it coming towards him with he pointed his flashlight at it which he saw the monster and Izuku said, You are one ugly bastard. The monster roared at him and Izuku ran the other direction cursing, fuck, fuck, fuck. 
The monster was running after him which Izuku needed a plan for this monster. Which he remembered he could fight that thing with quirks. He turned around to use OFA to punch that monster in the face. The monster flew back. Izuku laughed. That was fun. The monster got back up which Izuku said, looks like you want more. The monster nodded in agreement. Izuku was a little freaked out that the monster understood what he was saying. They continued to fight which the beast clawed at him and Izuku threw it around and beat it up. Sensei Chang in his head said, Izuku, run away. Izuku said, why I'm kicking its ass. Sensei Chang said, that's Anubis you're fighting, you are not going to win. Izuku asked, what the F is an Anubis? Sensei Chang grunted, Anubis is the Egyptian god of determining if you go to hell or get resurrected. Izuku in shock, I'm fighting a god. Anubis got up again which Izuku turned tail to haul us from Anubis which Izuku yelled, fuck off, I'm not going to hell. Anubis kept chasing after him with great speed which Izuku is forced to use OFA to make him lose Anubis. Izuku then lost him which Izuku said, I can't believe I'm lost in a pyramid with a god that determines if I go to hell or resurrect. Sensei Chang said, did I say hell? I meant afterlife which is basically hell for you. Izuku said, but that's for the evil right. Sensei Chang said, he has to rip your heart out to determine it with a scale if you are good or evil. Izuku chuckled, what kind of bullshit system is that? Izuku heard Anubis roar which he said, this pyramid is to keep him in, so I'm going to get myself out the hard way. Izuku then punched walls down which until he came upon a pitfall with spears which he thought, I have an idea. He turned around to see Anubis was coming which he used Black Whip to grab him and threw him in the pit which Anubis was not happy, and I made the ceiling collapse and fill the pit with rocks. Izuku asked, you think that will hold him? Sensei Chang said, hell if I know, I never fought a god before. Izuku said, let's find a way out of here. Izuku then ran around until he found a secret door which he closed it when he got through it then found his way out. Izuku then went to a bar which several men who saw him enter the pyramid look at him in shock. Izuku sighed, what the f are you looking at? A man got up to say, you survived the pyramid that no one has ever came out of. What did you find? Izuku said, I found some nice pictures, statues, and awe. The Egyptian god Anubis which I kicked its ass. The people got up in shock asking questions which Izuku just went to get some alcohol in his system then showed his pictures and video footage off of the god. The people were in shock that their god is real, which Izuku said, I'm not going back in that. I mean f that shit, a man said. Well this just proves that no one should be going in the tombs. Izuku said, I thought I was going to face traps and whatnot, but not a god. So you continue to tell people to not go in the pyramids and I will go somewhere else. Izuku got out his warp device to warp to Greece because he needed to get some sunshine and look at the culture of the ruins. Izuku arrived in Greece to look around it and he was enjoying the trip, except for the muggers trying to rob him. But Izuku kicks their asses with ease then Izuku came across the statue of Artemis which he took some pictures. Izuku said, she must be fun to go on a hunt with. A young teenage girl next to Izuku giggled. What are you talking about? Izuku smiled. I think it would be fun to go hunting with Artemis. What's wrong with that? The girl giggled, I'm not Artemis, but if you are looking for a hunt then I can show you a place to hunt. Izuku looked at her to say, sure, lead the way. She leads him to a forest that was really quiet and peaceful. Izuku asked quietly, can I have a bow and a few arrows? The girl looked at him, really? Izuku said quietly, I'm sorry but this forest is peaceful and I don't want to make too much noise to scare off the wildlife. The girl chuckled, no, I surprised that you want to hunt the old way of bow and arrow until like most people with their guns and loud noises. Izuku chuckled, I'm not like most people. She pulled out a bow for each of them and a few arrows which after a while of hunting, they hunted a few deer, bears, and a boar. They had a campfire going which they were sitting in the dark telling campfire stories. Izuku then said, that is how I escaped the tomb. The girl giggled, that must have been freighting. Izuku said, yeah it was, I didn't think I could have survived that one. The girl then told the story of what happened to Orion the hunter who hunted with Artemis died in a hunting accident which Izuku said, dang. What a bad accident, but I'm real sure Orion forgives Artemis. The girl asked, what do you mean? Izuku chuckled, I'm real sure Orion was a good guy to where he would understand it was an accident and wanted her to move on. He wouldn't want her to dwell on the past and want to see her happy even when he wasn't around. The girl smiled, you think so? Izuku smiled, of course I do, but I'm not specialist on god relations and I have proof of that. Izuku then stretched a bit before saying, I'm going to sleep. The girl came up to him to kiss him which Izuku asked, are you sure you want to continue? The girl nodded which Izuku smiled. Can I get a name first? The girl shined with light to say, I'm the goddess of the moon, the hunt, forest and hills, wild animal, virginity, wildness, childbirth, and archery. I'm Artemis. Izuku looked at her in shock but they continued which the next morning Izuku woke up and she disappeared. He checked his stuff to see nothing was stolen so he gets up to look around then he headed to Athens to get a few pictures. He then looked at the pictures to see the girl from last night in one of the shots. 
He turned around to find a coin on the ground behind him with the picture of a crescent moon and arrows on it. He smirked before putting it in his pocket then warped to his next location. Sensei, Overhaul, Atsuhiro, Dabai, and Tamura. They arrived at Egypt to look around for clues, which they came across a bar with pictures of Izuku and a monster he looks to be fighting and signs read this is why you don't go into the pyramid. Tamura asked the bartender. What are those pictures of? The bartender said, The only man who has entered and came out of the unescapable pyramid that was recently found. He brought back pictures and video of what he found, which he found, fought, and temporarily defeated the Egyptian god Anubis. Sensei asked, The Anubis. The bartender clicked a button on a remote to turn on the TV to watch Izuku's adventure in the pyramid. They saw fight with the god and how he defeated it which Dabai said, Okay, he is picking fights with gods. We need to get him back home before he does something worst. The bartender chuckled. A team went in the pyramid today, but one came back with more proof of Anubis, which we are going to add it to the wall. He said if I see the guy who came out of the tomb first to tell him thanks for showing the way out. Overhaul said, we will tell Izuku for you. They sat and watched the latest survivor's video, which they could see the damage put on the god which was now scared. Atsuhiro asked, did you know where Izuku went? The bartender said, he got drunk and said he is heading to Greece to soak up some culture. The five guys then left the bar to head to Greece for their search which they looked at the places he has been. They couldn't find a lead when they got to Athens which they were about to sit and wait, until Sensei sat down. An old man next to him asked, you are looking for someone. Sensei chuckled, you could say that. The old man said, I'm just thinking about my children. You got kids. Sensei said, I have no biologic kids, but I have kids that I became a father figure to two of them and took them in as my own. The old man chuckled, children are crazy and unpredictable, but you can't hate them. Sensei smiled, I have to agree with you on that one. The godman gave him a card with a picture of a beach and reads come visit Australia. The old man got up to leave which Sensei asked, what is your name, if I may ask? The old man chuckled, call me, Zeus. In a blink of his eyes Zeus disappeared. Sensei looked at the card which Sensei said, we are going to Australia. Izuku. Izuku was surfing on the beaches of Australia which he was having a blast until he saw a shark. He swam away from the shark then he asked, where should I go? Izuku then decided to get dressed for the Sydney Opera House to relax and listen to music. He enjoyed the music until someone sat next to him to ask, You mind if I sit here? Izuku said, I don't mind. The man said, What a great performance we have here. Izuku recognized the voice and looked to see he was sitting next to Morgan Freeman. Morgan asked, What brings you here? Izuku said, I got things to think about and figure out. Morgan said, We got time and I can help you. Izuku raised an eyebrow, Are you sure? Morgan smiled, of course. Izuku asked, you know who I am? Morgan said, Izuku Midoriya. The most powerful quirkless villain before Joker and your other dimensional selves made you reveal your secret. Izuku in shock, how? Morgan chuckled, you know Mr. Midoriya. Izuku interrupted, just call me Izuku, if you know me. Morgan continued, you only got the quirk you didn't want after you defeated All Might. You have proven the world that a quirkless person can beat the strongest hero in the world. Why did you disappear? Izuku looked down when I got the quirk. It felt like I was lying to my friends, family, and the world about my quirkless status. When I got the quirk, I wanted to get rid of it as fast as possible. But after having it for a while, I couldn't let it go. Morgan asked, was it because it's the last thing of your rival, Lemillion? Izuku nodded. He was the first person to take me seriously. Even after defeating All Might, no one took me seriously. All Might is now taking me seriously because I defeated him and I have Lemillion's quirk which was his before he passed it on to Lemillion. I gave the quirk to someone worthy of it, but like a fire it's still in me and I gave the person a torch. Morgan chuckled. Sometimes in life, we aren't given anything at the beginning because we don't need them. Then when we get something, that something needs us more than we need it. But that's the irony of it all. Sometime the things we need come when the things need us. Izuku smiled. I see. Thank you, Mr. Freeman. Morgan said, just call me Morgan. They continued to watch the concert which Izuku left to then warp himself back home. Izuku's house. Everyone in the house were sitting on the couches and chairs watching movies to get their minds off Izuku for a little bit. Then they heard a knock on the door, and Ko got up to check who it was. She opened the door to find her son which Izuku said, I'm home. Sorry I was gone for a while. I just had to clear my mind. But I'm back. Izuku looked at his mom which Ko hugged him tightly which he hugged back. And Ko teared up which Izuku said, Everything is fine now. Because I am here. It was a phrase he would tell her when he was younger which she asked, Why did you leave? Izuku said, I had some things to figure out. I'm sorry that I kept secrets from you. And Ko said, it's not the secrets. I thought you left me and everyone else like your father. Izuku smiled, I'm not like my father, because I always return. I can never abandon you and everyone. I may leave you all, but I want to come back stronger and a better person. She let go to say, you are strong and the best person you can possibly can. 
Izuku smiled. Thanks mom. Izuku came in which when the girls saw him, he said, before you all attack me. He opened his bag to say, I got some stuff from Disneyland and some pictures. The girls still got up to hug him which they started asking questions. Izuku sat down to answer the questions the best to his understanding which Melissa asked, Do you have any other secrets? Izuku chuckled, Only the ones that sound unbelievable. Then a portal opened which came the five people who traveled the world to find his a switch dab I said, You a hole, you left us when you were Argentina. Izuku asked, You were in Argentina. Atsuhiro said, You bet we were. Izuku said, Sorry, I didn't see you five. Tamura said, We started to your Italian vacation house to Shangri-Land to what used to be China to New York to Argentina, to Disneyland to Egypt to Greece to Australia to here. Your excuse is that you didn't see us. Izuku shrugged, Yes. Overhaul said, We need to have a talk after I get some sleep. Izuku said, Sure thing Kai. Overhaul left to go home to get some sleep which Sensei got in a chair to relax. Then asked, In Egypt, you faced a god but in Greece I got to talk with Zeus. Do you know why? Izuku shrugged, it's probably something I did to one of his daughters. Everyone looked at him which Izuku closed his eyes to try to sleep which Dabai asked, what did you do to the strippers? Izuku said, I'll tell you tomorrow. Dabai smiled, what about? Suddenly Izuku used black whip to close his mouth which Izuku said, I'll tell you tomorrow, I just want to relax a little bit. Sensei said, I don't remember one for all doing that, I remember one of the users having that quirk. Izuku said, the quirk mutated on Mirio to where users can talk with past users and use the quirks of the past users as well. Which means I don't have one quirk but actually six quirks. Everyone looked at him like he crazy which he just sighed then fell asleep to call it a day. He was happy to be home, but he also enjoyed his world tour but most of the past users were complaining about telling all for one about the mutation. Izuku didn't give shit about them and he wanted to be with the people that mattered to him. The next day he went to his base to do some things and talk to his grunts about he his status. After he gave them a speech that if they don't want to follow him because of his secret of having a quirk then they could leave. Not a single grunt left which he is pretty happy about that. Then he just continued his day just looking at his technology progress. Izuku then went to his dinosaur lab which he looked at new proposals on future plans of combining different dinosaurs to make new breeds. Izuku looked at the papers to say, I've seen Jurassic World, which is the reason we are not combining dinosaur DNA to make new breeds. The scientists then nodded which Izuku said, but we are still making them to study and selling them. Izuku went in to pet the dinosaurs that are not going to kill him which he looked at the eggs to watch them hatch. Izuku chuckled, which dinosaurs are these? A scientist said, those are the velociraptors. Izuku chuckled, I think we should keep this batch for research purposes. The scientist nodded and put the batch under do not sell which Izuku thought it would be fun to have them. Izuku looked at future dinosaurs that were in progress which Izuku laughed nervously, a T-Rex. The idea is interesting, and I hope I don't freak people out too badly. Izuku went to take his pet Dracorex for a walk. The dinosaur was about a few months old, but it was as tall as Izuku. Izuku named him Crash because he tends to crash into things. Izuku said, come on Crash, time for a walk. Crash followed Izuku around town which people were freaked out by a living dinosaur, but the children love it, and Genoam came to view to see Izuku and Crash which he said, anarchist. I can't begin to explain how wrong this is. Izuku smirked, which part? Crash or I'm taking Crash for a walk. Ingenuum said, both. Izuku smirked, Crash, let's teach Ingenuum a lesson. Crash then charged at Ingenuum which he charged at the dinosaur, but Crash was a lot stronger than he looks. Ingenuum flew back away which Crash returned to Izuku and Izuku jumped on Crash to ride him. Izuku then said, what's wrong Ingenuum? Can't handle a little bit of Dino power. Ingenuum got a little angry which he said, today is when you are finally captured for good. Izuku said, I'm sure you can't, and your argument is invalid because I'm riding a Dracorex. Izuku and Crash went to charge at him again which All Might landed between the two which Izuku then add some OFA to help Crash. All Might was about to punch Crash's head which Izuku used Black Whip to grab All Might's fist to redirect it to the sky. Crash then rammed All Might which he flew back. And All Might's redirected punch made the clouds in the sky vanish. Izuku yelled, what the F All Might? You were going to kill a dinosaur that is only a few months old. All Might got up to say, you are using dinosaurs for villainy. That is just wrong. Izuku said, you were going to kill a dinosaur that I'm taking for a walk. There were two sides from the bystanders with one side supporting All Might for arresting Izuku with any means necessary. And the other side going against All Might for going to kill a dinosaur to get Izuku which would classify as animal abuse. Izuku then said, Crash, time to go. Crash turned around to run away from All Might which All Might started chasing them. Izuku then grabbed a stun grenade to then throw it at All Might's face which Izuku then OFA 55% to his face. Crash kept running which Izuku has to admit Crash was fast as hell and might consider just traveling by dinosaur. 
Crash then got hungry and Izuku's scientists genetic modified the dinosaurs to live off the plants of modern day. Izuku took Crash to the park to eat some grass which the signs said no dogs allow and Crash is not a dog. After a while, the park manager saw Izuku and Crash which Izuku looked at her to say, Crash is not a dog as you can tell. The park manager looked officially done with life and decided to take a picture then left. Izuku chuckled, I can't wait for the sign to say. No dinosaurs which people are going to be clueless until they see the picture of this. Then Detective Naomasa came to the park to see Izuku and Crash. Naomasa looked at his partner to say, Every time, we can't have a normal reasonable conversion with him. He has to have something or do something that to make it awkward. The first time we met, he was drawing a penis on the car with grey spray paint. But the balls were blue and he put more detail on the balls. He is the reason I'm losing my mind. His partner said, Calm down. Naomasa said, We need to draw the thing line in the sand. We look deep inside ourselves to ask, What am I willing to put up with today? Naomasa pointed at Izuku and Crash. No. Fucking. This. Izuku said. Well that's a little rude. Naomasa said. You know I had a decent life before you. I get to it in interrogation rooms to determine truth and lies. I made many breaks in a lot of cases. I got decent sleep, and I had some downtime to have some fun. Izuku said. Well if you think about it, I'm entertaining to some people. Naomasa said. Yeah. But you are my case I mean as soon as I get your file, you spray painted my car. I should have given the case to some other idiot but instead I became the idiot that took your case. Izuku said, calm down. Just sit down and think of your situation for a moment. Don't worry you can pet Crash. Naomasa's partner went to pet Crash which Naomasa asked, what are you doing? His partner said, it's not every day you get to pet a real dinosaur. Naomasa sat down to think about everything about his situation which he said, I'm going to request a vacation for a while in a little bit. Don't do anything too radical while I'm gone. Izuku said, I'm not sure if I can live up to that promise but I will try my best. Naomasa glared, I mean I want the government to still be not overthrown, no heroes are forced to retire because of you, and my office to be not disturbed. You got that. Izuku chuckled, I can do that. Naomasa said, come on let's go. Izuku asked, aren't you going to arrest me? Naomasa said, this park is surrounded by heroes which you are going to escape by some bullshit miracle. Naomasa and his partner left which Izuku warped him and crash out of the park. Which Izuku and Crash were at Izuku's house which everyone had no idea what to say about Crash. Toga asked, is it real? Izuku smirked, yes, he is very real. You can pet him, if you like. Toga started petting Crash which Kayoka asked, what other dinosaurs are you hatching? Izuku said, a lot, this morning we just hatched a batch of velociraptors. We are going to research them but not sell them. It has been three months since the ultrasound which Izuku felt bad for left her alone with his other girls and his mom for a while. Then he went to check on Melissa in his bedroom which he asked, How are you doing? Melissa smiled, I'm fine. She was pain which then Izuku noticed her water broke which he wasted no time to pick her up then get Kirajiri to warp the two to the hospital. Which they were at a hospital that won't report him to the police or heroes because of the money he gave the place. Izuku called everyone up from his mom to Melissa's dad which after some time Izuku saw his first two children. He got to see first saw the green-eyed boy and then the blue-eyed girl. He teared up seeing the two which he then got to hold Emily, the girl. Melissa was holding George which Izuku looked at the two which he smiled. I will never leave the country again. I promise. The children were born early but they were extremely healthy which Inko was happy to see her first grandchildren. After a while they were allowed to bring them home which Izuku was prepared with the room for the two which Izuku refused to let go of his children when it was his turn to watch them. Everyone then found Izuku sleeping on his chair with George and Emily sleeping on him while watching some TV which everyone took some pictures. Iri was a little jealous but she was also happy to be a big sister figure. Izuku then woke up in the morning with his children and Iri sleeping on him which he looked at the time which was 9am which he chuckled, I'm going back to sleep, I'm not getting up. Just like that he went back to sleep, which later that day he finally gave the babies to Melissa which he then went back to work to do some things. Izuku was at work just doing some paperwork until one of his men came in to say, Boss, have you heard what's going on? Izuku in confusion, no, what's going on? The grunt said, All Might retired, it's on the news. Izuku pulled out a remote from his desk to turn on a TV in his room which all the news showed was All Might retiring. Izuku smirked, so the number one hero is Hawks. Well the hero society is now going to fall apart. Everyone in every home was glued to the TV as the parliament was passing the most talked about bill. Sensei, Tamura, Izuku, and Kai were getting ready to celebrate the bill about to be passed. The bill was to break apart Japan into four pieces which those four pieces are united but under the laws of who are the leaders of the pieces. The piece will be under senseis, Kai's, Tamura's, and Izuku's control which Izuku was just going to have an anarchic government. Izuku believed that the people will live by their own moral code and will live together. 
Tamura asked. How will you sustain your peace? Izuku chuckled. People need food, water, electricity, and money. They will still work but everyone can use their quirks because there are no laws against quirk use and vigilantism. So, workplaces are more secure. People can use self-defense. And vigilantes can legally help people. I will have a perfect peace that will act normal after some time. Everyone shrugged which then the vote came which it passed by 10 votes which the league, Yakuza, and Izuku's grunts celebrated the victory and Izuku held his four children Emily, George, Supai, and Kokoro. Izuku said, I will give you four and your future brothers and sisters the brightest future I can possibly give. The four babies smiled at him which he said, Now polygamy is legal in my peace. I can marry all my girlfriends. They laughed but then they continued to celebrate for the rest of the night. A week later, Izuku made a broadcast for his peace, which he started, Citizens of my peace, there are no laws. But I will let you all know that if you want food, clean water, electricity, and other stuff that costs money. Get a job like everyone else. You can use your quirks for whatever want to use it for. Vigilantism is legal so vigilantes are considered heroes. There are no prisons. You can acquire all weapons. The people that protect you are yourselves. Vigilantes. Heroes. And if you pay taxes then there is a militia that I will have out protecting you from people using the lawlessness for their gain. Thank for watching this broadcast. Everyone in Izuku's peace just went through their day like it was a normal but they weren't bound by laws which they used their quirks to get to work. Everyone used their quirks freely and heroes that lived in his peace had to remind themselves that his was legal. Izuku was just walking the streets eating some tacos from a nearby taco place. Midnight sat down to talk to him which she asked, How do it feel to be in charge? Izuku laughed, In charge. I'm not in charge. People just pay taxes if they want to. They listen to me if they want to. Everything in this piece does what they want at their free will. Midnight asked, Slavery. Izuku shrugged, If they want to. But people, vigilantes, and heroes can shut them down if they want to. Midnight asked, Rapists? Izuku said, Legal. But people, vigilantes, and heroes can catch them or kill them. Midnight said, Murder. Izuku said, Legal but like everything else people can murder them in exchange. Everything happens if people want to without limitation. That is true freedom. I gave everyone in my piece true freedom. I married some of my girlfriends but... Midnight raised an eyebrow. But... Izuku got down on one knee then pulled out a ring. I know we have been on opposite sides for a long time, but we always have loved each other. I love you and I want to marry you, so we will be together. Midnight never had found love until Izuku. They were friends with benefits in the public but in private they actually love each other. Midnight blushed. I... I do. Izuku and Midnight kissed which then they went around town. Izuku then found some alone time with Dabai which Izuku said, This is the life. No laws holding people back. And everyone lives by their moral codes. Everyone can use their quirks freely and can defend themselves and not rely on fake heroes. Dabai smirked. Stain is having a blast with this. He is still going after fake heroes. Izuku said. I can see a bright future that most of these people can't see just yet. Dabai chuckled. I can see the future and it is pretty bright. Shoto said. Yeah, it's brighter than I imagine. Takoyami asked, who has the blunt? Atsuhiro passed the blunt which Izuku said, I shouldn't be mixing alcohol with weed but there are no laws stopping me. The gang sat and enjoyed themselves which Dabai asked, So Shoto, are you in this Momo going out? Shoto nodded which Izuku said, Great. Monona said, What if we were center of the universe until the, that old white guy revealed that weren't at the center? Izuku asked, For those who know Kendo, if she can make her hands big by her quirk, do you all think her father has a quirk to make his D bigger? Dabai chuckled. I would kill a few people for a quirk like that. Higuchi chuckled. If your shirt isn't tucked into your pants, then are you pants tucked into your shirt? Jin said. Holy shit. That is genius. They continued smoking and drinking to continue their fun which then they fell asleep on the roof of Izuku's base of operation. The next day, Izuku walked around to see a robber coming into a store to rob the place and the people in the store took him down with their quirks. Izuku chuckled. Exactly how I imagined it. People can now express themselves and anyone can be a hero. Just like when you lied to the world. Yagi. Yagi was behind him which he sighed. This is just wrong. Izuku. You really think peace will exist as anarchy? Izuku chuckled. If there are no rules then there is nothing to break. As long as people have morals then there will be peace. I given people the right to have true freedom to be themselves. If they are not like the robber then they are true heroes. Yagi in the past few days has seen crime has dropped well because there are no laws to break or commit to. But there are less people abusing their quirks and less violates. Yagi had four choices in this world which are to live on his arch enemy's peace, his mentor's grandson's peace which Tamura hates him enough to kill him, Overhaul's peace, and Izuku's peace. Yagi knows that Overhaul would chase him out to Tamura or all for one, but Izuku didn't care for who comes to live in his peace. Izuku smirked. Something tells me that you and the rest of the heroes are going to hide here until you make your attack to remake the old government. Yagi said, I may be retired. 
But I'm not going to die leaving the country in darkness. Izuku spread his arms out. How is this darkness? Look at these people they are going about their day with smiles on their faces. Quirk and quirkless. They have freedom to express themselves. Something a government can never offer. Then a small group of men in armor came to pick up the robber to take him away which Yagi said. I thought there are no prisons. Izuku chuckled. There aren't. Just correction. I help the needy. The ones that turn to evil to get what they need. Something the old government never did right. You see I'm making this the brightest future I possibly can for everyone. Izuku then walked off to leave Yagi to get a good look around to see what Izuku was talking about. Izuku then saw Bakugo coming towards him which Izuku smirked. You going to attack me, Bakugo? Bakugo threw a knife but Izuku caught the knife before it hit his eye. Izuku then threw it back to look like to cut off the balls. Izuku said, well no kids for you then. Bakugo was on the ground in pain and on the verge of dying which Izuku was kind enough to get him an ambulance to the hospital. Izuku then smiled his way home to enjoy his family and the many happy days in the future. A teen girl with a red helmet covering her face wearing a black leather jacket and black jeans was driving around town on her motorcycle with her brothers and sister. This girl took off her helmet to reveal her blonde hair and green eyes this was Emily Midori. She looked at her twin brother who had green hair but blue eyes. His name was George with he wore the same thing to his sister's outfit. But he wore sunglasses instead of a helmet. George looked at their half-brother and half-sister, Supai, Kokoro. You want to cause some trouble. Supai is the teen boy their age with dark purple hair and green eyes with earphone jack earlobes that changed to fit the outlet to connect his mind to the cameras nearby to turn them on. He also wore black jeans with a metallic t-shirt and denim jacket. Kokoro is the teen girl with green and blonde hair with one green eye and one gold eye wearing jeans and leather jacket smiled. We are always up for some trouble. They got on their motorcycles to drive off to go to fight some thugs, heroes, other siblings, and possibly slavers. They are the children of anarchy. Another end of town. A shop was overpowered by a group of powerful quirk users which then a group of four brother came up to the villain. But one dressed like a cowboy with blonde hair and greenish blue eyes said, Year year days, these idiots came at the wrong time. The one in the red devil outfit said, Joseph, I have to agree. Joseph said, I know Akiro isn't on this, how you two? Masahide and Goro. Masahide was a silver-haired teen with green eyes, wore black robes and a black and white oni mask side, this looks easy. Goro has green hair with brown eyes wore a skin-tight green outfit with a helmet similar to an astronaut's helmet with a green lens. He cracked his knuckles, let's go. Goro was covered in green sparks and Akira was covered in red sparks which Joseph took off two of his horns to use as weapon. Masahide took control of two of the villains to make them fight the other villains while Goro at great speeds touched each villain to make them heavier than Akiro and Joseph knocked the villains out. The four tied them up which they turned to the register to grab a few drinks of beer. A kid said, it's the Stardust Vigilantes. Joseph smiled, yer yer. Akiro laughed, yes, we are kid. That is cowboy and I'm daredevil. Masahide said, shoji. Goro smiled, absolute gravity. They signed the kid's book then headed off with the beer that they got for free to go drink it while on the job as vigilantes. Some bank in town. Two black hair teen twins were collecting the bars of gold to put it in a small bag. The male was shrinking them and the other was putting them in the bag. They both wore purple magician outfits which the male was known as the king of thieves and the female was the queen of thieves. They are twin brother and sister but their other partners their half siblings. One was in white magician outfit looking at the hostages with her green eyes and reading their minds. Her older brother in a black magician outfit was using his quirk to keep people still and using guns to point at the windows to stop anyone from stopping them. King said, okay, we got the last one. They saw heroes coming which they saw it was Ground Zero and Red Riot, which Queen revealed a tiny Nama which she turned it back to a huge high end to attack the two heroes. Legion asked, are we ready to leave? Mind Reader smiled, I think we gave everyone here a wonderful show. The four bowed then Legion used his quirk to make the four fly away to one of their dad's warehouses. They landed to where King said, You did a great job Hashio, Nozomi, and Nao. Nao chuckled, You are the key player with making the bars smaller, Toshino. Toshino then began making the bars of gold back to their normal size which Nao used his quirk to put them on a neat pot. Hashio went to put away her tiny gnomus so they don't fall out when they go home for dinner. Toshio said, They are calling us the magicians because of our outfits which is really fitting. We do villainy by magic shows and tricks, just like Uncle Atsuhiro. Atsuhiro came in to see that they were successful which he said, Man, you kids are funny. Your dad who be proud by how much you stole today. Nozomi said, We are going to break his record one day. Atsuhiro laughed. Maybe but for now you should head home before your mothers start calling me and your father. They quickly got out of their outfits and into regular clothes to head home which Atsuhiro chuckled. Izuku and his 52 children still amazes me to this day. I'm surprised he hasn't lost his mind. Midoriya Residences, Emily, George, Supai, 
and Kokoro were having a blast playing video games after they ate some dinner. They then saw their brothers the Stardust Vigilance, which they looked back. Joseph smirked, are you playing Smash Ultimate? They nodded which the eight started playing Smash Ultimate which then the magicians came in which Akira said, we know you are behind the robbery. Toshio said, yeah, we are trying to beat Dan's record. Emily, George, Supai, and Kokoro laughed a bit which Akira, Goro, Joseph, and Masahide wanted to beat the crap out of them. Then their dad came in to say, hello. They were happy to see him which Izuku said, I know what you all did today, but I'm very interested in why you all wanted to do it and what you got out of it. They then told their stories of their day, why they did a few things and what fun they had from it. Izuku said, okay Akiro, Goro, Joseph, and Masahide, you four are drunk which if you follow my lead then you won't get caught. The four nodded and follow his lead to their house to the sleep it off while the other eight laughed their asses off as they tripped a few times. Izuku was visiting the country to find Viking gold that people have been looking for which he thought it would be funny if he found it. He also had to check his oil refinery he bought a month ago that he didn't tell anyone about. He arrived in a small town of Svigrava which he heard that the Vikings came to the island the town was on to hide the gold in case of emergency. He looked around to see very little houses and noticed it was cold as hell, but he wasn't going to beach about it. He then went into a shop to ask, is there a motel I can sleep at? Everyone looked at him funny then Izuku asked again but in Norwegian which an old man said, two building to you left. Izuku said, thank you. He left the shop to head to the motel which had some friendly women running it. He got set up in the motel then decided to check out the town. He walked around the outskirts of the town, until he saw a mark on a huge stone. He took a closer look at it to see a few symbols which he had a book to translate it. He then said, I'm getting close to the treasure. Izuku then took a picture of the symbols to then walk a little bit down a path to find the treasure. Then he stopped at a field of flowers which he was surprised that there was such a thing in this cold island. He decided to take a break to wonder why there was a field of flowers, but he also decided to take pictures, so people don't think he was crazy. Then he saw a young woman in the distance which she was walking towards a cave which he followed. He got inside the cave to follow it to see where it goes until he saw light. He went to the light to find a room of gold which he took some pictures, but he wanted to find traps first before taking something. He then saw a hammer in the middle of the room which he went up to it. He shrugged, looks cool, I'm going to take it. Izuku picked it up with no problem which he heard, what? He turned to see the woman who led him to the cave which Izuku smiled, hello there. The woman said, the hammer has proven you worthy. Izuku raised his eyebrows, worthy? I guess I am. The woman asked, what is your name? Izuku smiled, I am Izuku Midoriya. The woman said, apologies for not telling you my name. I am Arija. Izuku said, well I like this hammer and I'm going to take it with me. Arija said, let's go outside to see something. Izuku shrugged and followed which when they go out of the cave Arija asked, can you raise the hammer to the sky? Izuku did what she asked, and a lightning bolt hit the hammer and the hammer was covered in electricity, but it didn't harm Izuku. Izuku laughed, this is super cool. Then he pointed the hammer at a nearby mountain which the hammer shot a lightning bolt at it. The two giggled which Izuku said, this hammer is super fun. I'm going to hit it somewhere at my place. Arija asked, you aren't going to stay. Izuku said, sorry, I have friends and family to get back to. I will try to visit as much as I can. Then she asked, you sure you don't want to grab some gold? Izuku smiled, nah, the gold is cool and all, but this is better. She smiled, I guess I will guide you back. They headed back and they talked the whole way back to the town. When they returned some people saw the hammer and they worshipped him a little bit. Izuku was confused by it, but he was going to roll with it. Then he and Arija went to his room. The next day, he packed up and saw Arija disappeared which he looked around the town for a little bit then called Kirijiri to warp him back. Izuku then went to his treasure storage building to put the hammer in it to then go find Dabai to begin their second time traveling adventure. Izuku woke up to see that Uri and Gon were still playing and there was still time. He then saw Tsuyu which sat down next to him, hello Izuku-chan, Kiro. Izuku smirked, hello Tsu, working hard at UA again. The two are friends for a while because Izuku takes Uri to the same park that Tsuyu brings her young siblings to. The two talked to each other a lot and became friendly with each other. Tsu said, well when you came in to teach us stuff, Aizawa sensei started testing us on the things you revealed. He also has tried going deeper on the subjects you brought up, but he keeps mentioning that some of the information is new to him. Hiro, Izuku chuckled, I guess I taught you guys stuff more advanced than Aizawa knew, but you brought your young siblings like usual. Su nodded and Izuku said, I guess I can teach you a bit more. Su asked, are you sure? Izuku said, well I got time, Gon and Yuri are still having fun, and you are a good friend, I don't see why not. They talked for a while which then it was time to go which Izuku smiled, if you have time, you want to go watch a movie later day. Su said, I got nothing better to do, might as well. Izuku said, meet you then. They left which Izuku dropped off Iri and gone to head to the theater where they are going to meet up at. 
She arrived in a little dress that wasn't too fancy. Which Izuku smiled, it looked good on you, you know. Sue got a little red, T thanks, Kiro. Izuku laughed a little bit, come on let's watch the movie. They were enjoying the movie then they saw the heroes on their way to defeat the villain. But Sue said, the thing about the villain is that, he is like you, Izuku. Izuku asked, he is. Sue said, he is not evil, and he is fighting for what is right. But the way he is fighting for it is seen as bad. Izuku said, yeah, that sounds about right. Sue then asked, if you were given the chance to become a hero, would you take it? Izuku said, I am a hero to some people, mostly quirkless people, but if I was given a chance to be a fully licensed hero, I would refuse. Reason being, I want to help people in every way and not be limited by a set of laws. You know what I'm saying. Sue nodded. There are things heroes are limited on, but it's for the safety of the hero as well as the bystanders and other people. Izuku chuckled, ironic. Heroes are supposed to help maintaining the law and protect people. But the law also prevents them from doing actions against people who defy the law and prevents them from protecting the citizens from certain things. Sue and Izuku then walked around town for a while and got some food. Then they went to place to go stargazing which Izuku asked, Why did you want to become a hero anyways? Sue said, I always wanted to be hero. My parents weren't usually home because of work and I had to take care of my siblings. I still believe my life is wonderful and I like helping people, which is why I wanted to be a hero, Kiro. Izuku chuckled, that is really admirable, I like it. Sue then asked, why did you presume the villain career, Kiro? Izuku asked, you know your classmate Bakugo. Sue asked, sadly yes, Kiro. Izuku told her the story of how Bakugo bullied him then one day he snapped, his time in the underworld before meeting All Might, then meeting All Might. Sue said, that's sad and you must have been heartbroken at the time. Izuku said, I was when he told me that I can't become a hero, but I also somewhat expected it. People throughout my life told me I would never be a hero. But being a villain is better and fun. You can also be a villain like me, where you can help people and be an equal rights fighter. Sue said, you are a bad guy. But you're not a bad guy, Kiro. Izuku chuckled, I know. Sue kissed him which he embraced it and they continued to make out, which Sue teased. Izuku-chan, do you think about how times my tongue could wrap around your? Izuku said, I actually want to know. Actually I need to know. Izuku and a few of his men were on a boat returning to Japan after selling their shipment of arms to Indonesia which Izuku can say it worked out well. As they were about 50 miles from Japan's shores, they came in contact with pirates. Izuku said, to your battle stations. His men got their guns and when the pirates opened fire then Izuku shouted, fire. It was a gunfight at sea which Izuku saw a bigger ship coming which he said, I'm about to hate myself for saying these words but please say that is the Coast Guard. The bigger ship turned out to be filled with more pirates which one of Izuku's men asked, what are we going to do boss? Izuku said, Jack, I would usually order a tactical retreat, but we are out at sea. Get the RPGs and javelins. Jack nodded and got a few men to went to get the RPGs and javelins while Izuku pulled out two AK-48 and started shooting at the pirates. Izuku saw another ship coming in which he pulled up a radio to see if he could connect to it. Izuku asked, This is the Brexit. We are attacked by pirates. Can anyone hear us? Then he heard a feminine voice say, We see you and we are on the way. Izuku said, Oh thank God. We are about to run low on ammo. Jack came with a few men. We got the RPGs and javelins. Izuku got off the radio. Hide those, the Coast Guard is right over there. They saw the Coast Guard ship approaching them which they hid the weapons because they are illegal to own. Izuku got went to put away the clips for the 48 seconds and get clips for 47 seconds so he can't get in trouble for that. The Coast Guard came in to fight off the pirates which with Izuku's men they captured the pirates which the captain of the Coast Guard ship asked. Can I speak to the captain of the Brexit? Izuku said, that would be me, Captain Selkie. Selkie raised an eyebrow. Well I never expect a captain to be so young, but you and your men did a good job hold them off. Izuku chuckled. We did despite all of us are quirkless, we held off some pirates with sea quirks. Selkie and his crewmates in shock. You are all quirkless? All of Izuku's men nodded which his sidekick, Sirius said, that's brave and amazing. Selkie smiled, this is a sight. A crew of only strong men and women with no quirks like the time before quirks. Izuku chuckled. Beer, hard work, and the sea to drift across. It is a scene. Some of Izuku's grunts brought a wooden crate which Izuku said. Thanks for your help, we would like to give a gift from one captain to another. Izuku opened at the top of the crate which it revealed some beer and wine which Selkie chuckled. Well if you insist. Selkie's men took it which they decide to stick around a little bit to help the pirates into the ship's jail cells so they can bring them to shore which they were heading back to shore which they might as well sail next to each other. Which Izuku was checking the cargo shipping crates to see if he got everything from Indonesia then headed to his captain's quarters to wash his clothes. While the two ships were sailing back to shore, Sirius was on board Izuku's ship to observe his grunts at work and observe some things. She went into a door which was locked but it had a combination lock on it, 
which she easily cracked it. She opened it to find Izuku on a couch completely naked while watching soccer which he turned around. Hello there. Sirius with her face red looked away to ask, W what are you doing? Izuku asked, can you close the door? She closed the door behind her but now she in the same room with Izuku which he said, I'm waiting for my clothes to dry. Sirius asked, what? Izuku pointed at a washer and dryer which he said, I got blood on my clothes from the pirate attack which I would like for it to be washed out. Sirius shyly, I I guess s that's our our reasonable. Izuku said, also there is game between Samurai Blue versus Germany on right now and I don't want to miss it. Sirius asked, did you bring only pair of clothes? Izuku smirked, of course not, it just I ran out of clean clothes. Izuku then cheered as Japan got a goal which when Izuku's clothes finished drying which he put them on. Izuku said, apologies for the view you saw of me. Sirius was still red from it which she said, no, it's my fault for looking around and going into things I shouldn't have wanted. Izuku laughed, not your fault for being curious, I mean I'm a young captain which probably makes you and Selkie questioning everything about me. Izuku got close to her, I can see that you are still interested in me. Sirius said, and maybe. Izuku felt something grabbing something of value to him which he looked down to see Sirius accidentally had her hand on his teeth. He chuckled, we can do it and no one out the room will never know about it. Present day. Izuku is about in his 30 seconds looked at Kazuma and Jinko to say, and that is how I met your mother. Jinko raised an eyebrow. You could have not added the part where mom did. You know, Kazuma asked. We also need fuel to head back to sea to catch more pirates. Izuku smiled. Of course, head to dock A5 to the fuel tank and it will be ready for you too and your mom. They hugged him and they left which Izuku teared up a bit. They grow up so fast and living the dream. Izuku was in Germany with maps, weapons, shovels, and other stuff looking for Nazi gold. After his meeting with Hitler, he confirmed that he had a secret stash of gold he didn't really care about hidden west of Munich. Izuku having a soft spot for gold, silver, and other valuable items so he decided to head over there to check if it was still there. Izuku was looking in the forest and mountain region looking for signs. Izuku looked around until he saw the first sign which was the saw symbol engraved on a rock. Izuku said, well this is the first symbol, the symbol of the Sturmum tail. Now according to the directions, if I find the rock, take a mile hike east until I have to find a partially buried tank with the shud staffel on it. Well if I find a partially buried tank then it's going to be a SS tank. He followed the directions to find the tank which he then headed northwest for half a mile. Until he found the last clue, a secret cave with symbol of the eagle on top of the swastika which Izuku said, this is the place. Izuku went down the cave but looked cautiously at the skeletons in the cave which meant there are traps. Izuku picked up a rock to throw it which a several buzz saws appeared to block his path. Izuku shrugged as he watches the pattern the saws were coming and going, which he passed the trap with ease. He continued the down the tunnel to find a switch which he flipped it to where the buzz saws from before stopped working but it activated another trap to get pasted. He opened the door to see that it was flooding with gas. He closed the door to put on his gas mask for protection. He went it to go to the end of the room to find the door locked which he looked around for a key until he saw a shower knob which twisted it off which go rid of the gas and opened the door. Izuku then went in to see a bunch of tiles on the floor with letters on them which he looked around for clues. He then found a clue on the wall that read, Only those who follow the steps of the christened Fura can pass thought. He looked at it to think what the riddle meant until he realized that christened meant his Christian name. Izuku thought really hard to back to middle school with World War II history lessons. Then he remembered. He whispered, Adolphus Hitler. Izuku stepped on each letter of until he came across which Izuku then pulled the level which revealed the correct letter shining. Then he went into a room which revealed the Nazi gold and weapons. Izuku looked around to find blueprints as well. Izuku saw the instructions of the secret railroad gun and super tank which he obviously took them. But he turned to find the said super tank Hitler called at the land cruiser which he smiled, I know exactly where you are going. He found signal and where he was at which he texted Kurajiri his location to open a warp portal for him. Kurajiri came through to ask, why are you in Jur? Kurajiri saw the mountain of gold and Izuku in the super tank which Izuku said, Kurajiri, I need you to open the portal to my treasure building. Kurajiri said, Izuku get out of the tank. Izuku said, you're not my dad. Kurajiri said, get out of the fing tank. Izuku said, you're not my dad. Kurajiri said, I may not be your dad, but I will bring someone who will get you out of... Izuku interrupted him, I'm in a tank and you're not. Kurajiri said, get out of the fing tank. Izuku said, I'm literally in a tank and you're not. Kurajiri said, get out of the tank. Izuku said, call me a Nazi, I don't care I'm in a tank and you're not. Kurajiri was getting angry until Izuku said, I will give you 25% of the gold in here. If you help me get the tank to my treasure room and you don't say a word about this. Kurajiri thought about it then said, okay you win this time. After they got some of the gold and Izuku's tank to Japan, Kurajiri sighed, the last thing you need is a tank. 
Izuku said, Kirijiri, I found blueprints to make another one or improve this one and make more. You also got paid a lot so, stop being angry. Kirijiri sighed. You're right, I guess I shouldn't be complaining about you getting a tank. Izuku smiled. Damn straight. Now this is going to be a project that only a few people will know about. Don't tell Sensei or Kai, because we both know what they will do to my tank and the goal. Kirijiri nodded and that was the end of the discussion on Izuku's tank. The next THS will be about Izuku getting the Holy Grail. Izuku was asked to help with Class 1B which he didn't mind. He was captured and under a temporary program to attend UA to possibly make him a hero. Izuku came in, hello everyone, I'm here to teach you all something. Kan is also going to supervise me to make sure I don't and any own, which I won't. Izuku looked around the room to get familiar with their face then a black hair girl raised her hand which Izuku smiled. You have a question, Yui? Yui asked, what will you be teaching us? Izuku said, well after seeing what you all learn. We will learn about hand-to-hand -hand combat, villain philosophy, and underworld economics. An orange hair girl asked, Underworld economics? Izuku said, That is a subject that only I can teach, Kendo. I mean I know it like the back of my hand. The more you learn economics of the underworld, the more you know what illegal activities will be the most active. They were in awe and Tetsu Tetsu said, I've seen you fight. Is it wrong to think that your fighting style is manly and cool? Some students looked at him which Izuku laughed. Well my fighting styles are from a time where quirks didn't exist, which most people are amazed by. I believe it isn't wrong to think that it's cool and manly, I mean I beat all might with it. Then Izuku turned to Kan to say, I want to take your class to a gym to learn some hand-to-hand -hand combat. They went to the gym which Izuku was got each of them to do basic training and movements which Izuku got a metal training dummy like he asked for. Izuku then said, Okay, you are probably wondering what the hell you are doing, well hopefully this will help you. Izuku went to the dummy to punch it and kick it which it was bending the dummy and soon after two minutes, he destroyed it. They looked at it in awe which Izuku said, I asked for titanium not this cheap Chinese steel that cost as much as a sweatshop employee. They then heard, that is extremely offensive and not teacher behavior. They turned to see class 1A which Aizawa said, I see this gym is occupied, we will head to the other one. Izuku smirked, no Aizawa, you can bring your students. I am teaching hand-to-hand -hand quirkless fighting. Aizawa chuckled. Interesting topic, is Kan okay with that? Kan nodded which Izuku was teaching the students the basics which the only person who didn't like being taught by Izuku was Bakugo. Bakugo said, you think you are better than? Izuku snuck up behind him to knock him out with one punch to the back of his head which Izuku asked. What did Bakugo do that led to his defeat? Pony said, he wasn't aware of his surroundings. Izuku said in English, an American, I can speak English as well, don't be afraid to speak English to me. Which also, yes, Bakago is an absolute dumbass that wasn't aware of his surroundings. Ryaiko asked, so, where did you learn to fight like that? Izuku smirked, deep in the underworld. But that is a secret because that is a weird story. Aizawa said, you are a weird person in the first place. Izuku said, said the guy who brings a sleeping bag to class like some sort of caterpillar. Oh speaking of which, Izuku pulled out some papers that had a picture of a butterfly but with Aizawa's head on it which Izuku said, I need all these flyers to be put up all these things around UA and you have to run out before Aizawa catches you. Aizawa raised, you won't. Izuku gave each student a stack then said, go. They ran out of the gym in different directions to put them up while Aizawa went around chasing them which then Izuku was summoned to Nezu's office. Nezu said, you know why you are here. Izuku pulled out a 10 page report to say. Here is a 10-page report on what I did was a part of the hero course and how it relates to my lesson. Aizawa in shock, you planned this from the beginning. Nezu opened it to confirm it which Nezu said, Apologies, you can leave. As Izuku walked around, Yui came to him, Midoriya sensei. Izuku said, Just call me Izuku. I'm not an old man like Aizawa and Kan. She asked, Call I have more lessons on hand-to-hand -hand combat. I'm trying to incorporate it with my quirk. Izuku smirked, Sure. They went to a gym which Izuku said, Okay, your quirk, size, can change the size of any non-living object. Izuku handed her a baton. When your opponent jumps back, you can use your quirk to make the baton longer. When you need a weapon to help you with certain things, but you have a limit on how much you carry, shrink your weapons to be able carry more. When fighting change the size of your weapon to gain the edge against your opponent. She nodded then they spared a bit which she was getting the hang of it. She swung the baton from above which Izuku moved the baton to block it but she changed the size to counter the block then brought it back to its normal size to almost hit his head. She stopped herself which Izuku smirked, you look like you got the hang of it, but. Izuku grabbed her and disarmed her then got her close to say, a real villain wouldn't hesitate to counter that. Yui blushed, why yes, I Izuku. Izuku let go of her to say, well you definitely got skill after some time of hand to hand combat and how to use your quirk with it. It will be one ass kicking beauty. Yui was red, T thanks. Izuku asked, hey, when I escape from Yue or something. 
You want to go out or something like that? I mean I can't right now because. Izuku gestured his ankle bracelet which Yui said, why why yes. Izuku smiled, great, see you around, present. Izuku looked at Toshi and Hashio which Toshi said, dad, we are going to break your record of the most stolen gold in one day today. Izuku smirked, sure, what makes you two think today is the day. Hashio said, we heard of a huge ship with a few cargo containers has gold on it which we are going to steal it. Izuku chuckled, it better be more than 30 cargo containers to break my record but be careful now. Also call your mother to tell her you two are okay. They said, okay. Toshi said, we also need to borrow the Yamato. Izuku smiled, it's in Dock B6. Najire was a part of the multiple heroes who are going to raid Overhaul's base. Nidai was in stress which when Rukayo asked, are you okay, Nidai? Nainai said, I have looked in everyone's future of the raid, but they are all different. Mirko asked, what do you mean? Nainai sighed, every future I have seen from all of you shows that Izuku Midoriya will be there but in different ways. In yours, I saw him arrive with 50 high ends and when I did Rukayo, he arrives with several men in power armor. Somehow he has something that changes the future that even I can't see the real future. Everyone was in shock by the info, Najire said, but we know Izuku will be there, which we must prepare everything. At the raid, everything was going great. They have defeated the grunts and some of Overhaul's top men. Then Overhaul shouted, where is Izuku? Then a portal opened which the heroes were ready for a lot of things. But a big-ass tank with guns pointed everywhere was not one of those things. The tank opened fired on the heroes which the heroes hid to not get killed. After a little bit, the top hatch of the tank opened and Izuku came out, I'm here Kai. Kai in shock, when did you have a tank? Izuku smiled, I'll tell you another time. Quickly get you, Iri, and some of her men in here. So, we can get out of here. Najire came to face Izuku. Mr. Midoriya get out of the tank. Izuku said, you're not my mom. Najire shot her energy blast at the tank but it did nothing which Izuku chuckled. You're not going to beat a 1000 metric ton tank with the combination of German steel and engineering with the same technique and design of my power armor that can withstand All Might's full power. Mirko kicked the tank with all her might to see if the tank was as strong as he was saying. Which her strongest kick did absolutely nothing. She jumped back which Izuku said, see, I wouldn't lie about this. Sir came to view to shout, a tank. What do you have that prevents me from seeing any definite future with you in it? Izuku revealed a ring on his left ring finger. This ring right here has, believe or not, magic to make anyone who can see the future unable to see my future. I believe it might also affect other people's future if I'm involved in it, but not my problem. I'm going to do have fun driving around town with this bad boy. Kai, Uri, and Kai's best men got in which Izuku closed the hatch and the tank started moving. Izuku asked, comfortable? Izuku had comfortable seats with cameras to watch every angle of the tank. Kai said, out everything I expect you to come in to help me. I never expected a tank. Izuku laughed. No one expects the Izuku Inquisition. Also, the tank will be slow so bear with us. This monster's top speed is 65 kph. The tank was slow and big, but it can run over and crush anything that got in its way. It also had room to perform medical procedures with medical equipment. Izuku was enjoying the drive until he felt the tank stop which he realized. Rock lock. Okay men, shoot anyone in your sights. I'm going out to beat up rock lock. Izuku got out with a baseball bat stun grenades, and tasers to see Rock Lock in front of the tank using the quirk to make it not move. Izuku smirked, your quirk can be overcome by great force and this tank has that force. You are using all your might to keep it from moving forward. Izuku came down to about to hit him from the back of the head until Nejire got in front of him to say, you will not allow you to hurt him. Izuku said, I wasn't going to hurt him. Badly, Izuku dodged her many attacks which he saw an opening to kick Rock Lock from the tank so they can keep moving. Izuku kicked Rock Lock away from the tank which he passed out. The tank started moving again but was about to run over Nejire which Izuku got her out of the way. Then a bunch of Kai's men appeared to help Kai and Izuku's tank which Sir said, we need to get back to base, there are too many of them. They left except Nejire who was in an alley with Izuku which Izuku noticed she has a few broken bones and she was drained of energy. Izuku being a kind gentleman gave her some of his medicine which she was awake and energized. Izuku said, okay, get out of here before they capture you. Nejire asked, why are you helping me? Izuku said, you don't not need to see what Kai do to people who attack him, Mirio wouldn't want you to die from him, and you're too pretty to be captured by him. So, you are going to fly out back to your base. Nejire nodded and flew off which Izuku said, she is a lot tougher than she looks, but now I'm going to go put my tank back. Kai asked, do you have more tanks? Izuku said, tanks, battleships, fighter jets, and possibly a railroad gun but I got jobs to give people in my peace. As Izuku got back in the tank he was playing ridden dirty back to his workplace. After a while he headed to Mirio's gravestone which he dropped off some flowers which Mirio in his head said, Do you really need to come here to drop off some flowers? I mean I am in your head to give you my knowledge and quirk. 
Izuku said, Mirio, I'm just being respectful and nice. You don't need to remind me that you are in my head with the other old dead successors, except Sensei Chang. Then he heard someone coming which he put on green sunglasses and a fedora to disguise himself, hoping that it wasn't fans of Lemillion coming to the gravestone. The woman said, Izuku. Izuku said, Nejire. Nejire said, thanks for saving me. Izuku chuckled, sure. You are here to give Mirio some words. Nejire said, me and him were friends you know. Izuku said, I know, he told me about it when he was alive. How is Tamaki? Nejire said, he is fine, he is on his date. Izuku looked at the grave, interesting. Who is the lucky man? Mirio and Izuku had, man? Nejire said, Tenya Ida. Mirio shouted in Izuku's head, what? Izuku in his head to Mirio, you didn't know Tamaki was gay. Mirio said, no. Izuku chuckled, you know Nejire, I think he is looking down at us and smiling that we are okay. You and everyone here is in a place where they could be free to express themselves. You can be a hero, a vigilante, villain, or anti-hero to help people or help themselves. I mean Mirio probably wanted people to be free to do what they want to be without judgment. Nejire smiled, you're right. Is it true you can talk to Mirio in your mind? Izuku giggled a little bit. He is a pain in the ass and gets on my case on everything. Nejire asked, can you tell him that we miss him? Izuku smiled, he knows. Right now he is in shock because he didn't know Tamaki was gay. Nejire asked, he didn't know. Izuku nodded and Nejire said, Tamaki was gay for him too. Mirio and Izuku's head, he was gay for me. Izuku started laughing a little bit then said, now you got him in full shock and questioning everything. Nejire laughed which Izuku smiled, I'm going to get a drink, you want to come with? Nejire nodded and they left to go get a drink. Present day, Izuku saw Fayuko and Fo which he said, I heard you two stole some slaves from Mr. Gates, enslaved him, and you freed the slaves he originally had. Fo said, to be fair, it was Fayuko's idea and I just tagged along. Izuku chuckled, you too, just want to help people just like your mother and have some of my ways of punishment to the mixture. Well I don't care about Mr. Gates and his slavery thing, actually I wanted to destroy that thing. But I'm proud of you too. Fayuko smiled. Thanks dad for being supportive, even if you are a villain. Izuku smiled. Okay, okay, go have some fun and if you need something from me, go to my support item men for something. Also, Fo can you tone it down on your energy manipulation? You accidentally caused a blackout at the house. Fo chuckled a bit, sorry about that. Izuku was at Kashiro Shitsujin National Park to sightseeing the beautiful landscape and by sightseeing he means he is going to get high as if he was sitting on a log smoking some weed and getting lost until he heard a noise. He smoked so much to where he couldn't think straight so he pretended he was camping and he accidentally put his weed stash in his campfire. He saw a woman in traditional clothing which she said, Hello visitor. Izuku giggled, Hello there. Don't mind me, I'm just camping and enjoying the view. The woman looked around. I don't see a tent with you. Are you sleeping in one of the lodges? Izuku realized he didn't have a tent. So the camping idea was a fail, Izuku said. Well, I'm one of those who like to experience nature at its finest. The woman laughed. I can smell the weed from a mile away. Izuku chuckled. Really? The woman sat next to him. It's fine. She then put her hand in the hand to grab the weed without getting burnt and the weed went burnt which Izuku in awe. What kind of quirk do you have because that is cool? The woman smiled, this isn't a quirk, but something stronger. Izuku smirked, stronger, like godlike. They laughed for a little bit and the woman said, right on the money. Izuku kept laughing, okay, that was a good one. The woman smiled, I'm serious. She touched his forehead and he was sober again which he said, okay, that was cool as hell. She giggled, thank you. Izuku now sober asked, who are you? She said, my name is Inari Okami. It's nice to finally meet you, Izuku Midoriya. Izuku said, the kami of luck, foxes, and fortune, I guess it's nice to meet you too. She said, I've watched you for a long time, I wanted to help you so badly in your early life, but I wasn't allowed to buy the other gods and goddess. When you went to the path of villainy, I decided to give you a lot of luck to help you get payback from the world, I hope you can forgive me. Izuku looked at her, I forgive you and thank you for my high luck I have now. She smiled, you have a question for me. Izuku asked, I thought you were a man like the people who worship you say. She giggled. I have revealed my form as a man before to get people's attention. I can be whatever I want to be, which I choose to be a woman. Izuku smirked. You have chosen a beautiful woman, I can say that. She looked at him. Are you trying to flirt with me? Izuku said. Is it wrong to do so? I mean you are Kami. She smiled. You always knew how to win a girl's heart and I didn't even give you anything that got you that. Izuku said. I'm a man with a talent that wasn't unlocked until later in life. Now can Akami get high? She chuckled. With God's lettuce, Akami can. The next morning, Izuku woke up with Inari was with him which they were naked. She woke up, a man with many talents but still with all the luck I gave you. You are still humble. Izuku smiled, I try my best. Present. 
Izuku was looking at his two children from Inari which Nana asked. So, we are demigods like Frida, Ulf, Luna, Sol, Adieu, Nep, Chaos, and Four. Izuku said, Yep, you are children of luck and fortune. Kazuhiro asked, Are there divine weapons we can use? Like Frida's hammer and Ulf's scepter? Izuku chuckled, Of course I have divine weapons for all my divine children like the Thor's hammer which Frida has and Loki's scepter which Ulf uses. Izuku pulled out two swords. Okay, one sword can talk to its wielder and the other one can cut through anything. They went for the swords which Kazuhiro said, I like this talking sword, it truly speaks to me. The three laughed a little bit. Izuku smiled, Okay you two, go have fun. Don't cause too much of a mess now. Izuku raised an eyebrow. It's because I'm young isn't it? The leader said, No offense, but you look like you should be in school. Izuku said, Yeah, I could go to school and be bullied like the rest of my kind or I can do stuff like this to make money to slap life in the face with it. If you don't accept the deal in two minutes then I'm leaving, because this is proving to be a waste of my time so far. The leader smirked, You're a good businessman. We will take the deal. Izuku smiled, I'm glad you accept the deal. They shook hands which he then left to explore the country, or what's left of it. He found a tomb which he jumped in with no problem to find some accident symbols. Izuku took pictures and he saw a cave which he entered. He looked around to see spikes coming in and out of the ground and walls which he smirked, okay. Now, Izuku jumped to the other side without getting killed by the spikes, then saw the gears which threw rock in them to stop the spikes. He then continued to find a cliff but a path on the side of the cliff. Izuku shrugged, I guess I can't go farther. He turned around but he dropped his notebook. He was going to have a heart attack until he saw it landed on something. He looked closely to see that there was a bridge across which is disguised to make it look like there was no bridge. Izuku smirked, I guess my adventure must continue. He walked across the bridge then threw some sand at the bridge to remind himself that it's still there. Then he continued until he found an old white dude in knight's armor which he said, Hello there. You are oddly dressed to be a knight. The knight looked at Izuku's clothes and some of his weapons which Izuku asked, Who are you? The knight said, I am the knight that protects and watches over the grail until another knight takes my place. The knight Izuku is sword which Izuku said, I'm not here tone people. I'm just exploring. Izuku looked at the different grails which Izuku asked, Can I take one? The knight smiled. Careful, one gives you life if you drink out of it and the others give you death. You must choose wisely. Izuku looked at them but noticed the cup not made of gold or silver which he grabbed it then went to the fountain of water to drink the water out of it which the knight smiled. You chose. Wisely, Izuku looked at his watch. There is about to be a battle here in a few minutes, we need to get out of here. The knight said, after centuries of guarding the grail, I believe you will protect it with your life. Here, the knight gave Izuku his sword again which Izuku asked. What is it made of? The knight said, It was given to me by an angel which was made from God's fire. Izuku said, Cool. Izuku took it this time and then Izuku left. When he turned around to look at the tomb which it collapses which Izuku was surprised by that. Izuku got on a train with the sword hidden which Izuku looked at the grail. I wonder what he meant when he called you the grail. Izuku stared at it then put it back in his bag. Well it's going into the treasure building with the sword. Izuku returned to Japan after a long time of trains and boat rides. Izuku went to his treasure building to put his first items to put in. Izuku looked at the grail and sword which he smiled. You two are my first items and you will have friends soon. He closed the building to get on his villain outfit to get back to work as overhauls underling to do research on hero quirks and take care of Iri after she gets a small of her blood drawn and taken to a man that Izuku knew who can copy and make blood from water. Chapter 40 Izuku was looking into his treasure building to mark and figure out what items he had. He saw the grail and sword which he smiled, I remember you too. Izuku looked into them then realized the grail was the holy grail and he now understood why the knight was protecting it. He decided it didn't deserve to be in the building with everything else. So he took the grail and sword to his office to put them next to the Book of Immortality and Vampire Mask. He then relaxed to think of his Vegas vacation which he then looked at his items and chuckled at his first treasures. He picked up the sword to put it next to him so he can screw with Dabai as soon as he comes in. Present, Izuku's interdimensional children he had with Shaka were in his office looked around for weapons. Dante looked at the sword. Can I wield the sword, Dad? Izuku smiled. Sure thing. Dante picked it up and used his quirk to make it a flaming sword which Crystal said, Calm down Dante. Dante said, But that was so cool. Izuku said, That was cool. You can have the sword. Dante asked, Really? Izuku nodded which Dante smiled and set the sword on fire again while Crystal asked if there was technology to alert her if she was going to faint from overusing her quirk which Izuku said, Let's see. The wedding guests that Izuku and Nimiri invite have arrived which Izuku had too much fun with the seating chart. When he saw Yagi as attending, he seated him next to dad just like his wedding with Melissa. Then he saw the Sir Ninai was attending to support Yagi which Izuku seated him next to Kai just to troll him. 
So, Izuku looks at the ice sculpture of swans and doves which he got Todoroki to do because why not? Izuku's best man Dabai was holding the rings and enjoying the view of heroes and villains in one place somehow not tearing the place down. Then the ceremony began which Izuku had the chairs on the hero seats ready to trigger if someone objects to the marriage then a syringe would inject them with a solution to knock them to sleep. But he was confident that it wouldn't happen. When they got to the Idos, the priest asked, Do you take Nimuri Kayama as your wife? Izuku smiled, You bet your ass. The priest said, Do you take this man, Izuku Midoriya, as your husband? Nimuri smiled, Yes. After the rings and kiss they did what normal wedding couples did like cut the cake. Yagi was brooding the entire time because he was seated next to our tribal just like with Melissa's wedding which he was thinking Izuku did that on purpose. AFO asked, Are you still angry? Yagi sighed, Yes. AFO chuckled, So, how are you doing with your injury? Yagi grunted, dying. I'm ready to just pass away. AFO asked, Are you sure about that? Yagi said, Very sure. AFO chuckled, You are going to be in for a surprise. Thank you. Yagi in shock, What? AFO smiled, Thank you for giving me Izuku and Tamura. And for causing all of this, Yagi was about to throw down even if he was going to lose. Sir grabbed his shoulder to say, it's not worth it. Kai chuckled, it's funny how you can predict the future, but you couldn't predict Izuku's actions because they are too chaotic. Sir sighed which people were getting alcohol which Izuku was smirking because alcohol was going to be interesting. Mimuri asked, are you sure they should have alcohol? Izuku smiled, they're full grown people. What the worst that can happen? Aizawa was drunk came up next Izuku showing pictures. Look at my son, he is the greatest. Izuku looked at the pictures which were Shinso which he and Nimuri laughed their asses off from this. Izuku leaned to Nimuri. Does he believe Shinso is his son? Nimuri said. When he is drunk, he believes he is a father of someone. Whoever's picture is in his wallet is who he thinks is his child. Izuku smirked. What if I put a picture of me in his wallet and get him drunk? Nimuri giggled. That would be funny. I would be recording that. Izuku looked at the time to say. Well you know what time it is. Nimuri raised her eyebrows. Time sure does fly. Izuku picked her up. Time to make those fanfics about us non-fiction. Izuku took her to the Bugatti which they drove off leaving the wedding which was now a battlefield. Izuku looked back to say, look at them go at it. They'll be fine. Nimuri asked, you sure about it? Izuku said, in one minute, my mom will call dad to come back to their house. Kai has a few things to do in the same time leaving an even battlefield. But let's head to our... They hear a bump which Izuku stopped the car and looked out to see Bakugo on the ground which he said, Give me one moment. Izuku grabbed Bakugo to drag him to a nearby bench then call Kirishima. Hey Kiri. He got ran over. I don't know who ran him over. Yeah just trace the phone. I just got out of my fourth wedding with my new fourth wife. Okay, bye now. Izuku got back to the car to say, Where were we? Nimuri seduced. To make fanfics into nonfiction. Izuku stepped on the gas to head to the honeymoon which would last a week because Izuku had important work after the week. Shino and Ruko were watching Koda at the park with his friends which they were happy that he has friends. There was a time where he didn't want to be near anyone and they like Iri, but they never met who watches and brings Iri to the park. But at the moment Shino said, you need to find someone Ruko. You are getting despite. Especially with the UA students during their camping trip, Ruko said, says the one who also getting despite as well. The two have been single for years and never found time to get into a relationship. Then Koda came to them waving to Iri which the two looked to see who watches her which they were in shock it was the anarchist himself. Izuku looked and waved then Iri asked, Uncle Izuku, I had so much fun today. Izuku smiled, you did. That's great. Let's go get some ice cream. Iri cheered then asked, can we bring Koda? Izuku said, I'll ask his guardians. They came over which Koda recognized Izuku and he smiled, hey. Izuku smiled, how have you been since camp? Koda said, I've been doing great. Shino and Ruko were in shock which Shino asked, you know him? Koda said, he saved me from the man who killed mom and dad. Izuku scratched his head and chuckled a bit which the two women were in shock by what Koda said. Izuku asked, you want to head to the ice cream shop with us, if you three want? They then headed to the ice cream shop to then Izuku. Shino, Ruko were at their own table talking which Izuku said, then I accidentally shot him in the head. I thought I had rubber bullets at the time, but it turned out to be live ammo. Shino said, so, you didn't mean to kill. Then what were you going to do? Izuku said, easy, knock him out, erase his memories of the location of the league's base, then drop him off at the police station while he is quirkless. Ruko said, we would like to say thank you for saving Koda. Izuku shrugged, no problem. They relaxed which Izuku asked, so, you both single? They blushed a bit which Izuku said, how come no one picks you two up? I mean they are at lost, I mean look at you two, you two are pretty damn good looking that want to take both of you. Ryuko smiled by Izuku flirting with her and Shino was debating with herself which Izuku chuckled. Meet me at the hotel a few blocks from here in an hour. You can say I have some free time. 
Toshino, Hoyoshi, Nozomi, and Nawa were looking at their plans to steal a valuable item that would be for something special. They saw the security which Toshino said, we need a flamer for this. Nao asked, so either George or Dante, which one are we thinking for this? Nozomi said, Dante, because George is busy at the moment. Hoyoshi asked, what can George and the anarchists be doing at three in the morning? Children of Anarchy, George, Emily, Supai, Kokoro, and Kamen were in America in a secret military base surrounded by military troops which George dropped the flamethrower, I'm out of flame. Emily looked at him, George, you are the flamethrower. George said, oh shit, sorry, we are taking so much gunfire I forgot I am the flamethrower. George started breathing flame at the troops which Kokoro was taking out tanks, huge robots, and government agents who can use their quirks. Supai was opening doors and hacking into robots like crazy to fight back. Emily looked at Kamen with a shiny blue cube that Kamen called the Tesseract. Emily shouted, can't you get a shiny cube anywhere else? Kamen looked at her, there is nothing like the Tesseract, I needed to build some stuff. Emily said, Supai is about to have the biggest migraine in history. George completely forgot he had a quirk a second ago, and Kokoro is about to go crazy with all the blood spilling. She turned around to use an RPG to shoot down a helicopter, I'm going to run out of ammo soon. Kamen put the Tesseract in a gun-like device to say, buckle up. We are in for a surprise. Kamen started rapidly shooting every enemy nearby which destroyed them with one shot each until there was no one left. Emily punched him. Why the hell didn't you use until now? Kamen said, I had minor adjustments to fix. Emily sighed. George helped Supai stand up. Kokoro smiled. That was fun. But where are we? Emily said, yeah, you never told us Kamen where we are at. Kamen chuckled. If I told you where we are at, we'll no tend me. George said, that's debatable. Kamen said, we are at Area 51 in the United States. They were not happy that they were in Area 51 of all places which Kamen then pointed the gun and made a portal to say, this is the way home. Emily said, you better hope it is. Kokoro looked at a broke crate to see a collection of rings of different colors ranging from white to black. She shrugged and brought the crate with them back home and thought about putting them in a glass box to display them. Stardust vigilantes. The guys looked out to see some men guarding a building which Joseph said, Massa hide. Do your thing. Massahide sighed then headed over to the guards which one of them looked at him to say, Stop W. Massahide possessed the guards to then made them knock each other out. Goro, Joseph, Akiro came down to high-fi them then they headed inside to see an entire factory of trigger. Akiro smiled, Are you guys thinking what I'm thinking? Goro smiled while grabbing the cans of gasoline which they set the factory on fire. Goro said, You guys want to grab a drink then head over to watch Chajin's match. They nodded which they went to grab some beer and headed down to the underworld fighting ring to watch their half-brother's fights. They saw coach which he was their father's coach and Chajin's coach. Then they sat down next to him which Masahide asked, How many wins does Chajin has now? Coach chuckled, This is his 50th win and his winning streak. He is excited about it. Then they heard, Gentlemen and ladies, Tonight's match will be a title match for the title of King of the Underworld will be fought tonight. Everyone cheered. The announcer said, In this corner, we have the meanest, the strong, and the toughest. Give it up for. The man came and was big, hairy, and had horns like a bull, the announcer said, the minotaur. Goro smiled. This will be an easy fight. People were cheering and were excited about this fight. Then the light shined to the other end, and in this corner, we have the undefeated champ, current holder of the title. Then Gonna Fly now started playing which the guys saw their brother walking out of the tunnel with his hoodie on with his blue eyes showing and his pale skin. The announcer said, Rocky. The crowd was going crazy as Chajin steps into the ring to take off his hoodie to face his opponent. The announcer asked, Are you two gentlemen ready? They nodded which then the bell went off and they begin the brawl, which Chajin came up to Minotaur and punched him with extreme strength and speed. The guys were cheering him on which Akiro said, He hasn't used his quirk yet and Minotaur is getting his ass kicked. Minotaur threw a punch at Chajin which he took it and Chajin smirked, Come on now, that's the best you got. Chajin used OFA to punch him in the face sending him flying to the other end of the ring. Chajin walked up to look at Minotaur's condition which he got up. But he was one punch from a ko. Chajin decided to get defensive which Minotaur used his last energy to throw punches at him which Chajin dodged them all then punched him in the gut and face to get a ko. The announcer said, here we are folks. The champ with his 50th winning streak. The one and only. Rocky. Izuku was now in the jungles of Vietnam with an AK-47 with a bunch of Viet Cong fighters in the 1960s. How did he get here one might ask? Well he wanted to find an artifact that appeared in Vietnam that he was interested in. That artifact was the Ark of the Covenant which he found the information on it from listening to the stories from government agents he paid off. He knew the location of the Ark was in a secret US military base in the present. But it was easier to go back in time and take it before the US troops found it. Izuku was dressed up as a member of the Viet Cong to help him find the Ark and so he didn't get killed by them. 
Izuku and the troops he was traveling with were in the jungle walking until they arrived at a temple. Then the leader stopped and asked, Why do I hear fortunate son? Then they looked up to see helicopters which Izuku hauled ass into the temple and the other soldiers followed. The helicopters shot some missiles and the minigunners shot at them as they were running into the temple. Then American troops arrived which their leader said, I love the smell of freedom. And dead Charlies. I knew they were here when the trees started speaking Vietnamese. Izuku said, Got em clampets, I need to get the ark before they do. The Viet Cong leader said, G.I. Joes are here. We are going to get reinforcements soon. Defend this place the best you all can. Izuku ran deep in the temple and checked the traps to see that they weren't activated yet. Then he asked a few guys to come with him to help him with carrying the ark and told them that it was valuable to the Americans. The five men he asked agreed to help him which they carefully went across past the traps to find the ark. Izuku said, whatever you do, do not open it. Then they heard gun fires and screaming which Izuku looked out to see the Americans coming in. One of them said, let's find the rest of these tunnel diggers. Izuku said, got em rednecks. Izuku cocked his gun to start firing at them which they started running and shooting back. Izuku turned to the men to say, let's get out of here. They picked up the ark and started going to another exit while Izuku was behind them giving cover fire. The American soldiers started falling into the traps like the pit of snakes which the leader said, these rats are smart. Get the flamers. Then some men came in with flamethrowers which Izuku said, fuck. They are coming in with flamers. Izuku then aimed at one of the flamers' arm which made him drop the flamer. Izuku and the men carrying the ark got out of the temple which Izuku stole one of the radios off one of the dead Americans which he got scared when he heard, fuck it, drop Agent Orange on this place. Izuku then got the guys to run like hell which they started running deep into the jungle and watched as the temple was covered in Agent Orange. Which Izuku looked at the tired guys which Izuku opened a portal to the present which he grabbed a few laser rifles to give the men. Izuku said, if you are about to die, push the red button on the side and it will blow up. Thank you for your help. They nodded which Izuku pushed the ark back to the present which he put it in the treasure building. He was tired then he heard a cough which he looked over to see Melissa which she asked, why are you wearing a Viet Cong uniform? Izuku said, long story short, I went back in time to the Vietnam War to steal the Ark of the Covenant before the G.I. S. could get it. I'm really tired at the moment from the guerrilla tactics I had to do. Melissa asked, isn't your fights with most heroes involved with guerrilla tactics? Izuku chuckled, we are in a city. Have you tried doing it in the jungles of Vietnam? Melissa giggled, I guess you're right. She helped him up to go get changed and get lunch which she said, when it comes to the Vietnam War. Izuku said, you guys did a tactic retreat and you never lost a war. They laughed their way out of the building to lock it up which Izuku said, I'll come back later to put a note on it to not open it. Melissa asked, what was the Ark doing in Vietnam? Izuku said, apparently the whole thing about it being moved to somewhere in Ethiopia was a lie. They took it to Vietnam to hit it from anyone who wanted to use it to take over the world. Present, Jiechi and his sister Nami were looking around looking to see their dad's collection. They saw the Ark with a label on it reading, do not open, which they called their dad to ask about it and Izuku came to tell them the story of it. Nami said, that is one cool item and it's legendary. Jiechi asked, what happens when you open it? Izuku said, I only know that it is a bad idea to open it, so no one is going to open it and that is final. They nodded which Izuku guided his dragon children around to tell them stories about the items they were interested in. Izuku was enjoying the life of doing whatever he wanted to do and no laws stopping him which he found some free time to explore the countryside. He found a cave about a few miles from the nearest city which Izuku looked it up to find it hasn't been explored. Izuku chuckled, I guess I will be the first to explore this cave. Izuku walked into the cave and turned on a flashlight to see pillars which he said, this is neat, I wonder what else is down here. He continued down the dark cave which Sensei Chang and Izuku's head said, I believe you should turn around, this doesn't feel right. The other OFA users were agreeing with him which Izuku sighed, fine, I will leave because you are all chickens. Izuku turned around but suddenly he fell the ground falling under him which Izuku shouted while falling, you should have warned me about the ground sooner. Izuku saw his flashlight hit the ground which he realized he need a way to land safely and fast. He used black whip to find something to avoid breaking a few bones. Then his whip caught something with he stopped a foot from the ground. Izuku let go of what he was grabbing to drop to the ground in the pitch black cave and chuckled, another happy landing. Then he heard, who are you? Izuku jumped in fright, what the f? The feminine voice said, I'm sorry for scaring you, young one. Izuku calmed down, I guess I should apology for cursing like that, my name is Izuku Midoriya. The voice said, Izuku, what a wonderful name. Izuku chuckled, thank you, who are you and why are you here? The voice said, my name is Izanami, you are in the underworld. Izuku in shock, the underworld, like hell, she giggled, not help her say. 
but like the afterlife. Izuku looked around. I guess I need immortality, because f this dark cave shit. She said, you seem oddly calm about this. Izuku smiled, I guess I am. Do you know the way out? Izanami said, I do, but I want something in exchange. Izuku felt uneasy, what would you like? Izanami asked, do you know my former husband? Izuku said, no, but I would like to hear about it. Izanami told her story of the creation of Japan. Her husband, her three children, her death to the underworld, and her husband running away from her when he saw her new form. Izuku said, what in a hole? Izanami giggled, I'm glad you see it that way. Izuku said, if you want me to him or extreme injure him, then I need a location and weapons. She said, I don't want him dead but injured. That is what this going to be about. I want you to father our two children which one day they will injure and humiliate my former husband. Izuku asked, what? She said, you heard me. Izuku asked, so, how do you want to do this? Mirio in Izuku's head. What the F is wrong with you? Izuku said, give me a moment. I got people in my head to talk to. Izanami said, okay, take your time. This is the land of the dead anyways. Izuku walked away from her a little bit to talk to the other previous users which Izuku said, what do you want? Mirio said, you are seriously going to father her children which will be used to get revenge on her former husband, Izanagi. The I-Z-A-N-A-G-I. Izuku said, did you hear her? He abandoned her when he saw her face after she ate the food of this place which is just a D-move and killed their third child because the child killed her. Nana said, this isn't right, you are going to help bring evil upon the world. Izuku said, I banged a few goddesses already dream milf. Also, they will be destined to fight her husband, not destroy the world. Sensei Chang said, I hate to say this but Izuku, you need the deal. The others looked at him which Sensei Chang said, Izuku has kids and more on the way. Besides who said these two from her will be complete evil. I believe Izuku will raise them to be good kids in the end. Izuku said, thank you, so I'm going to make the deal. And you can't convince me otherwise. Izuku went back to Izanami. I accept the deal. How do we do this? She held out her hand. Just shake my hand. Izuku shook her hand then appeared in front of the cave which he sighed in relief then he noticed he was holding somethings in his arms. He looked down to see he was holding two babies which they each had a name tag. The white hair baby girls tag read chaos and the black hair baby boys tag read four which Izuku smiled at them. Time to go to your new home. Izuku turned to head over to a portal made by Kurajiri to head over to his house to tell everyone he found some babies and he was adopting them. Present. After Izuku told Four and Chaos about their mother and their destiny, Chaos said, So, we are demigods and we are destined to kick a god's ass. Izuku said, Yeah. Four asked, Would you take that deal again? Izuku smiled, Hell yeah, I love you too just like your other siblings because you are my children. I don't care how many people under the amount of gods you kill, I still will love you and I won't abandon you. The two hugged him and said, thanks dad. Izuku chuckled, besides, you came for something else, right? Chaos said, we would like some training with weapons and weaponless fighting. Four added, we need to learn the full capabilities of our powers as well. Izuku chuckled, well I know the powers she gave you too after I did some research on her which I will help you the best I can. Stark was messing with Joker's Izubook device which he shouted, found it. The anarchist asked, you found out how that bastard figured out my secret. Deku said, calm down. Stark nodded which the guys were in the anarchist dimension about eight years after All Might retired as a hero. Breen Might asked, can we see his past? Magneto smirked, I would love to see it especially after he aired my darkest memory to my world. Stark said, got it, let's see this monster's past. Everyone sat down which the members of the Brotherhood were now Deku, Anarchist, Stark, Deadshot, Scarecrow, Magneto, Green Might, Deadpool, Venom, Doctor Strange, John Wick, Firens, Punisher, Hex, Goku, Scarecrow, Constantine, Izujiri, and Spider Deku. Deadpool shouted, let's get this party started. The scene opened up to the rooftop which All Might told Izuku, you can't be a hero without a quirk, it's too dangerous. Izuku teared up and smiled, okay, that all I need to hear. All Might left which Izuku looked at the ledge then without hesitation, he jumps off the roof. Most of the Izukas were in shock while the Anarchist and Deadpool were thinking, are you really going to give up that easily? Then a purple warp gate opened which took Izuku to a seat in a bar. Izuku opened his eyes. Hirajiri looked at the boy, we got him. Izuku asked, am I dead? Tamura said, no. Izuku quickly asked, why do you want me? Where am I at? A voice said, you are at the base of the League of Villains and we have a proposal for you. Deku asked, what do they want? The Anarchist quickly, his quirk analysis skills, we have a special talent for it. The skill is super valuable, more valuable than you will ever know. Scarecrow nodded. Our skill is nearly priceless, no one is more accurate than us. In the hands of the League, they would gain a huge advantage over the heroes. The heroes were in shock that their skill was that powerful and they had no idea that their simple hobby can do so much damage. Izuku then agreed to the terms but he didn't want Tondanion and he was given a room to live in. 
A few months later, he met Toga which at first, he was terrified by her but then he got close to her. They got close to where they would sleep together and then she smiled one morning while the guys were planning the camp attack. She went up to Izuku. Hey Izukun. They kissed which Izuku smiled. Yes, my darling. She giggled. How do you feel about being a family? Izuku said, I thought all of us were family already. He had a ring for her and was going to propose to her soon which Toga giggled. I mean like a baby. The guys stopped what they were doing which Izuku in shock. Why you mean? Toga showed the stick which Izuku teared up. I'm going to be a dad. Izuku got on a knee. I was going to do this later but now. He revealed the ring. Will you be my wife? Toga jumped in the air. Yes. All the Izuku thought this was a happy memory. And the best day of this Izuku's life which Stark raised an eyebrow. But what happened to this Izuku that made him a monster to where he betrayed the League and in hundreds? Anarchist had a theory. But he wasn't going to share it. Venom said, something bad is going to happen. Heck sadden, something happened to Toga and the unborn child possibly. A few weeks later, Izuku and Toga were going to walk to Izuku's home to tell his mother after a long time. They were happy about the marriage and child on the way until an explosion which the two looked to see Bakugo. Bakugo grinned, D.E.K.U. Izuku pulled out a knife, Toga get away. Toga got in her stance, I'm not leaving you. Bakugo flew to them, Izuku dodged the right hook then cut Bakugo, but then Bakugo brought back up. Bakugo's backup was his goons from middle school which Toga and Izuku were outnumbered. The two ran to Ace Chemical Plant to hide and gain an advantage over them. Hex said, the chemical plant, that is where it started. Green Might said, it's a good thing we destroyed it so no one can ever be a part of the chemicals again. Deadpool said, SHH, I'm trying to watch. Toga killed a few of Bakugo's goons while Izuku injured a few which then All Might came in to ask, what's going on here? Bakugo smirked, I found Deku and his killer girlfriend that made him a villain. We are going to catch them. Izuku in anger, I became a villain before I met her. Now leave me, my wife, and child alone. Izuku threw a knife at Bakugo's knee which Bakugo screamed in pain. Toga jumped to attack Bakugo but All Might punched her. All Might punched her so hard that her neck snapped. She flew to Izuku which Izuku caught her which he felt her lifeless body, Toga. Toga-chan. He checked her pulse which he felt nothing. He cried out, N-O-O-O. He started crying which All Might in shock that he killed her. I'm sorry, young Midori. Bakugo smirked, don't be sorry. She used him, played him, and lied to him. The Izukas were pissed with this Bakugo, and they wanted to go back to that dimension just to kick his ass for causing all of this. Anarchist said, That is some bullshit, Bakugo. You are worse than a villain. Deku said, As much I hate to admit it, but Anarchist is right. You are a horrible person. The Izukas were going to have a talk with that Bakugo when they have free time. Izuku in rage pulled out a big knife. I hate you. I hate both of you. Izuku got on his feet. I will into you two for killing my wife and child. He ran to them but Bakugo made a huge explosion which All Might shouted, no. But it was too late and the explosion sent Izuku flying into one of the chemical containers full of chemicals. Izuku then went down a drain until he made it outside. Izuku started scratching himself then laughing like a madman. Izuku's skin was pale white and his hair was a different shade of green. I will into you Kakin and All Might. Though I will make the world pay for what it has done to me. This world took away my hope, my love, my happiness, and everything. Haha. <laughs> Izuku then laughed like a madman then a man shouted, Hey, are you? Izuku threw a knife at his throat which killed him. Time to break a few moral codes that limited me. Izujiri asked, What kind of chemicals were in that plant? Strange said, To this day, we don't want to know. Scarecrow scratched his head, I stole a few samples, but I have yet to determine what they are. Deku looked at him, What? Scarecrow shrugged, I got curious by it. Meeting Overhaul. Overhaul and Tamura were pissing each other off. Then Izuku opened the door laughing. Tamura went to Izuku, are you okay? We heard what happened. Izuku looked at him with crazy eyes which freaked out Tamura and the league, yes, I'm fine. He looked at Overhaul, is that man causing a problem? Tamura in fear for some reason, why yeah? Izuku revealed a small white hair girl behind him which Overhaul in rage, why do you have her? Then Nomis appeared toned Overhaul's men leaving him all alone. Izuku threw a gas grenade at Overhaul. Overhaul was going to use his quirk but his mask broke and using his quirk started to hurt him. Tamura and the League were in shock, Izuku giggled. My old moral code would have told me to never make the gas, but the old me is dead. Izuku pulled out a knife. This is your prized item. I'm disappointed. Izuku stabbed Uri's head while laughing which the weak overhaul passed out which Izuku looked at the League. Take him to Sensei's doctor. We have some work to do. The League was terrified of this Izuku and they obeyed his orders which they dragged overhaul and Uri to the doctor. Deadpool said, not the doctor, anarchist, scarecrow, and Wick shrugged, he is an okay guy. The heroes were wondering who the doctor was which the villains explained who the doctor was. Deku said, he makes the Nomus and high-end Nomus, that is scary. Green Might asked, where do we find him? 
The villains were going to reveal that because why would they and their doctors can be in different locations. The doctor looked at Izuku which Izuku smiled at him. How long until the Harley Quinn is ready? Izuku looked at the tube which showed Toga was in it which the doctor said, Harley will be ready in a few weeks. Her multiple quirks will be quite useful to you. Izuku giggled, good. I want you to do the same with this girl overhaul call Ziri. I think she would be an excellent daughter of mine. Then Izuku went to full-blown laughter. He made an evil laugh that made everyone have shivers down their spines. The video ended which Anarchist said, I can't help but feel sorry for him. He wanted to be like everyone else. He found love and was going to have a family, but it was taken away from him by the world. He was the monster that society made and he was going to hurt the world as much as the world hurt him. Magneto said, We thought he was the monster when really his world was the monster. Deku said, I'm real sure he was happy in the end where he can finally be with his love and his child. The Izukas agreed that they were sad for this version of them and they understood how he became a monster. They wished they could have helped him, but they also knew that they couldn't. Then the door opened which Emily, George, and a few of the anarchists' kids came in yelling, Dad. The kids looked at other versions of their dad which the anarchists got up. I'm your dad, don't worry about the others. The other Izukas were still in shock by the anarchists' 52 kids which who won't be shocked by that number. The anarchist went up to them, you need something? Emily smiling, I shot a rubber bullet and it hit a hero, mom wanted me to tell you. The anarchist put up his hand, high five. She high fived him which the heroes gave an unsettled tom face from the anarchist's parenting and were questioning it. Chiichi said, I stole a diamond earring which mom isn't happy about it. The anarchist smiled, high five. The villains giggled which the heroes face palmed. Then Joseph said, I helped Eraserhead catch a villain with my quirk. He told me it was reckless, but he was happy that I helped him. The anarchist smiled, high five. The heroes were happy that the anarchists supported heroism, but they all agreed that they love that supports his children no matter what. But they mostly question his parenting methods which the anarchists turned to them. If you are questioning my parenting methods, mind your own damn business. The last thing I need is parenting advice from my other selves. Goku shouted, don't curse in front of your kids. George said, shut up, beach. The Izukas were in shock which the anarchist asked, where did you learn that from? George said, I heard you say that when you and Mother Nimiri were in a room. The anarchist said, crap, I left the door open when we had a special hug. You all can't say that until I tell you one it means okay. They nodded and left which the anarchist said, I need to double check the doors next time. Deadpool who was dying from George calling Goku a beach while Goku said, I'm real sure he didn't mean it. Okay sadly the chapter is over. And if you enjoyed the video just leave a like. And subscribe with post notification. So when the next chapter is ready, you will be notified. Okay see you in the next video. Bye.